artistic and professional. Morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Don't worry, I'm not, I'm not putting best press on my hands. This is me just starting because Paul, Paul does the tables. Paul's um, um, sanitised everything, and I just like to before we start just do a quick. Start. Good morning, how are you? Today's early bird is rather special. I uh, know. Look at this. We haven't had it in for ages. We haven't had it in for absolutely ages. I'll move, move my glass out of the way. It's best press, unscented, eight ninety nine. Eight pounds and 99 pence. It's Mary Ellen's best press. Good night, Mary Ellen. Uh, Mary Ellen's best press. Do you not remember that? The Waltons. Do you remember that, the Waltons? Good night, John Boy. Good night, Mary Ellen. Um, it's scent free. Now, don't read that wrong. It looks like it's free, right? Scent free means there's no scent on it. Eight ninety-nine. Eight pounds and 99 pence. Now, what I'm going to do is you get this and, and you get this. And I need to set it up because um, Victoria Carrington's in later and she needs to use... Oh, and she's back. Oh, gosh, she's back with a vengeance. Flipping neck. She was here bright and early this morning, all made up and everything. Shouting at Hannah. Trying to hug little Paul, even in this day and age. Do you know what I mean? He refused. He's refusing hugs at the moment. No, I'm only joking. Of course she didn't. She's a bit... It's just lovely to see her again. Anyway, best, 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 best. It's a big bottle. It's how big is it? Uh, 499 millilitres. 400... What's the matter? 499 millimetres or 16.9 ounces. You're saving three pounds. Oh, hang on. Right. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Uh, morning, lovely people, says Joanna. Stephanie says hello from a grey and misty South Devon. Glenis says good morning, John. Irene says morning, John. One and all, stay safe. Marcia says hello. Loving that programme, John. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. No, she means uh, Walton's. Linda says, morning, John. Looking forward to the show. Nice sunny day here in London. It's love. It's beautiful here as well in Redditch. Uh, Glenis loves best press. Claire says, I'm loving that shirt. What a gorgeous colour. And Shelley says, good morning, John. Oh, oh, yep. Loads of people. Loads of you there. How are you all? Buy this. Put it in your basket. You only pay one P&P, remember? One post and packaging for the whole day. Do you know what I do? And I'm not trying to do anything. Multi-buy. Because when we, what happens is we get it in, it sells out, and then it takes forever to get it back in again. So if you've got it, uh, H uh, Hannah says it could literally, literally be months. Oh, it has been, has been, she says. Uh, Lisa Lamb is watching. Lisa Lamb's joining us. Blimey, I'm surprised. Oh, and she's got, hang on, she's got words. She's done words as well. I didn't think she put a sentence together this time in the morning. Pink to make the ladies wink. She says, morning, everyone. Sue says good morning. Marcia says morning. John, Hannah and Paul. Laurie's in. Uh, morning, Lisa. Oh! Oh, you talked to Lisa Lamb. I was going to say, who's Lisa? That's... Yeah. Lisa Lamb gets a hello before I do. That's a bit much, isn't it? Yes. Oh. Uh. Oh, right. Now, I'm not, I'm not allowed to tell you this. On no account must you tell them this, John Scott. If you go to the website, right, put in, put in um, Best Press, the lavender bottle of this size, uh, lavender and vanilla. Oh, it's a new one. I've not smelt that one. Oh, lavender and vanilla in the same jar. Oh, right. Lavender and vanilla, right? It's the same price as this. For some reason, it's got the three pounds off. So if you want lavender slash vanilla, go to the website now. And it's the big bottle. It's the big bottle. Uh, 14, what was it? 4.99, no, 499 milliliters. 4.99 wouldn't be very much, would it? Or 16.99. I have to keep looking down here. Oh, you're not looking at me. I have to keep looking down there because my details are over there when I'm at this desk. They're the only two we've got at the moment. Um, uh, June says hello. Tim says hello. Clive says hello, uh, Jenny says hello, and Ema says hello. Oh, lots of you there. Um, what was I going to say to you? Now, I know they have Caribbean Crush, and they have all these sea breeze. The one, Hannah keeps asking them to get those in. You're best off getting a traditional, like either a scent-free or a vanilla slash lavender, uh, I think, anyway. It's my, own, my own personal opinion. Hannah says I'm boring. Uh, Tim says he's just grabbing his sunglasses. Because my shirt's too bright, he says. 
Angela says, good morning, everybody. Make sure you buy your best press. Come on, everyone. Lynn Tewitt has joined us now. Hey, keep going through. Keep going through. Lots of you there. Lots of you there. June says, morning, John. Lovely to see you this morning. And you too, June, my love. I hope you're all having a lovely, sunny, bright day. Laurie says, good morning, John. You are handsome and in the pink this morning. Have a lovely day. Oh, Laurie, you're very kind. I'm feeling a bit old. Oh, right, so Clive wants to know, Clive, right, who's been on the show once, tell him what it does, John. What does it do then? What's it? Basically, right, so what you do is when you get, get your fabric home or you get your uh, fat quarters home and everything, give it a quick spritz. Uh, if you remember Fabulon, if you're as old as me, you'll remember Fabulon. Give it a quick iron. It just stabilises the fabric slightly. So if you're doing half square triangles, if you're doing flying geese or anything like that, or doing a lot of cutting on the bias, it just gives it a little bit of stability. Blimey, directing comments from Clive now. Uh, Shelley likes the linen best press best. Well, I haven't got linen. I haven't got linen. Uh, Tim says best press is essential. Janice says morning. Gwen says, wow, I love that shirt. Chris is in. Chris says morning, everyone. It's gone very hot in here suddenly. No, no, it's fine. I'll be all right. I'll settle down in a minute. I'm overexcited. Got a message coming across the bottom of the screen. There you go. Wow, love the shirt, John. It's bright, sunny day, but you outshine everything. Oh, Jackie, you're very kind in Norfolk. Aw. Bev says, morning, John, from a very frosty Leicester. Loving the shirt. Clive says, thank you for the explanation. Oh, maybe he wasn't directing. Maybe he was actually asking what it was for. Oh, sorry, Clive. There's me presuming him. Uh, oh, Janet says, I love you, sweetness. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, Leslie, morning, John. Love the colour of your shirt. Nikki, I love the colour of your shirt. I should have worn this before. Lynn Tewitt, morning, everyone. Love your shirt. It brightens up a dull morning. Best press is great. Is it, isn't it funny? Because we've got sunshine here, and uh, but Lynn Tewitt's got uh, dullness where she is. Morning, John and the team. Love from a foggy East Cleveland. It was foggy driving in this morning. It wasn't nice at all. Ruth says, morning, John and everyone. From a very dull Durham. Love your shirts. From, that's from Ruth. Glennis says, oh, she's been on the website, bought the lavender one. She, we can see, Glennis. We can see that you've been there. Oh, and right now, uh, right. Also, also, Clive says, oh, um, I wouldn't know uh, because, uh, hang on, I don't do quilting. That's why I didn't know. You can use it for dressmaking as well. Doesn't go flaky and it washes out. And it doesn't go on manky on the bottom of your iron like Fabulon used to. Yeah, Victoria, well, we've got it in specially because we knew Victoria County was coming on. If she hasn't got best press available, she's not happy. She can't hear any of this because there's no telly. Oh, did you put a telly on, Paul, to keep her company? Oh, well, we're not allowed in her room, so she'll have to put her own telly on. Uh, Judith says, good morning, John. Edna, I love that name, Edna. She says, morning, all, John and team. Jennifer, morning, John, from... Rainy Spain. Pfft. Well, are you locked in as well in Spain? You think you are? It's quite strict there, isn't it? Claire says, good morning, John. Love the fuchsia colour. Brightens up the morning. Oh, you're very kind. This is the, one of my oldest shirts, but I love it. And they don't do this colour anymore. And it's in... Say that again. Oh, my word. And how many do we have? Oh, my word, right, more, th already, right, how many minutes are we in, right? Eight minutes in, more than half the stock's gone. You, so you, be, and, 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 you're also buying the one that's on the website as well. Oh, are you doing sweeping shots? Go on, do them again then. I'll stand next to the table so it doesn't look rude. Is that a sweeping shot? Oh, you've done them already. Uh, Clive says, looking forward to our show on the 28th. Yeah, I'm on with Clive on the 28th. Uh, morning, John, from Chandler's Ford. Oh, that's Kath who had the, whose husband went out for a walk yesterday and came back with cakes from the deli. Loving the shirt. Thank you. And they wasn't caked in much. No, uh, next door, John and Chris next door, they went walking for miles yesterday. Uh, they went, not Dorsington, they went through uh, Barton around that way and uh, all the, along the riverside and everything. Chris wasn't happy. She was covered in mud when she got home. Good morning, John and team from a very sunny Isle of Wight. Love from Sue and, is that Jack or Jock? Oh, sorry, did I miss it again? Oh, I missed it again. Jock, Jock. Oh, look, Nikki's in Chandler's Ford as well. You see, it's a lovely little community, this, isn't it? 
No, not yet, not yet, not yet. Keep going through, keep going through. What? Okay, Victoria Carrington's just, uh, I'll just tell you, Victoria Carrington's just emailed in. She's watching on her phone. <laughs> so I know what you're saying about. Victoria, there's a great big telly in your green room. If you don't want to use up your, um, oh, that's the point. I wonder if I've, I don't know if my phone's signed into the WhatsApp here. Is it? How do you know? Did I? I can't remember. Anyway, <laughs> I did the pictures to pull from home. I sent a picture message to Paul the other day. He got a bit worried. Right, let's have a look. What else is in here? Sue, good morning. I've done, Sue. Um, oh, Clive's already been to get cake and coffee from the corner. Lovely. Uh, good morning, John. Good hair day today. You're looking very handsome. I don't know what channel she's watching. In comparison with my flat cap yesterday, do you mean, Gillian? Morning, John. Sunny in Northampton. I love the shirt. Used to have one in that colour. This is Kirsty. Wore it to death until one of my caps ripped a, ripped a huge hole in it. Oh, dear. Uh, hello, John. Where do I send your cushion present to? Just send it to the studio, Alan. Thank you very much. Oh, Alan, by the way, if you add me on the John Scott Sewing World page, rather than my personal page, I haven't got enough space on my personal page anymore. It's full, I'm afraid. Uh, Tink. Oh, I love that name. Oh, Tink used to live in uh, Chandler's Ford as well. Where is Chandler's Ford? Why do all these people want to live in Chandler's Ford? Uh, morning, lovely John. Love, 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 love that shirt, says Susan. Uh, message coming across the bottom of the screen. We will do some se some sewing stuff in a minute. Morning, John. Hubby keeps telling me to get dressed and help him in the garden. Uh, five more minutes. Five hours. I'm here for five hours today. Yeah, but it's sunny, isn't it? Get it in. I've done my, I did my lawns last night when I got in. It's the afternoon. I say last night. Oh, no. Crazy Lorraine. Morning, rough night, sadly, but that's, but that's my favourite colour. What, being six, your favourite colour? <coughs> Get better soon. She and Steve are both poorly. Um, right, very quickly. Uh, hi, small world, isn't it? Um, uh, I'll go over there in a minute. Morning, John and all. Beautiful day in Liverpool. And it's in Hampshire. Oh, they're all posh, that's why. In Hampshire. OK, I'll come back to this later, because Victoria Carrington's going to... Actually, do you know what? If they all sell, she can't use it. So you better not... Ca well... Let's move on, shall we? Let's move on. Shall we look at today's menu? Here's the menu for today. <coughs> Excuse me. So 8 o'clock, we've got Kits Revisited. That's a bit like Brideshead Revisited, but with common people, I eat me. me. Uh, 9 o'clock, Victoria Carrington. Have I mentioned she's in today? Victoria Carrington's in today. She'll message in again. Might, she might do a whole show from the dressing room, she says. Um, anyway, 9 o'clock, Christmas applique, mat and cushion. There's the cushion. It's gorgeous. That's already on pre-order. And there's the mat. Now, that might look like a hoopie. I was saying this morning, oh, do we get the hoop? Do we get the hoop? It's not a hoop. It's, it's what you do is you put it down on Christmas Eve with the mince pie and the... Oh, well, you don't know. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, we've got brand new fabric, which is gorgeous. Now, it's called the Cashmere Fabric Range. It's not cashmere. It's cotton. And it is absolutely beautiful. It's just stunning. Uh, then at 11 o'clock, we've got Heart of a Star Quilt which is this one now. Ours is in a slightly different colourway to that one. There's our colourway. There's our colourway. Isn't it lovely? Uh, and then, uh, so that's with Victoria to 11 o'clock. Then I'm, I'm open at 12 o'clock. Oh, no, we're doing five hours now. Five hours, you say. 12 o'clock. It's not um, Yarn Lane. It's Adjuster Forms and Dressmaking Tools. Oh, yes. Okay, something sold out already. Sorry about that. That's sold out. Um, right, very quickly. Morning, John and team for a lovely warm bed in Guernsey, says Kate. <laughs> Trisha, morning, fluffy John. Are you talking about my hair? Uh, Sue says, morning, John and crew. Sunny in Rochester. That colour suits you. Uh, question is, best press, non-toxic and safe to use? Yes, of course it is. Uh, Laurie says, Oh, got some lavender, because you've also got the lavender slash linen on the website for the same price. Last one before I start on all of my shop. Jackie says, good morning, love the shirt. Brightens up an overcast day. Granddaughter's fourth birthday today. Oh, no, but can't celebrate. No, but Jackie, what you can do is you can make her a cake and eat it and go, look at granny eating your cake. <clears throat> look at grandma eating your lovely cake. No, she will FaceTime her. She just can't go. She wants You want to be there to hug them, don't you, really? Paul's not, Paul doesn't do hugs. Yeah, Paul doesn't do hugs, you see. Um, do you think it's this side of the set? Look, I've gone flat again. 
Yeah. Maybe it is. Right. Right, should we start? Should we start? Should we start? What are we going to... I've got no room for anything, have I? Hang on, let's make a bit of space here. There, I can see it, I can see it, I can see it. Yeah, because it's a lot. There's a lot going on. Right, there's only one of this bundle still remaining, and this is it. Now, if you want to see a demo, it was done on the 14th of October. <gasps> oh, now, when I did this, we didn't use these fabrics. I've done this with a different fabric range, I think. Okay, okay, so, the pattern, you get, you get all of this in here. This is the sample of it here. Oh, no, it, well, I, this is the way I did it. This is the... Who did it with me? That's right, Wendy Orlando. Wendy Orlando, that's right, that's right. It was, she did it in a second day, of course she did. So anyway, look, so you get the pattern. Then let me take that out of the way. And you get all of this gorgeous fabric. Last time with these fabrics. Now, we've still got the pattern in stock. I don't think we've got it available on its own, have we, at the moment? Okay, there's a handful of just the pattern on the website. I only have one kit left for you, £68.99. And, and we will not be recreating this. So if you want it in this colourway, you need to buy this one because we will not be recreating with these Tilda fabrics. Do you have a breakdown, Hannah, my love? Right. I Three and a half metres of ivory. That one. Metre of that one. I'll hold it up for you. There you go. Metre of that one. Half a metre, half a metre, half a metre, and half a metre. I don't hear all the names. The names are about four sentences long, aren't they? And there we go, look. There you go. Oh, it's sold out. Well, it wasn't difficult. It was only one. Right, sold out, sold out, sold out. John, you're such a tonic. Oh, thank you, Margaret. You're very kind. Right, now, if you want the... I'm, I'm not going to put the graphics through for the, for the pattern, but if you do want the pattern, it's available on the website now, but there's only a handful of them. Right, Twilight Zone next, which is this one. Oh, what? There's only one of these. This is so dramatic, this one. Look, th this is obviously isn't the whole thing. Whoa, I'll do it from upstairs. Look. <coughs> These are things that in the past we thought were sold out, but obviously one person hasn't checked out with this. Morning, John Boy from Mary Ellen in Sunny El uh, Sunny Ferner. I oh, sorry, sorry, what to go. Liz says from F oh Fernac End. Where on earth is that? Oh no, very unusual. Anyway, now I've got the kit for this. So what you get in this kit? So look, the fi the finished size of the quilt is eighty five inches square. Do you know what? It's got a, it's got that optically. Do you know what I've started watching? And I don't really like it, but I've, I, I'm still watching it. Glow up, it's called, and it's a makeup competition, right? Um, I don't. I'm, it's one of those programs I think, oh, they're all rubbish, but I still watch the next one. I don't. Yes, I, I think this, this year whoever chose the contestants didn't choose correctly. But I can imagine it being a fantastic show. Right, I don't have a breakdown of this, but look at these fabrics you get here. Look, so you get this one, everything you need in here. Oh, it'll actually, most of it'll tell you in here because it comes as a kit. There you go, I've got it here. Uh, so you get, right, hang on, what's that one? That one's a black one with flowers on it. That one is uh, a yard, just short of a yard. That one you get five-eighths of a, a yard. This one you get three-quarters of a yard. This one you get one and an eighth of a yard. This one you get five-eighths of a yard. This one swallows one and one eighth of a yard paisley one and a quarter yards and this one white you get five and five eighths of a yard 
Have I got what? No, why? Oh, no, Cousin Susan, that's her name. <coughs> that's her name. Yeah, Cousin Susan's her name. I, I, Hannah was just saying, have you got a cousin called Susan? Here you go. Good morning, John. Lovely shirt. You're a real tonic first thing in the morning from Cousin Susan. We're not related. We're not. That's her name, Cousin Susan. That's her name. There. It's not my cousin, but that's what everyone knows her as. She's someone's cousin. Don't know who's. Derek. Oh, Derek's been in touch. Derek says, good morning, John. Well, this quilt would encourage me into the world of quilting. What skill level? Oh, you'll be able to do it, Derek. No, no, no. Derek who does the singing on a Monday night. Uh, it's designed by Natalie Crabtree. It features art-inspired Starry Night. That must be the fabric. Um, hang on, let me just check if it's got a... It doesn't have a... Well, the thing is, we can't remember what day it was, can we? Oh, actually, look, Derek, if I put that there, is it in the right place? Actually, look, it's really quite simple. It's just so, it's, sell, it's not selling, you don't sell them. Sewing strips together, then you cut them off. Sewing more strips together. Oh, look, it's simple. Yeah, I think what you have to do, I think the le it's a <coughs> you make all the blocks... Oh, actually, all the blocks are identical, with, with obviously fabrics in different orders, and then you just sew them together, twisting and turning them. So all you make is this. That's the block you make there. Oh, my word, you know what? That's so effective. People are going to think, not, they're not going to think you're just a beginner quilt, are they? Oh, look, and you see here, might make your eyes go a bit funny, this. It actually shows you what you do. So you sew those two together, to create that square, then you sew two together in that direction, and then you sew them together to create the... F How brilliant is that? And Derek, the finished size is 85 by 85. That's quite big, isn't it, for a bed? How big's a bed normally? Uh, hang on, six foot, so that's six, 672. Oh, this is one of those little hang over the side of your bed. Nice. Oh, now, more people have got it in baskets than we have it in stock. So I'll let you fight that out amongst yourselves. Not fighting. I don't, I don't condone fighting. But you know what I mean. Um, what is it? Oh, yes, this. Oh, yes, this. Right, I'll open this. Oh, how many have I got? Right, OK. I'll just do it gently. This is from Yvonne. You know Yvonne of the waistcoats who was in the other day? She wears a waistcoat, doesn't she, each time she's on? Well, we wouldn't, what are we going to call you, Hannah, today? Hannah of the wintry jumper and walking boots. <coughs> she's arrived this morning with freezing cold outside, soaking wet hair. And she's, <coughs> so she's got soaking wet hair. She's got the biggest alpine jumper on you've ever seen in your whole life. Uh, jeans and then these great big leopard print walking boots in lilac. Anyway, look, 47... Forty-seven ninety-nine. this is. Uh, I'm looking forward to a lovely show. The sun's here in Dublin, says Louise. Morning, John. I so love to watch you. You brighten up my mornings. Thank you, Trudy. And Beverly says, morning, John and team. Oh, now, Hannah. <coughs> Alan has sent in a picture of his freestyle patchwork block cushion front. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Right, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This is very, very limited. Very limited. Oh, this is like the fabric we had yesterday, wasn't it? If you're watching yesterday, we had this. Uh, so has this been, has this been um, demonstrated on the show? Oh, we just get the date. You also need wadding and calico, apparently, according to Yvonne. Difficulty level three spools. Are they nine pat? Oh, yes, look, you make nine patches. And then they're just squares of the fabric. And then your borders and your cornerstones. 3rd of August, this was demonstrated. Beverly says, good morning, John and team. Good morning, my love. So they're all saying hello. They're all saying good morning. So look at all those gorgeous fabrics you get. Oh, yes. But the front page wasn't, was it? Oh, sorry. I'm not sure why it's a difficulty rating of three. Because you're making your nine patches. Yeah, 
I would just, I wouldn't have said that was a three. If on five, the finish size is forty inches by fifty-two inches, and then all these are all the gorgeous fabrics you need. So that's obviously in your nine patch. That's in your nine patch. They're in your big patches. There, they're not even. They're not. They're just squares. Oh, where does that one go then? Oh, there's the black one there. <coughs> oh, is that the other nine patch one with the grey? Of course it is, of course it is. And then that's your border. That's your border there, look. Sorry, it's early in the morning. Oh, Hazel in Spain. Hazel? Not been around for a while. You've been around the block a few times, Hazel. I tell you, good to see you back, John. Now, Hazel, I'm not back. I'm not back. This is a new job. Maybe the same old set, same old table, same old me. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, have they all gone? More people got that in their baskets and they've got, we've got stock there, okay. I'm gonna put it away carefully. The what? Yeah. Oh. Right, yeah, I'll do that next then. No, I've got a blue one, not a red one. Yeah, hang on a sec. I'll just put that away there because that's sold out now. Shall we do this? Because I did this with Janice. <coughs> okay, I need to warn you about something. Can we show a picture of it, Paul? Victoria Carrington's Robin cushion. She's not Robin it. It's got a Robin on it, right? On pre-sale, half the stock's gone already. Actually, Victoria County, could you design something else? Because that might have sold. I don't know why I'm looking at the door. <laughs> if she could design something else, that'd be brilliant. Right, why well, need to, can you just show that picture again for me? In the kit, right, you've got enough to make a complete cushion like that. And you've also got enough to make three more of the wreath and the robin. You just need to get other fabrics. So in fact, you could make four cushions out of it if you want to, but you need to supply your own backing fabric for the others. But I'll tell you more about that later. Right, so the, I did this with Janice. It was, an, it was only last week, wasn't it? 24th of October, Janice was on. And now this is the blue one. Should we put the blue one in first? Uh, Barbara says, morning, John and team. Nicola says, is that a higher table? Nicola, I'm sitting down. <laughs> it's not a higher table, look. But see, I still see my belt buckle. So it will be eventually, but I can't expect them to bring Liam in on a, you know, one. Uh, Sheena says, morning, John and the team. Three mornings in a row, what a treat. No, I'm only doing two. Yesterday and today. Oh, no, unless you watch me on my show on Thursday. Of course, of course, of course, I forgot about that. Uh, you're keeping me going while my lovely dog is in hospital. Oh, no, Sheena. Uh, Trudy says, I love the Robin cushion. It's very effective. Thank you, Trudy. I don't know why I read it like a school teacher. Like a school teacher. Very effective, John. I never got that at school. Anyway, look, in this kit, you get your fabric. I think it's a metre of the fabric, isn't it? Yeah, one metre of your navy blue. And then you get this panel. Now, you could go, you could go and watch Janice spend an hour making this. But there's no need. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't need any instructions because look you've got fold and fold there you literally fold it there take it up to there and you create your pockets like that like that and like that there you go that's how you make it Anyway, 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 look, so you get the panel. Oh, no, you get this as well. You get this as well, sorry. So you get the wadding, you get the panel, and you get a metre of navy blue cotton for your backing and your binding. And with that, you can create this. Now, Janice didn't quilt this, really, did she? Oh, she's going a bit of quilt. Oh, she quilted it when she did the pockets, but you could do as much quilting as little quilting as you want. Little pockets there, enough room for like a diamond and a tanzanite and a ruby and an emerald or a chocolate in each one. One of those mini chocolates in each one. Just one P&P for everything. 
I've got another one of these in a different colorway. Now, I have to say, when we did it last time, the blue was very, the po most popular. Today, green is the most popular this morning. I don't know why we've done a whole, let, I could just do this, this, and where's the blue? Oh, you have thrown it on the floor. Here we go. Yeah, 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 it's all here in order. <coughs> oh, do you know what? I've put the blooming panel on the floor. Thanks, Anne. I've got a shelf down there. Little Paul's packing as we're going along down here. Right, so you get the panel. You get a metre of the green. Now, this is the most popular today. And you get your wadding. 19.99. Have we got best press on the show today? Anna's getting all angry. She's saying what you could do is you could best press the fabric, the whole panel first, give it a quick iron, and then when you press the seat, the folds up and press it, they'll give you lovely sharp edges. We didn't have it in when Janice was in, that's why hers was a bit wobbly. I didn't touch that. Something fell off the table. I'll sort it, I'll sort it. Oh, actually, I, I should really put these back here because we might come back to that, mightn't we? <coughs> keep checking out, keep going through, keep going through, keep going through. Should we do a book while we just... Wait a minute, let me pack that in there. Right, rainbow patchwork quilts. Now, I don't think, have I seen this one? 14. 14 vibrant patchwork quilt projects plus handy techniques, tips and tricks. Does it show you new binding in here? Oh, yes, I'll tell you that later, actually. I'm not going to tell you it now. There's a special treat in Victoria Carrington's kit later. You only want this book because it's got lots of bright colours in it, that's all. Right, chapter one, the basics. Chapter two, tutorials. Oh, there you go, binding. Binding. Should we photocopy that for Janice? Making an envelope cushion. Half square triangles. You see, these are all the basics in, in um, diamond in a square. Uh, then this one here, chapter three, is quilt projects. Oh, hang on, the camera's not liking it. Not not liking the book, just not liking where I've placed it. I think this is beautiful, this book. Right, this is Vintage Stars. Isn't that a what's-his-name um, song? The man with ginger hair in Manchester. Simply Red. Didn't he sing a song called Vintage Stars? Oh, were you singing, Paul? Racing Stripes. That's nice. No, no, do not let... Oh, I love that one. You don't get, uh, and you'd think the stylist would have checked the length of the jeans, wouldn't you? Disappointed? Oh, no. Oh, no. Have I got another I don't like you, John Scott message? Hang on. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, did you speak to the call centre, Diane? Diane, speak to the call centre about that. I don't know, I don't understand, I don't know anything about that, but speak to the call centre. Yes. Yeah, we don't, we don't understand that. The best way to do it, Diane, is speak to the call centre. They'll sort you out, I'm sure. If not, if not, just get, drop Neil a line and he'll sort it out for you. Ombre, compass. Oh, I say. Then we've got Starburst. That's nice, look, isn't it? Has the studio lost my patchwork cushion picture that I sent in? That's from Alan, yeah. We'll show it, to, we'll show it when we get a minute, Alan. We'll show it when we get a minute, I promise. 80s revival single quilt, Paul. Yeah, Paul hasn't picked up on that one. Uh, 
Oh, he's still single, everyone. Ladies, he's still single. Picnic squares. Um, cushion. Oh, these are cushion projects. Now, Alan, maybe we can show you a picture now because we're doing cushions now. Vintage dash. It's cabin. Oh, that's nice. Cabin blocks. Shaded arrows, little arrows in the thingy, little arrows in your hair. Little arrows, what's that? Little arrows, every now and then. Uh, garden floor cushion. Oh, I wouldn't want to put that in my garden. I have it in my lounge, not my garden. I like that fabric with the eggs on. We don't sell that, though. Oh, it's cotton steel, apparently. Neon squares. Nice. I wonder why you've got those all on the floor in your house, though. Oh, it's a part. We're not allowed pate, are we? Pate. Shelley said, better get in my shed now and crack on with my first quilt. Yes, Shelley, but you've got a telly in there, haven't you? You can still watch us. Lynn Tewitt says, I didn't realise. Oh, OK, Lynn. Yes, there was on the back. Uh, Alice. Oh, Alice and Marion. Alice and Marion. There's no cakes here, Alice and Marion. I was thinking there was a weekend. Where's the cake? Yeah, where's the Saturday cakes, Alison Marion? Oh, she said Little Arrows took me back. Crikey, she must be ancient, must she? If she can remember. Right, Little Paul says, could you bring him a chocolate cake? Uh, oh, he doesn't like icing. Can he just have chocolate without icing, please? And Hannah wants what? Banana loaf. Oh, they're not fussy, are they? Lulu. I'm moving on now, moving on. Lulu, little arrows. Uh, lovely to see you this morning. Last time I did quilting was when I was at school in, in the 1980s. I do have a Christmas welcome kit to do. Looking forward to getting stuck in. Well, get on with it, girl. It's not long till Christmas. How many sleeps must it be till Christmas? Where are we now? What date are we today? The 6th. So it's 25, oh, 50 days. 40, 49 sleeps till Christmas. Rainbow star purse. I'm spending an awful long time on this book. It's because we love it, don't we? Janice says Leapy Lee. What does that mean? Is that the person who sang the song? Oh, there you go. Was Little Arrows by Leap Lee? Where did that memory come from? Can't remember what I did yesterday. No, neither can I. How funny. Little, I thought it was Cliff Richards. But there you go. Uh, Rainbow Coasters, they're pretty, aren't they? Oh, she's nearly 40 like me. No, I am, Alison, I am 40. I turned 40 this year, yeah. I know. And the, the Botox clinics all shut, aren't they? So, Anyway, that's a gorgeous book. T treat yourself to that. Treat yourself to that one. I think this Christmas is all going to be all about treating yourself, self-gifting, the way to go. Oh, let's have a look at Alan's cushion very quickly. Oh, it's random, isn't it? Hang on. I'm just trying to make sense of it now. So uh, you've got half square triangles. Is that a flying geese you've got at the bottom there as well? Very good, Alan. What, what's all that round the edge? Oh, no, no, no. If we put that on. No, no. Round the edge of the screen. Oh, I see. We have to put pictures in frames now. We can't just show them. Anyway, Alan, thank you. That's lovely. Is it like blossom fabric? The, um, it's nice. Anyway, we moved on. Right, next. Thank you for that, Alan. Oh, yes, that's what fell on the floor. I'll be with you in a second. Now, last week... Well, what did I do with it? No, no, that's sticking out. It would have just been the wadding I smacked on. Yvonne... Oh, no. Hang on. Maca... Macadamia. I'm going to call her Yvonne Macadamia. That's... Yvonne Waistcoats, Miss, the Miss Waistcoat 1982. She's lovely. I, I thought she, she had the, most, the best sense of humour. The best sense of humour ever. She was fantastic. Anyway, all of her bags are named after people. Which one are we going to do first? The Sandra in blue. This, this is the Sandra bag. Now, do we, do we save pictures? Oh, OK. So I can't show you a picture of this one then. What day did she do it on? Because this is the one she... 28th of October, if you go to YouTube and look up Sewing Street, 28th of October, this is the one she demonstrated and it's gorgeous. Can I open it? This fabric. Now, I can't remember if she said this was the fabric from France or Germany. The linen is just 
gorgeous. So what you get in the kit is you get enough of the linen, which is the main fabric of the project. It's gorgeous, look at that. Now, you're most probably thinking that doesn't look very stable because it's a very, very loose weave linen. That's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So what she also supplies is some really lovely top quality calico. Now what you do is you don't mount it as in stick it to it, you just sew it around the edge. So this gives the bag a bit of stability, but you still get the fluidity of the linen in there. This is your lining and this is your contrast fabric for the, you see on the picture there. Oh, yeah, this, the, for, the, for, the, uh, for this, for the strap and for the ribbon and for the bow, that's done in the grey on this one. You see what I quite like is if you, if you did that bit, in the grey maybe, that'd be quite nice wouldn't it as well. So this is Sandra in the blue and the grey. We haven't got a picture of the one in the blue colour because that's the one we demonstrated. Apparently I've got pictures, so that's the one that's coming up in a minute, that's the colourway that's coming up in a minute. That, no, 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 that's brilliant, that's brilliant because that, that's the one on the front cover. Because um, she also brought in a couple of others which we haven't got the fabric for but these were the two that were the main ones from that show so what date was it sorry hannah 28th of october was it 28th of october put that down there here's the one now this is the one that little paul just showed you a picture of that's the one she'd made for the show right so what you get here <laughs> It's a very loose weave linen. Now this, if the, other, if the other one was from France, this one's from Germany. Or if the other one was from Germany, then this one's from France, right? Today's the seventh. Oh, so I've got even one less sleep till Christmas than I thought. Thank you, Joe. Lonnie Donegan sang the song as well, says Angie. Little arrows. Right, here we go. Oh, there's two bits of pink in this one. There it is. Plus your grey lining, plus your calico. Everything you need, plus your instructions. This is lovely. Now this is a very, very loose weave linen, this one. It's beautiful. Oh. Really, really gorgeous, that fabric. Oh, Trace, no. Where's that? Is that here or there? Oh, no, no, no. Tell me what it is. I go. Morning, John. Watching you at the beginning of my second furlough. Time with the dogs and more sewing. Time. Love, Tracy in Kent. Oh. Oh, Luna. Squirrels. Squirrels, Luna. She's what? Oh, Luna's back from squirrelling. Oh, I see. It's too, too cold to go walking this morning, so they're going to go after... Uh, we finished. Now, don't forget I'm on for five hours today. Will you be able to hold hold on for five hours? I'm talking to the dog now. No. Okay, that's it in that one. Gorgeous. Next. Oh, now living in loveliness. Now I'm dying to do this because these are in lovely little boxes. You know Kerry from Living in Loveliness, don't you? Right. Okay, this is one of her patterns. There are two colourways. This is the finished thing. This is the finished item here. Okay, now I'm allowed to open these boxes then. It come, look how beautiful, right, okay, this is how yours will come packaged, right? In this lovely box, right, and it's got one of these. Uh, is that, am I opening this colourway? Should I open the other one as we've got that colourway here? Or do, only because only I don't want to open both of them, you see, really. Sorry. So, so in this box here, is this colourway, is this colourway. I don't want to open the box. This is option one, right? So all of these are Liberty prints, obviously, the summer, the flower show. And then this one isn't a Liberty on the back, but it's a, still a lovely cotton. But you get all of that, you get all of that. Obviously you don't get the, the, the cushion isn't in there. Like obviously there's no cushion in this box. I just don't want to open it but I'll open the other one to show you what you get in the box. So if you love this cushion, then that's, that's in there. That's in there, right? Now I'll open the other one. So it's exactly the same pattern. It's a bobbin. Can you see it's a bobbin? Or I'd say that was more of a um, 
cotton spool myself than a bobbin. Oh, it's called a spool, sorry. Right, now I'll open the other one that finishes 47, yeah? I just don't think I need to open that one, do I? Because I've got the finished thing. <gasps> I love the boxes that do that. It's weird, isn't it, how we find something like that satisfying. Oh, no! Oh, look how gorgeous this is. Look how gorgeous this is. It's wrapped in tissue paper inside. She's even left you a little note inside, look, saying, packed with loveliness, lots of love from Kerry. Oh. Right, so this is the other colourway. So is this... Is this Oh, look. So we've got the blue flower. Can you see that, Paul, yeah? Blue flower there. Right, so you've got plain white. Is that for you, to, for you to back it on? I wasn't in for the date of this one. No, that's this. So this is for back mounting it on, I imagine. Yeah. That's what I was asking. Cause, no, no, no. Because look, there's enough fabric here to do the back of your cushion and the little triangles of white. Oh, there's only four little triangles of white on the front. And it's beautiful because it's kind of that white on white pattern. You know, that beautiful white on white pattern. So that's for your back of your cushion and for your pieces on the front. Then you've got, is this Cosmo, this one? No, I don't think that one is Cosmos, is it? I think this one could be Mame or something like that. No, I'm, going to, I'm just making it up now because you get all of this in here. So that's for some of your triangles. Oh, oh, I love this one. I've got this one in the lilac -y colours. Is that your spool on this one? Is there enough there to do spool on that one? It'll tell you in the instructions which fabric to use. It will tell you which one to use. And then there's your blue squares and your blue half tri... Here you go, I can tell you now. Finish size the, the cushion is 18 by 18 inches. So fabric one, you get 44 inches, so that's the, the white on white. Fabric two is six by 22 inches, which will be th th this one. No, that's 44 inches, that one. Oh no, that's your eight and a half by 44. Six by 22, 11 by 15, 35 by 20, and 20 by 20. Brilliant. And it tells you everything. Oh, look at these. Look at these instructions. I'll put them in the Oh, look, there's a... Please read this before you start, it says. Read your pattern thoroughly before you start. I will say that. Iron all your fabrics with best press. When I talk about marking your project with a pen, I always say, oh, this is fantastic. So if you've never, ever done anything before, she doesn't take anything for granted that, you, you, you know, lots of people just go, oh, do this, do that. And you think, oh, well, I don't know what that means. It's got, a, before you even start with the pattern, read that first. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? So, yes, you're right. I think the bobbin in the middle must be that one there. Or is it that one there? No, yeah, I think it's that one there. I think it's that one there. Anyway, you'll be able to work it all out when you read the pattern properly. Not just skimming it through like me. Oh, that gorgeous Liberty Fabric. I do love this Liberty Fabric. I didn't get that. When I bought mine, I didn't buy that in the multicolour. I only bought it in the lilac and lavender. Oh, that's gorgeous. I think her husband cut that one. Have you seen her husband on Facebook? He's very, very handsome. Very handsome. Very, very handsome. All right, Anna says, all right, John, shut up. <laughs> Apparently, when she does her um, Facebook Lives, this hand appears at the side to, to pass her everything. That's her husband's hand. Well, I don't know. I don't know if anyone's ever seen the hand. Right, so that's Living in Loveliness from Kerry. Oh, gosh, look, I've got loads still to do. No. Let's do this. Quilt should go. It's a thermal bag. It's a, th a thermal. No, this was my very first. Was that my very first day? It was something like the 6th of October, my very first day. 
Do I know how many people are watching on Facebook, YouTube and TV? We know Facebook and YouTube. We don't know TV. We don't know TV. Uh, Juliana from Guernsey. Morning, John. Have to say, Sewing Street is the best, most friendliest programme ever. I love it. Getting you back. I'm not back. Getting you back has made me so happy. You make me laugh so much. By the way, I love your floral belt buckle. Thank you, Prev. 7th of October. There you go. What did I say? 6th. 7th of October. Yeah, the one I did on that day wasn't this one. Oh, no, it was my second day. Because this one was with... Um, uh, yes, Sally Ann Harris on my first day. This was my second day, wasn't it, of course. Anyway, look, so it, you don't get the buttons in the kit, but you do get the elastics. You do get the webbing that goes in the handle. And a plastic sheet to put in the bottom of your bag. But it's thermal. It's thermal, right? There's, there's, no, there's no fabric in it. It's literally just the quilt as you go. It's your quilt as you go, though. It's got metal in it. It's got metal. Can you see? You can, you can, you can still put it in your, um, through your sewing machine. It's easy to go through, but don't put it in your microwave. Well, no, because it's to keep warm and cold in, so you might want to put one of your pizzas in. If you make a pizza at home and nip it round to your mum's, Paul, you might want to put it in one of those. Microwave the bag. So don't microwave the bag, because you want it to stay warm. Anyway. Yeah, Paul, you're not going to microwave your bag. Right, what do you want to do next? Say, Debbie Von Krosler Von... Oh, I haven't got it. It's not here. Never mind. Mug rugs. I've got two... Cara Ackerman made these. You could have... You, in here, you don't get any fabric. These are just samples that Cara Ackerman made. These are both log cabins. Oh, have I? Right, so this is the log cabin one. And you get three, you get three patterns in one packet. So ten ninety nine will give you three of these. No fabric, obviously, it's just the quilt as you go. Fourth of August. May the fourth of August be with you. No, that's just nice. So. Good morning, John. Oh, no, good morning, wonderful people, this one says from Margaret. Loving the shirt. Thank you, my lovely. That's from Margaret. Right, OK. OK. Right. Right, and then I'm going to do the other one before I go. I haven't got this one made up, though, unfortunately. These aren't log cabins. They, 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 there you go, there you go, there you go. Donald. Donald, where's your trousers? Donald says you can put a pocket on the front and it becomes a book pillow. Oh, Donald. Donald, where's your trousers? That's a song. Right. This one here, again, it's just the quilt as you go. You get three of them in there. Oh, three different ones this time. The log cabin ones are all the same. These are three different ones. Uh, so if you don't know, Quilt As You Go is, I'll try, I'll quick, can I open this one here again? Quilt As You Go is where you get the wadding already and the instructions of how to cut your fabrics out, but then you actually sew it straight through. You place, here you go, there's one, you see, there's the simple one. You place your background fabric on the back and then you place your pieces of fabric on top and the blue lines are placement lines, they're not sewing lines, quarter inch seam allowance. Create your own little quilt as you go. And then you buy and cut it off and bind it, and there, there it is. Lovely quick project. Ten ninety nine. We'll get you all three of those. Which one's that? Oh yes, yes, yes. I've got a quilt kit because they've been very popular this hour, haven't they? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it comes with a book, doesn't it? There it is. Yeah. Right. Here we go. Look at this. This is forty two ninety nine. On the 8th of October, this was made. Now, the book is called Sew and Quilt. It's techniques and projects for hand stitch and patchwork, a beginner's guide, right? So it's full of fantastic ideas, right? But then what we've done is we have bundled together for you two and a half metres of fabric in total. Here it is, this one. Four. 
Sunlight, a baby quilt. Is that only two and a half metres of fabric? No, there's more than them. Half, half. Half, that's one and a half. Two and a half. I think it's, well, anyway, what does it say on the graphics? Two and a half metres. So you get half metre of the pink, half metre of the grey, metre of the yellow, half metre of the rainbows. That must be half a metre. It feels like a metre, but it must be half metre of the blue. There you go, I thought it was three and a half metres. You get one, one, half, half, half. You get more fabric than the graphic, but we only charge you for what it says. We only charge, and you get the book as well. £42.99 and, and the instructions of how to make it look. Oh, it's a theme, isn't it, going on? Like a log cabin-y theme going on. Quilty goes a fantastic way to start your patchwork journey, says um, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Cheryl says, good morning, everyone. Only just joining you, even though I set the alarm. Cheryl, Saturday morning, get up. <laughs> Hannah says, as long as it's before 12, it's fine. Anyway, should we move on? Should we move on? Uh, so the things I haven't done, I might bring to you in my, another hour later on. Oh, actually, they're on the website. They're on the website. Don't need to. They're all on the website. Everything from this... What's Will? Yeah, we'll go for a break now. What are you saying to me though, Hannah? I've got an issue, right? This, coming up in the next hour, there's only 10 left. I'm ever so sorry. Uh, but we've also got the other project in the next hour. Could you mind, Paul? These are selling as well. The what? A third of the stock of that one's gone. The Santa is, is he going, ooh, or is he whistling? Or is he singing, little arrows in the... Anyway, we will see you in four minutes from now. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual, you'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Sam from Adventures in Crafting. I'm a craft and crochet teacher based in Tring in Hertfordshire. Since lockdown, I've moved all of my classes onto Zoom, so I now have customers from all over the country. I teach lots of crafts, but crochet is my specialism. I became passionate about crochet when I was pregnant with my fourth child and in desperate need of some me time. Crochet became my sanctuary and I've crocheted every day since then. I'm a qualified teacher and eight years ago I began teaching crochet. I love sharing my passion with other people. I design patterns, sell kits and teach lots of classes. My classes range from beginners to next steps, specific makes and clubs. I also like to design crochet alongs 
My most recent one was my Autumn Granny Square crochet along, which resulted in me designing this allotment jumper, which I love to wear when I'm out gardening and looking after my chickens. <laughs> my crochet tip for you is to enjoy it. Crochet should be about taking part in a hobby that brings you pleasure. My claim to fame is that I met Kirsty Allsop at the Handmade Fair and I gave her one of my crochet sunflower brooches. I'm so excited to be taking part in Yarn Lane and I hope you'll enjoy my demonstrations. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn? Bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. Watch us on Freeview Channel 74, Sky Channel 670 or on our YouTube channel. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Uh, before I start off with Victoria Carrington, I, I think everybody must have just woken up at nine o'clock on this Saturday. Marina, morning, sorry I'm late. Lindsay, morning, sorry I'm late. Karen, morning. Uh, and June, morning, John. Everyone's got up, I think, haven't you? You've just missed the most fantastic hour. I can't tell you. Anyway, Victoria Carrington's with me, but I've got not some bad news, but one of the kits of which we thought we had loads, right? We've only got like, is it five left? Four left now, four left. So I'll just show you quickly what you're getting. It's the Winter Robin Cushion. I'll get Paul to show you a picture because it's up on, Oh, it's up, it's up there on the shelf. It's up there, it's up, there it is. There it is, right? It's only $19.99. Now, obviously, you don't get the cushion pad in there, but you get enough to make a whole cushion, plus you've got enough to make three more wreaths and robins if you then want to make other things like other cushions, but you'll have to buy your own fabric for the background. Do you see what I mean? So there's enough to make a complete cushion, complete, 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 and then three more of the wreaths that go on the front there. So this is it, this is your bundle. Look at the gorgeous colours. So you get your cream for your background there, and then you've got red, black, white, like a conquer colour, green, dots. Oh, now I've seen that one before, I could, because I think that looks like either avocados cut in half or fried eggs. Plus you've got the, look, 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 all those lovely fabrics, $19.99. Now, we will be showing you, even if it sells out in the next second, we will be showing you some of the demo techniques from that later on in this hour with Victoria Carrington, right? But the other, the other um, kit that Victoria has done is this one here. Oh, sorry if you missed out on the Robin, it's sold out. Sold out, sold out, sold out. We will, we, will, we will still do the demo, but this is gorgeous. Right, now, it's not what you think. It's not a hoopy. Used to, it's not a hoopy. It's like a great big um, coaster. Look, oh, sorry, I put it there. Look. Isn't it gorgeous? Now, this will be the first demonstration. Look. It's a, it's a, it's a coaster, big coaster sort of thing, isn't it? You put the mince pie there. You put your... Santa's drink there. You put the carrot there. Now, is Santa going, ooh? Or is he whistling? Or is he going, ooh, look at the state of the furniture in this house. You know what I mean? And there's Rudolph outside waiting patiently. Anyway, look at the kit. Look at the kit. Look at the kit. So you get all these little fabric. These are all cut for you, red. Not cut into shape, but they're already pieces of fabric here. Plus your blue for your background and your back, backing. Oh, now there's a slight difference here. This one's got stars on it, and ours is a plain blue, isn't it? Yeah. That one's got stars on it, ours is a plain blue. 
Plus you got your, your silvery, silvery, silver thread for the, for the writing. Plus you've got the full instruction uh, pan, uh, in, in there, which Victoria's got on the desk, so I won't open this one. £19.99. pence. Now, Victoria Carrington, you've not been in this studio before, have you? No, I haven't. And she arrived this morning. We're all masked up. We all, we've all, oh, I've left it in there. We've all got what's it visors now. So it's like a pair of glasses you put on with a visor that comes down the front. Obviously, we can't wear it while we're on air, but we're all in the office wearing them there. So there was Hannah over there, he, me here, Paul over there, and then Victoria walked in and we were all standing there going, hello, hello. She's <laughs> like, oh. She was all masked up and everything. Anyway, we obviously take it off to come, come on, on air and everything, but I've just sanitised and Victoria's yeah. got sanitizer there. So it's lovely to see Good you. Morning. I haven't seen you for ages. I know, ages, I haven't been on I? for ages. Well, I've, I've, I haven't been here for that. I've only been here a month. New boy. I'm the new boy. <laughs> I'm the new boy. It was really funny in the first day. Everyone's like, oh, love you back, love you back. I'm like, not back, yeah, not back. Yeah. It's a new job, new job. Uh, right, so you, these are your designs. Yes, yep. Yeah. And everything. Can you just put your um, instructions in front of you to start with? Have it facing you. That's it. And just turn the pages yeah. so, so we can see how thorough the instructions are. Paul, come to the upstairs camera now. There you go. There we go. Okay. So, um, so I've written all these and. Did you Put take the pictures as well? Yes, yes. Crazy. Been busy. That's why I've been here for so long. Oh, so. I know. <laughs> Look, I have to use a computer and everything. Oh wow. <laughs> I wasn't that bad. Um, so yeah, full colour instructions, um, A4, nice size writing, and I've made sure it's all evenly spread out so it's easy to yeah. easy to read. And then obviously how you do the bond web, um, positioning, all that sort of thing, and your binding as well on this one because this is a bias bound project. Um, and then in the back you've got all your full size templates, and then obviously your alphabet to personalise it with your own names. And yeah, Hannah's so desperate for one of these. Is she? So we, we, we were prepping yesterday, and she was getting so excited because she still puts things Is out she? for Father Christmas. And her name's nice and short, so it wouldn't take too long to do. You could do one for her. No, she could make her own. <laughs> I, or I could just unpick this one. <laughs> <laughs> or we just change the name to Grace and let's unpick <laughs> Alice. Are these your two, Grace and Alice? Yeah, Aww. yeah, yeah. Right. So? She's a bit worried because she's got to spend Christmas on her own, isn't she, in her bubble? Anyway, I've, I've got no sympathy for her. <sighs> so where do we start? I'll let, okay. I'll let you just get on. I won't interrupt right. you many times. So in the kit, you, yeah. get, um, you get enough fabric, as you said, to do the front and back and binding. And then with the smaller fabrics, you've got enough there to do three of the pictures so if you wanted to make if you've got say grandchildren from different families you could make three if you bought um oh i got that wrong so backing. i said it was the real one plus three more so it's three in total of the wreaths sorry did you just say the background on blue but if you want to, oh no i'm in the wrong project sorry <laughs> i'm in completely the wrong project i'm still on the robin sorry so from the smaller fabrics yep, yep. You can These. recreate the appliqued bits yes. three times. Sorry, yeah, it was the other so one. So you about, just yeah. need to buy an additional one meter of the navy and say half a meter of the red, and then you could make three of them. Okay, so we can make a complete Christmas Eve mat. Yeah. And then two extra Santas, two extra reindeers, two extra carrots, yeah. two mince pies, and two drinks. And then whatever you want to do, whether you want to make a cushion or anything like that, yeah. you could use those because you don't actually have to use. You could have that for Santa, but then you can make lovely little Christmas cushions with Father yeah. Christmas and the reindeer on and everything like that. Yeah, definitely. You? Perfect. Okay, so first of all, you get your fat, red fat quarter. So we're going to cut the bias strips out of this for the binding. Right. Okay, so... Would you spray it with Best Press first? No, you don't yes. have to do it now. No, but, <laughs> but another thing I was thinking about when yeah. you were talking about the Best Press was, you know, you get that central folds down the fabric, which is really hard to get rid of. That Best Press is also really good for getting rid of that Perfect. as well. Um, so we're going to cut this on the bias. So this is the normal way you'd you'd cut it along the the grain. Yes. Um, but for obviously for the bias, we're going to cut it along that way so we can mould it round the yes. round the circular edge. Okay. So what you do is you take your fat quarter and you fold it in a triangle like that. Okay. Spinning round. Yeah. Just has to lean into it, Paul, just to do the folding. She'll be right after she's done the folding. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to cut two and a half inch strips and four of them. So I'm going to put my two and a half inch marker against the point there. Yeah. And then line up my 
straight line across the fold. Okay, there. so you've got the fold going across the bottom next to you. Yep. And you're lining up. So I'm lining up my two and a half inches with the point of the fabric okay. there. Okay. And then I'm going to do four of those. Right. So there's. Um, when we do dressmaking mm -hmm. and we do bias, we automatically cut along the fold to make the bias. Uh, well, yeah. no, we, I say we, I was trapped taught when you fold the fabric in half like you have, yeah. but then you cut along, you see you're going up and down the fabric. Yeah. We, were, we were taught to, to cut the length of the fold. Yeah. That, I think maybe it's because if you're doing a hem, you want some long, you need longer pieces and that way you get oh, a kind right, of slightly yeah. longer piece. Don't yeah. You? Because you, you, you don't really need a lot to get round no, no. round this. So I've done one, two. So we're going to set these aside for later on. Yeah. And then we use the red corners oh, yes, for the applique. Because so what you don't want to do is cut first. out the applique and then realise you've cut exactly into yeah. the bit where you need yeah. to cut your strips. So I've got those four strips there and I'll set those aside. So you've got all that to make your Father Christmas hat and gloves from. Right, okay. okay. I also need to warn you that we're getting limited on this pattern now as well, on okay. this kit now. So, next job. Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> you I haven't been here for a while, can't no, you? No, no, you're doing ever so well. What <sighs> right. have we got there then? So this is freezer paper, okay? Freezer paper. So handily, that's 15 inches wide. Mm -hmm. So we're going to cut a 15 inch square of freezer paper. That's handy. And we're going to fold that in half. And then when you fold fabric or paper or anything like that, instead of just folding it like that, because you can get a creased yeah. corner, you then open it up. Oh, and fold it. And the then other fold way. it the other way and check that you're matching at those okay so there. for people who don't know what is freezer paper okay so freezer paper is um it's got a shiny side and a papery side so basically what you can do is create templates from it and then you use an iron to press that onto your fabric and it sticks whilst but, you cut it out or sew around but there's it. no glue is there there's nothing no, and, and there's no residue left on your the, fabric yeah, yeah exactly and you can glue it a few times as well so if yeah. you make a mistake they can put it back and iron it again yeah, yeah yeah you can probably use it up to four to six times you know you can also wrap your beef up and put it in the deep in the deep freeze <laughs> Says it, says it on the packet. It does, I don't, I don't understand how that would work really. Well no, that when I was little we didn't have freezer bags, it used to wrap things in like that to put in the freezer, in those days. <sighs> right, anyway, okay, so, so you folded it, yeah. ignore the fact I've drawn on it already. Oh, all right. I thought I've got to keep more? moving during this, haven't I? So I thought I'd do it all beforehand. Then what you do is you take your pattern, yeah. with, your, with this template, you line your folds up to the edge of the template, and then you draw around your curve and trace your right. text. Okay, you fold that in half. Oh, clever! I was going to say, and then you draw around the whole circle, but you're only drawing one and quarter of it, out. and then you're cutting it yeah. using your paper scissors, yeah. of course. It took me ages to work out how to do this. Because <laughs> you've got to make. I it wouldn't fit. admit to that. You've got to make it fit on the. Um, on the paper you're working with as well, so people don't have to enlarge it or reduce it. So, so then you end up with this. Perfect. Okay. Then you take that and you line that up with your other template. Yes. It's doing the same thing again. Okay. Yeah. So you don't have to draw that line because you've already got that on. So you trace the love bit and also the line there. Right. Okay. So you'll end up with that. Oh, look, you've got every stage. It's like Blue Peter this day, isn't it? <laughs> I've been busy this week. What, right. doing this? Yeah. <laughs> so, then what you do, to personalise it, you take your alphabet sheet. Right. And then you work. So, if I'm doing Grace and Alice, like I did on mine. Do Hannah. Hannah. Oh, oh no, have you practised? Oh, how many letters? So, let's say the middle one. So, the, the middle one is... It's six letters, so H A N. -N, -N. So in between the two N's okay. is, your, is your middle. Okay. So I'm going to put. Sorry, I shouldn't have phoned N that. There. No, it's it. okay. So I'm going to start on the middle. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just literally tracing round. I'm going to spell a name that wrong now, aren't I? Yeah, no, H-A-N-N-A-H. It's the same backwards yeah. as forwards, right? Um, 
Lots of people saying how lovely it is to see you. Oh, thank you. Morning, says Pam. Morning, Morning. says Heather. Princess, what's it, says, I've just tuned oh. in. I've had an awful night, but oh, so no. pleased to have Miss Victoria. Oh, bless uh, Trudy says, I'm not surprised that kit's nearly gone. It's so beautiful. Oh. Um, Beverly says, thank you, Victoria, for considering spacing and print in your instructions. Oh. Um, uh, Kath says, I love watching other people measuring and cutting out. It really helps me remind me how to do it correctly. Don't watch, don't watch Victoria then. <laughs> don't watch Victoria. It all goes to pop when I come Maureen on here. says, lovely to see Victoria with John. Hope she comes again with some of her toy designs. Have you got toy designs? Ooh, Ooh. Nice. And then try... Do <laughs> some. No. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> right, so I've traced that onto there. Yeah. You can see that, can't you? Yeah. Managed to spell that one right. Okay, so... Um, for the minute, I'm just going to set that aside, right. and then with your navy fabric, yeah, you're going to cut two squares, okay? Right. Um, on one of them, you need to put some medium weight interfacing, Which iron on. Got here. Brilliant. So it, this is um, you get a meter square here, and how much do you say you're using? Forty? How many? Uh, se seventeen by seventeen. Oh, seventeen by seventeen. So you get okay. three out of that, wouldn't yeah. you? And a lot of people already have, we much. didn't put it in the kit because a lot of you have already got it at home. But if you haven't got any at home, then you can get it now, right? Okay, so I've got that on the back of one and I've set my other one aside for later. Now I'm going to take my freezer paper template. Uh, just so you know, this kit's now sold out as well. We will carry on with the demo, don't worry, but the kit's now sold out. And I'm going to press this onto here. Right. Is it big enough? Yeah, so just make sure you've got your, the, the um, interfacing on the back is underneath you. Template. Right. Okay. Okay. So that's the freezer paper that you've ironed on to one of the blue yeah. sheets. With the interfacing on the back. With the interfacing back. on the back. Right. And don't use your steam iron when you're putting the freezer paper on, otherwise it does wrinkle it up a bit. Does it? Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, so then what you do is you cut that out yeah. with some sharp scissors. <laughs> Rather than your blunt scissors. Yeah. Yes. And oh, look, you can make loads from this show today. <laughs> yeah. I can start up a factory. Okay, so next. So you've taken the freeze paper off now? Yes, I've peeled the freeze paper. So, yeah, so I'll just show you how easy that is to yeah. get that off. So literally that just comes away no like that. And leaves no residue. No, nothing. Okay, perfect. Right. So you, uh, you've only put your freezer paper on to cut your circle out? Yes. Yes. Yeah, perfect. well I'm going to use that again later yeah. on. Okay, so I'm going to make my, all my bond web shapes now. So in the back, you've got all your shapes. You just trace those off onto your bond web. Right. Onto the paper side. Yeah, we've only got small packets of bond web at the moment. I've not got one to show you, but it's on the website. So you draw straight through the bonder web with paper side up, drawing yep. your templates. Yeah. Yeah. And then you press that onto the wrong side of your fabric. Okay. Okay. And then you just cut that out. I'm just going to do it really roughly. Oh. Because we're we're against the time today, aren't we? We've got two projects. Well, to they're do. both sold out. Oh. That's good, but bad. It's brilliant. <laughs> okay, and then yeah. so you've got your shape, and then you just simply score across the back with scissors or a pin, and then just peel that away, and then that's ready to stick on. Okay. Right. So, is that all you need the orange for then? The carrot. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's why the um, the warehouse cut them down into small sizes yeah, for me. Yeah, of course. So that was oh really yes, because in the old days you'd have had to do half a meter of every yeah, single one, wouldn't you? Would, you would, yeah. 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 So these are great kits, kits for that because yeah. obviously if you've got some of, you, you might have some colours, but you might not have some of others. Yeah. Okay. So what you then do is you take your freezer paper circle and then you cut out along these folds. Oh, so you end okay. up with some slices. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to position that one at the bottom like that. Right. What door's banging? Somebody keeps banging a door. I thought... 
Oh, okay, it was you coming in and out. That's fine, that's fine. I could just hear doors banging. No, 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 no. I was worried that someone was coming in. That was all. Right, so okay. hang on. So what did we cut out? So, you, so you... I've got my... Triangle. Triangle. I've just positioned that on. You don't need to iron that on okay. at this point. So now, I've so obviously I've cut all my shapes out. Oh, okay, the Templates yeah. at the back. Yeah. And I'm just going to position my reindeer on. So you're looking to have just a small gap here. Yeah. But I've put that into the pattern because obviously if you started putting him up here and him up here, you wouldn't have enough space at the top for your other yeah. writing. Okay. So I'm just going to do this roughly. So yeah, so you're bond webbing all these shapes on. So the bond web. Um, oh, is it only two ninety nine the little packet? That's good, isn't it? Um, and can you choose whichever colours you want to make your rain because yeah. reindeer out of? Because you've got several creamy, beigey, browny colours on here. Yeah. Oh no, one will be the mince pie, wouldn't it? Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I used my mince pie one as his body, so yeah. you can mix and match them. Okay, perfect. Okay, and then again with the Father Christmas. Don't be so mean on yourself. Your body doesn't look like a mince pie. <laughs> <laughs> I do after last lockdown. Oh, don't. What are you making out of Father Christmas now? Okay, so I'm doing the Father Christmas. Again, obviously in the instructions, it'll tell you what order to put these in, where to put them, etc., etc. Yeah, obviously. Obviously. This seems like, where's this little mouth? Hang on. Oh. Oh. He's in here somewhere. So. Oh, it looks lovely. I've just I've just seen on the, on the upstairs camera how lovely it looks. Do you know what? I prefer it with the plain background. Do you I know, know what I, know I yours do as well? Got, yeah. Yours has got the little stars on it. I was like, well, that's a shame. Because you lose actually, you lose the writing yes. on with the coloured um, with the pattern background. So I do I, think, yeah, I it, think looks it looks better lovely like that. with the plain background. So we've just put in his. What a fantastic demo, says Dawn. Oh, thanks, She's so Dawn. well, no, Victoria's so well prepared oh. and calm. Oh, I don't know about that. And not phased by working with John. Oh. That's not very nice thing <laughs> to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you stick those down. Oh, now, Donald has said, if he's bought the kit, do you mind if they make and sell them? No, I don't mind. No, Donald, she doesn't. As long as you're not mind. selling them on a large scale, I have no problem with that. Well, the whatsoever. thing is, no, because if you're going to make 10,000 of them for John Lewis's, you're going to be a bit busy, aren't you? <laughs> uh, Jackie says, loving seeing Victoria again. I've already Aww. bought the kit. What is the navy fabric so I can order another metre? It's on the it's on the plain section. Okay, so Rose and Hubble, the plain ones that we sell. Yeah, and it's just called navy. Navy, navy, Jackie. But you know what, Jackie? I think it, well, no, do navy, do navy. But I think it'd be quite nice to have different coloured backgrounds. Maybe. Well, I'll do a black one for, for dead of night, I think. I don't know. It's up to you. Who am I? I don't know. Right Obviously, then, I'm, so a, I'm a nightmare to work with, according to Dawn, so it's fine. <laughs> so, like I said, just make sure that that's positioned correctly yeah. here. Okay? Yeah. So then what you do is you stitch around each of the shapes. So you can do that with um, a standard foot... Um, on a short stitch length, or you can free motion. Okay, so have you just done straight stitches, or have you done zigzag stitches? Um, I just did a, a straight free motion stitch all the way around, and right. I went over it twice, so okay. it looked a bit sketchy. Mm -hmm. Let me just get rid of these, because I'm getting a bit... How many? Yes. <laughs> chaotic. Okay. So, you've done your applique. Yeah. On those two, not the middle bit yet. What's that white line going down? Oh, Sorry, that's it's a needle. Red. I was going to say, all I could see was a white line going down his <laughs> face. <laughs> right, so what am I doing next? What are you doing next? I don't know. Okay, so what you need to do then is we need to transfer these letters onto this fabric so you can yeah. embroider over them. Okay, so what you do is you get your char copy paper. Char copy paper. Yeah. Now, I, I had some dressmaking carbon paper at home which I tried with this and it didn't work and I tried a few different ones so we chose this one okay the best right option. so what you're saying is in the old days when I used to do my tracing wheel we'd have a blue a blue one an orange one and a white one in the packet but it does go everywhere the char copy paper for some reason doesn't seem to create as much fluff as the other one does no. but in this one you get a blue a green a red a white and a yellow so you can use oh sorry I keep I 
when we were sewing quarter, everything had to be that way up, you see, and I can't get used to having it towards me. Because if you're doing a class, you go like that, don't you, to show you yeah, ladies yeah. in the class and, and gentlemen in the class. Anyway, so that's your chart copy paper. How much is it? Three ninety nine. You get all those sheets in there. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what you do is you then put your um, text down again. Over the top of the paper. Yeah. Now and you have to make sure that the chalky side then is down yes, of the chart do. copy paper, don't yeah. you? Yeah, and you have to make sure that your edge is kind of lined up underneath. Yeah. And then all you do is I used a biro and just go over the top with the biro. Now you have you do have to give it a bit of welly with this. Now if you if you love your hand own handwriting, you're confident enough, could you get something like a friction pen? and just write it freehand. I suppose you could, yeah. Well, you've done that on yours, haven't you? On, on the paper originally. You've, have you well, I, I used this, I did oh, a bit okay, of the... Fine. But if somebody loves their own hand, or if you yeah. want to put lots of love Nana from Nana or something like that, and they're used to seeing yeah. Nana written, yeah. you could do it in your own handwriting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you could just write out, you could do that. Oh yeah. You and just write over the top of it, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then that's... Let's have a look at that, Paul. On there. You could, now, you can't see that very well from we can, there, we can, but I can. can see it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then that's really good because I'm giving it a bit of welly there and it's not coming. that's not coming off. Dawn's all d uh, worried now that I've, she's upset me. She's saying, I meant being in your presence, John. Stop fishing oh. for compliments. Oh, don't worry, Dawn. <laughs> I'm not offended at all. Right, okay. Okay, so now I'm taking my embroidery thread. How many threads have you got? Uh, four. Oh. Okay, and I'm just going to do a back stitch. Right. This is DMC 25. It's in your bundle anyway. It's in your bundle. You don't need to worry about it at all. Number 27. Or oh, you might need to buy some more, though, because we'll use a whole skein for all the, the letters. Because uh, you know we were saying, you know. might have some in your stash, might not you? Or you might have some yeah. glittery one that you want to use as well. I'm just thinking about for the, when, if you do repeats like Jackie's going to do, um, you might need a bit more embroidery thread, might you? So you're just doing a back stitch, yeah. yeah? And then at the start and end yeah. of every stick, I just did a um, French knot. Oh, did you? Yeah. Will you show us how to do that then? <laughs> you didn't see her face then. <laughs> I said, could you do that for us? She was like... <laughs> It's one of those things that you, you know, know it's going to go wrong. The Victoria Carrington that came to the very, very first show, the first time we did a show together, there is no way you would have done backstitch so successful. You'd have been like this. <laughs> I know. The, the first show that Victoria did with me, she, I mean, you were, you were terrified, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, I do get really nervous and I do get really shaky. But why? Because you're brilliant at what you do. I think I'm just one of those people. Yeah, you are, but you're brilliant at what you do. Okay, so I've come out, I've come out yeah. in the front of my work yeah and i'm going to go wrap oh, it you are around gonna do one, yeah i'm going to go three times i've okay. wrapped it around my needle three times oh. <sighs> yes okay. it's fine it's just she wasn't expecting to do this then i'm going to go back in yeah and i'm going to pull that tight yeah hold hold on to it with my nail yeah that's fine and then you don't have to do a French cut if you don't want to. You can just finish off, couldn't you? Yeah. 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 So it looks nice yeah. though. It does it does make a difference when you finish off with that. Yeah. Or you can free motion um free motion it or if you've got an oh, embroidery no, it machine. Looks, it looks like that. It does look like that font that has, you know, dots yeah, at the top and yeah. the bottom, doesn't it? Yeah, you're right. Or if you've got an embroidery machine, you could probably set up something to be able to do it yeah. for you. You might have to do it before for you cut the circle though right because you've got to oh, fit, okay. it has to fit into um normally if you've got an embroidery machine it has to fit into what's uh, those things called you know uh, the squares yeah, yeah. You know I mean? shows what i know about embroidery yeah, machines exactly. doesn't it okay so you've done that and you've done the top <laughs> i wish you get one letter <laughs> <laughs> okay fine and then so now you've got that in you'll be able to see where you can position your my little thingies Pl in oh, the plastic. Oh yeah. no. So then you can position your mince pie and all that sort of can thing. Can you just pull it to your right a little bit? Thank you. Perfect. Paul's told me about 15 times today where to put it. Yeah, I'm no, still no, no. not doing I do it, it all the time. It's like me putting <gasps> it upside down. All Paul has to go, can you just turn it around? Yeah. Just turn it around. 
Um, I agree, says Derek. I agree with you, John. Victoria is brilliant and oh, a pleasure to you. watch. Oh, thanks. More Victoria, please. Oh, if I can get some pattern, more patterns done, I would definitely come back soon. Um, Sharon Davis Norbury in Yorkshire says, Morning, John. Loving thee. And then there's just a great big question mark. <laughs> Uh, Lynn Tewitt says the chalk copy paper will be great for tracing my red work patterns. Yes, it will. Yeah. Yes, it will. And these things, once you've got them in your stash, you can you yeah. use them for all sorts and of things. And also chalk copy paper, it. it's like that dressmaking paper. It lasts for years and years and years. You don't have to keep rebuying yeah. it. Yeah. Right. So stitch all over all over these. Bits. And you can choose, like you've put it in that order, but you can choose wherever you want to put it. Really, yeah. you could yeah, have the carrot going straight down if you wanted yeah. to do things, couldn't you? Now for. When you're transferring, so in the back here, there are the um, carrot drink mince pie fonts. Right. So you just trace those off. Now you trace those onto just normal paper for this. Right. Okay. And then I just cut a cut like a circular bit there because once you put your carbon paper on, you can't really see where the edge where of the thing going, is. Yeah. So again, you just trace that off and then hand stitch. Exactly that. the same as you did the name and the lots of love yeah, at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Also, you might not want to leave, might not want to leave him a mince pie. No. What else would you leave Father Christmas? I don't know, maybe you would. A cookie. A cookie. You could do it the same and then just um, embroider some brown yeah. chocolate bits. Or <laughs> an apple, if it's a healthy Santa. Yeah. Bag of crisps. <laughs> or Paul, Paul always makes, in Paul's ha ha house, he makes homemade flapjacks on Christmas Eve. Does he? Yeah. Anyway, mm. right, okay, let's carry on. Okay, so now binding so we're going to take our strips that we cut earlier oh i'm getting in the, oh look at the mess i'm sorry now this is now okay so what you've done is you're going to just show us how your version of making yes. bias binding i also i'll do this i've got a bias binding maker here as well which you, if you want to i'll show you in a minute how you can use that but for the meantime let's just um okay. do victoria's method so i'm taking my bias strips Oh, did you sigh at me then? No, I'll, I'll keep sighing through stress. Stress. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so why has it got a, it's got a, it already naturally has the angled end, doesn't it, yes. from the way you've cut it? Yes. Um, <coughs> I'm just trying to see. So, for example, you wouldn't necessarily use this one. Yeah. But can you see how, when I've cut it on that fat quarter, I've ended up with a funny Hang on, we'll go upstairs, don't worry. We'll go upstairs for that. There you go. Okay, so also in the pattern, I'll show you how to do this as well. Right. So in that case, what you need to do is you take your ruler with your 45 degree line. Yeah. And you line that up. Yeah, just. And then you just trim that straight. Yeah. So that's getting your perfect 45 degree angle on yeah. your strip, yeah. Okay, so we're going to take two of these. Yeah. And because this is a solid, it doesn't matter but normally you do right sides together. Yeah, of course. And we are going to put position them so that where these... Oh, yeah, just pop, pop your head back for me. Sorry. No, 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 don't apologise. There you go. Okay, so where these cross here... Yeah. That's a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Okay, so... You can draw yeah, you're that not, on. you don't join it straight. You no. draw, always join it on the 45 yeah. degree, don't you? Uh, so 90 degrees, sorry. I've no, 45 degree. Drawn it on that yeah. one so you can see. Okay, yeah, so yeah. then you just then you just stitch along there, that yeah. line, which you then have. Oh, you've already done one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you open that out, press it open. Come on. And then trim your trim See, your now if you off. best pressed it, that would just best that would just um just uh, fold yeah. back nicely, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it would. So then trim your ears off. Not your real ears, the ears off your fabric. <laughs> Hannah's a bit worried, yeah. <laughs> and then we're just gonna press that. So if if it was patterned, it would be wrong sides together yeah. to create a, a strip oh, like that. okay, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm so doing you're it like going you to do, do it like quilting a bind, binding. quilting binding, not a dressmaking yeah. binding. Yeah. Right. How are we doing for time? So now we, yeah, you could, don't worry. Um, so now we're pretending that this has got all the writing and all the mince pies and everything like that. Yes. On so it, this would yeah. be the front, and I'm using this as the back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to 
position that with a tail. Right. Derek says Santa Claus gets a glass of sherry in his house. Kath says, brilliant demo. I'm learning so much. I've never oh. heard of jar copy paper. Linda saying, morning, John and Victoria. Morning. Great show this morning. I'll have to watch again later to see from the beginning. Uh, Cheryl's dad always leaves a glass of whiskey for Santa. Belinda says, it's lovely to see you two back together. Oh. And Jackie Collins says, morning, John. Really enjoying Victoria's demo this morning. Victoria makes it very clear. Oh, thank you. Right, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Right, you doing? so I am going to... Um, so I've positioned that raw edges together. Yeah. And I'm going to sew with a walking foot. Oh, hang on. I've missed a vital bit out. Oh. I apologise. Yeah. Right. So once you've got your top. Yeah. You get your other piece of navy blue that you've cut. Yes. And you put a piece of wadding on top. Right. And then you put that on top of the wadding. Right. Okay. You stitch around the edge like I've done there. Yeah. So you make your and quilt sandwich like you do yeah. for like you normally do for a quilt, right? Exactly. So it's the top that you've you've uh, appliqued, wadding, and then another the other, the other layer of blue, yeah. Yeah. and stitch it around the edge to hold all three together. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So I've left myself a little bit of a tail. Yeah. And I'm going to use a quarter of an inch, just slightly over a quarter of an inch, just to stitch it okay. onto the edge. And you want to. Ex um, do I need a walking foot? Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. Now, when you are putting this around, whatever you do, don't be pulling it. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you'll have this effect that I got on the first one that I did. This was years ago. Right. Um, where it kind of curled. Can you see where it's curled up yes. at the edge? Yeah. So you don't want that. You want it to sit nice and flat. Flat, yeah. You don't, it's not a Father Christmas bowl, is no. it? <laughs> Okay, I'll just do a little bit more. What's the difference between a normal foot and a walking foot, says Lulu? So, um, with the walking foot, it sits on the top and the feed dogs at the bottom pull the fabric through. With the walking foot, your feed dogs are pulling the fabric through as well. So when you've got a number of layers, it, it doesn't push the yes. fabric apart. It's not just used for quilting, uh, Lulu. It's used for if people, if you're using very, very fine layers of chiffon and things like that. What it does, it moves the bottom, like Victoria just said, it moves the bottom and the top through at exactly the same time. Now, I trained all those years ago, never, didn't have a walking foot. So what Victoria's doing is you can do it without a walking foot, but it makes your life so yeah. much easier. And most people, most quilters and most people I know, never take their walking foot off unless they're doing fancy se fancy seams or anything. But if they're just doing stitching or sewing, they leave the walking foot on all the time. Yeah, and it's used a lot in bag making as well, isn't yes, it? Because there's yeah. lots of layers. Oh yeah, Becky Beck Allen's under frost never without hers. Yeah, so I'm just gonna, I'm just, instead of going all the way round, I'm just gonna... Yeah. Um, oh. Oh, look, everyone's, everyone's telling Lulu on the website as well how to do it. That's good. OK, so yep. you'll stitch all the way round and then you'll be left with a gap there. Yep. OK, and then instead of doing the norm, like you'd, um, on, with quilting, you'd do it on an angle and yes, join yes, it together. Yes, yeah. We're just going to um, pop this together. Yep. So the full instructions are obviously um, in, the instructions. in the instructions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just chopping those down a little bit. I'm going to fold this one under a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no pressure. Tuck him inside there. Like that. And then, can you see that? Sorry. And then, obviously, continue stitching along there to cover that. Right. And then you just pull it back and then hand stitch it down the back. Also, don't pull it too tight again, otherwise you'll end up with that bowl effect. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. Good. Right. Next. Uh, next, we're moving on to the cushion. This is the cushion. Now, unfortunately, everything's sold out. Everything has sold out this hour, but I just thought I'd get the cushion down for you. So in the cushion kit, if you've bought the cushion kit, you get all the fabric enough to make one of these cushions. Oh, there's me displaying it and it's a still. There you go. I'm just I'm showing. There you go. So you get enough to make a complete cushion in the kit, plus 
three more of these, which are the leaves and the robin and things like that. So again, if you bought the kit and you think, oh, I want four cushions, was it four of those you can do in total? You can, you, well, you can definitely get three. Oh, okay, could, three. Three in total, so three cushions then. A trilogy of cushions, uh, 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 basically, and uh, create all the holly leaves and the robin and everything like that out of the kit as well. Uh, you would need to buy the binding and the... Um, background fabric again because there's only enough in the kit to do one binding and one background and back of a cushion right okay right yep, right right okay so with this one you get instructions yeah and I've, there's a load of tips there for free motion raw edge applique as well so it talks you through um how you can do it with a standard foot or um, a free motion foot, how to sit, other things that you might might like to use with it to make life easier. Yeah. Um, so then we go through all the pictures and then we've got some big pictures so you can see what it's like. And then the back, the back's got some applique yeah, as well, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah there's the back. And then you've obviously got your templates as well. I'll just show you the back. Oh, sorry, it's going on the other now. There you go. Uh, can I just uh, say, Lo says, hello, lovely Victoria. It's nice hello. to see you. Uh, Kate says, I wasn't lucky enough to buy the kit. Is there any chance you could buy just the pattern? Oh, I don't think I've got, I don't think I've got the pattern on its own, have we? I'll ask Hannah. No, we haven't, I'm afraid. Maybe you could just message Victoria later. Uh, um, and then, oh, yes, that's it, that's it, that's it. So, right. Right. Okay. So, and then with this as well, we've got a, um, a binding. I, oh! I was doing it as well. Turning it around the yeah, right Yeah, no, no, that's fine. So, so in this one, you get the, the instructions, but you also get an extra for free. Yeah. What is that? So this is this tells you how to do binding, which you can use on a cushion or a quilt. But this is the straight binding, not the bias yes. binding, which is yeah. why we showed the bias binding on that one, because yeah. you've got instructions on this one how to yeah. do straight. So I'm putting these, with with any of my patterns that need just normal binding, binding on, I'm putting this supplement oh, okay, in brilliant. with it. Obviously, I haven't done it on that one because it's a different sort of binding, yeah. so this will just okay. confuse matters. Um, and then You've you got get 12 minutes, you've got plenty of time, so don't panic okay, about going great. racing. Then. And then you get an A3 copy of your um, placement diagram as well. Oh, that's in there as well? Yeah. So I went off into Kidderminster in the rain to the coffee shop. Oh, did you? Have you not got an A3 copy of them at home? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. No, no. Right. So first job is, is you cut your panels out. Oh, hang on. Let's not skip ahead too far. Okay. So you cut your panels out according to the cutting instructions. Yeah. And then to make the front, you take your diagram, that's obviously full size, pop him on there. Do you need a light box or can you see No, it? you can see that. Okay, perfect. Um, and if you can't, just put, um, if you masking tape it up to a window, um, then you can... <laughs> what do your neighbours think when they just walk past and you've got a <laughs> bit of fabric stuck up on your window and you're drawing <laughs> around it like that? So what are you using to draw Okay, so with? I'm using a friction pen. Oh, friction pen, available on the website. Okay, so you just literally trace it round. The whole thing? Yeah. Now, you don't have to put in... So if you just trace around the leaves, you don't need to put in the detail of the leaves at this point because right. you're going to be sticking over your applique over the top. Right. Oh, yes, and of course. You so you only want the outlines of each of the yeah. leaves. So yeah, so you just do all of that. Okay. Okay? As I've done there. Right. Now, I've also put onto the numbers on the holly leaves because they're all... On Can we see that? What sort of, what have you put numbers on? Sorry. So there are Hang numbers. Hang on, we're just coming in closer. Let's have a look. The camera's playing up today. So you've put... Oh, yeah, yeah, I see, I see. They've got numbers on them, yeah. Yeah, and that's on the, on the placement yeah. diagram as well. So add the numbers, because obviously in the back here, you get all these different shaped ones, um, and you need to know which, which order goes, to put, yeah. put them in. If you want to, you could always go off piece and do your own version couldn't you just use your leaves and just make up your own yeah if you wanted to or yeah you can well i wouldn't if i were you because you'll have the victoria <laughs> carrington police coming round to check your cushions or as well you could um you could just use the robin and then maybe the um the template for the back of that cushion you could just put the little 
um, leaves Oh, there. here, 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 this one. Yeah. This is like, when I was little, my mum used to have uh, plastic versions of holly, exactly like that, used to go on the Christmas cake, yeah, right? Yeah, I remember. But none of them were in proportion, so your holly <laughs> would be that big, but then your the robin, robin would be that big, and then your father Christmas going down the chimney would be <laughs> that big. <laughs> right. Um, so you could you could adapt this and pull bits out of it and what have you. So what I've done is I've just 505 sprayed could it to some wadding. Could you pull it to your right hand side just a tiny bit for me? Thank you. Uh, you 505 sprayed it so that your fabric is attached to your wadding. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you don't want to use wadding, you could always use that um, use what? medium interface, iron on interfacing. I don't know why I struggle to say that. No, so I much. don't know either. Right. You could use that instead. But I think that just makes it look, look a bit more padded in. Yes, looks But obviously, if you're going to, because I'm going to do, um, we're going to, if, if we, what, what, are you what trying time to say? I, I don't think, I'm, I don't you, think I've got time 10 to minutes. do any Well, we'll just keep going. We'll just, we'll just keep going. Thing. And if you get to it, you get to it. So if you? your machine, so you're going to free motion this. So if your machine doesn't like just going with wadding underneath it, you could always put another layer of fabric underneath yeah. or you could use that. Um, interface yes. and iron on. Or some machine, some people have stabiliser. You know, like some of the embroidery machines come with sheets of stabiliser. You just put that on behind it as well. Yeah. And just yeah. stabilise fabric so you're not doing it through one piece. Um, uh, Lynn Twitt says, can you use the, char it's not called chicory paper, it's char copy paper. Uh, can you use the char copy paper for, oh, she says predictive text, that's just come up. Um, for tracing that through if you don't want to use a friction pen. You know, when you, when you drew your, that, yeah. could you do that with your char copy paper in a pen the same as you did? I suppose you could, you yeah. You could, couldn't you? Yeah. Because yeah. there's lots of different colours in there as well, so obviously you wouldn't use the white one. You could use one of your well, blue. Well, obviously, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not, because of the time, yeah. I'm not going to I'm not gonna sew this. I'm just going to show you how to do the placement. Oh, all right then. Is that all right? Yeah, because it is. I've got to change my foot and everything. You know. Okay, so when you do, when you do these... Um, no, Christmas pop, pop tree, head back. Christmas tree, pine thingies. Fur, fur. Uh, yeah, things. spiky things. I free motion these, but you could always hand embroider them because you've got. Have you got the? Yeah, you've got green in yeah, there. So you could use that. Well, so not another. Oh no, that's just this one has green in it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So there are lots of different options. So the way I do that on the machine, yeah, is um, I would start from the centre there, mm -hmm. and I'd sew out. And back to the centre. So is this one where you've dropped your feed dogs and you're doing it like um, like you're drawing a pencil? Yeah, you're free motion. Pencil, yeah, or yeah. you could do this with um, your standard foot or your walking foot um, and just do a straight straight, straight line. line. Mm -hmm. That would work for this as well. Um, so you just keep going. So you work your way down. So then you go down, then you go back out, back in, back out, back in, yeah. down. So you just keep doing that in green. And then you do a brown over the top and just go up and down a couple of times for that. Okay. And then again on the ivy, you just go and you, you go over where you've, where you've drawn your ivy there. So just continue round, go over it a few times and then go down these So you well. do the stitching before you do any applique? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And of then the, that of gives the background, because like there's the going to be more effects. stitching later, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Trudy says, oh, John, we still use those Christmas cake decorations each year. Trudy, pop me, give us your address. I'll send you some new ones. <laughs> uh, Rachel says, uh, lovely kits, especially lovely. Oh, yes, Rachel had a new grandson this morning. Oh. Okay. So, like I did with the carrot before and put the bond web on the yeah. back. Um, I've already done these. So the first thing we're going to put on... Have they got have they all got bond web So these have all yeah. got bond web like we did the carrot earlier. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to stick the robin's legs on first because they need to go behind the ivy. Now, does it tell you in the pattern which order to put these on in? Yes. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. So Sorry, that was me taking a very deep breath then, wasn't it? I do <laughs> apologise. Because it's gone so cold in here suddenly. <laughs> What do you think? I'm a bit hot. Oh, yeah? It's your age. It happens when you get to 40. Is <laughs> 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 she laughing in there? Like, can you hear Hannah Stackling. laughing? <laughs> okay, so I'm just literally following where my... I mean, it doesn't... You, right, so you must use a removable pen to trace your pattern. Oh, okay, so charcoal copy pa paper might not work then. That's the point. 
probably, yeah. Probably I mean, chocolate not. paper will come off, but there is a chance if you use the yeah. blue one, it might and, leave a blue tint. And the thing is, with, with some um, markers and stuff, as soon as you press the iron on it, oh, it yes. will set it. So, yes. yeah. So, you're right, you're right. Scrub so, don't do, ideas, yeah. don't do the chocolate paper. Don't do the chocolate paper. Just use a removable marker. Okay, so I'm just sticking them over where I can see. Now, for the ivy, I've used three of the fabrics, the lighter fabrics, and then I've used the darker fabrics for the holly, just right. to make a bit of variety. Okay, so I'm just... They will, true, 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 they will be antiques. If you think that my mum already had them from her mum when I was a child, so you think that's a good 40-odd years ago, isn't it? They are a collector's item. And also, if you weren't careful, as you got through the cake, you used to end up with it in your pit, because you slice the cake and the holly leaves get stuck and you end up with a big plastic <laughs> holly leaf in your mouth. <laughs> right. Only sometimes. So what we want to do now... Right, now what you have to be careful, if you're going to get the iron out now and you've used a friction pen, yeah. you have to be careful you don't Yeah, you've delete. got to be very careful you don't remove the other markings. But you've... On here, it doesn't matter because you've already stitched. Yes, yes, yeah. I'm just thinking the robin and things yeah. like that, yeah. The pack, the, the um, cut and press is 49 that, That's what we're pressing on at the moment, the June Taylor. So, yeah, so you just have to be careful that, you, I mean, it doesn't matter if you remove it a bit, um, but just be mindful that you will need those markings. Yeah. Yeah, don't just put your iron over the whole lot yeah. you'll lose everything. I don't know if Emma Bradford's watching, but she once did this quilt where you had to she had to draw the whole pattern out on <laughs> with, and she did all the I uh, remember um, that one of the uh, friction pens, and then she ironed on a bonder web, and all the pattern went. <laughs> Nightmare. Wasn't funny. No. And you know. um, so then, what you do yeah. is you draw on your leaf detail. Now, this is you just have to do this freehand. It's really easy. You just literally okay, let's start okay, at a point. Yeah here and then you just draw out to your outer point right are they, are they on the placement or not they are yes they're yeah. drawn so on the placement you, you, you so can, yeah just you follow copy. that yeah you can copy yeah, yeah. yeah so you draw all of those yeah. onto there and then you stitch around the edges again you can free motion or use your stand it will use your other feet and then just stitch these lines in Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So next thing to do is position the holly. Cracky, you've, you've not only have you cut them all out, you've made each one a little envelope to keep them all in. <laughs> I need to get out more, don't yeah. I? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, you're not allowed. No, no, you can't. That's how I've been entertaining myself. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Carol saying, good morning. You both morning. are making me smile today. Oh, that's nice. And then Claire is saying, you must have done so much prep for this show. <laughs> she did. <laughs> well, she's got nowhere else to go, has she? <laughs> Only two kids to look after, but don't worry about that. <laughs> they haven't eaten for a week. <laughs> she's joking. <laughs> right, okay. So, I was going to say something else then. Right, holly. when you do your holly... Yes. Mark on the back of each one the number from the pattern. Right. Okay. So you can either keep the bonder web on and until take the it last off minute, yeah. Individually, or I've just written them on the back, which yeah. is fine. You've got two minutes, by the way. Okay. Not that I want to rush you. <laughs> so we're just doing them. So I'm putting one down. Yeah. Then two down. Yeah. It's difficult, isn't it? It's three next, by any chance. <laughs> <laughs> and five and then you just stick your holly berries over the top okay it's not difficult is it no it's effective though it's, sometimes though the simple things are you know the most effective yeah they, yeah really? right what i'll do you know you can see how to do that can't you yeah it's pretty obvious okay so let's put the robin on now the the layering up of the robin is in the instructions right. and I'll give you pictures of how to do it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put his tummy down. Then I'm going to put his body down.
and then his chest and face. Come on. So again, don't worry if you can see your lines because they'll come off. And then his beak. Uh, Leslie says, Victoria, I love your demos. Please, oh, could I you. put... Oh, uh, the, Leslie, the, the, cushion, the cushion's all sold out, I'm afraid. It's all sold out. I'm ever so sorry. Oh, crikey. What is the matter? Time pressure. Time pressure. It says all we can do is that. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so so you so as you lay them down, so you stitch these first, yep. then you apply your holly, you stitch those, you put your robin on, you stitch him. Okay. Oh, Bridget's upset now because she's missed on this one, has Aww. missed out on this one as well. And then for so the back so of the sorry. cushion, yeah, go on. You take your back panel. Yeah. You take so your red is cut along your red fabric is cut along the width of the fabric, so you get a long piece. Yes. So you join your binding pieces together. Um, and then there's one piece which you cut and you um, you fold it. Right, we're just coming to you like now. This. There you go, yeah. So you can iron it in half and then yeah. in half again. Yeah. yeah. And then you put that along the top of your cushion back. Oh, so now you're doing this one like a dressmaking one? I don't, I don't know. We'll yeah, just do so whatever. You're, you're sandwiching it in rather than sewing right. it on and yeah. turning it around, you're sandwiching it yeah. in, yeah. Mix it up a bit, you know. So once you've top stitched that down, making sure you've caught the back. You then rough, you, you fold that accurately yeah. <laughs> in the middle like that. Get your holly. other holly bit. Whack it in correct position. Have you done a holly? Have you done a robin applique before? No. Oh, okay. Catherine just said, absolutely love my robin applique, which is framed on the wall. It's obviously not your. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. She'll have, she'll have done the um, done the cushion of this as well. Oh, right, from, so from what when I it was do, in a magazine, is that what you yeah, 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 yeah. So what you do now is you take a piece of, a small piece of interfacing or um, whatever, and then pop that behind. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long hour. Um, yeah, she's so tired, she needs a I break. am, yeah. Um, and then you just stitch over that. Brilliant. And, um, hey, presto. And then you stream it back. I won't show them stitching, yeah. stream it back at the back. Uh, Victoria, that was brilliant. Now, you're back in an hour's time with the quilt that's behind you on yep. the wall, but not in that colourway. No. Let me show you. Have you got, Paul, have you got the colourway that ours is in? Here it is. This is the block that ours is in. We're going to put it on pre-order now, right? It's now on pre-order. So if you want, because you saw how this hour completely sold out before we'd even really started. That is now on pre-order. That's the, the size of the finished quilt is the size of the one behind yeah, you, isn't it? 40 by 40. 40 by 40 is the size of the finished quilt. If you love it, also, depending on where you put the fabrics, makes the block look slightly different. So we're going to show you how to, just the placement can make it look different. But if you love it, then it's on pre-order right now. Uh, thank you, Victoria. Thank Go you. and have a sit down. Thank you. And we'll see you in an hour's time. Now, in my next hour, Bran Spank Sanderson Fabrics. It is just beautiful i've got a mega bundle and i've got it all available by the half meter and it is well you know what sons of fabrics are like they're so traditional it's a take on one of their tri traditional cashmere in the graphics it says cashmere right it's not made of cashmere it's cotton but it's it's oh it's just gorgeous go and get yourself a quick cup of tea and i'll see you back here i don't know if i'll be here or i'll be there but i'll be here somewhere uh four minutes from now if you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools? Watch us on Freeview Channel 74, Sky Channel 670, or on our YouTube channel. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter, or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com.
Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So, number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Hi, I'm Sam from Adventures in Crafting. I'm a craft and crochet teacher based in Tring in Hertfordshire. Since lockdown, I've moved all of my classes onto Zoom, so I now have customers from all over the country. I teach lots of crafts, but crochet is my specialism. I became passionate about crochet when I was pregnant with my fourth child and in desperate need of some me time. Crochet became my sanctuary and I've crocheted every day since then. I'm a qualified teacher and eight years ago I began teaching crochet. I love sharing my passion with other people. I design patterns, sell kits and teach lots of classes. My classes range from beginners to next steps, specific makes and clubs. I also like to design crochet alongs. My most recent one was my autumn granny square crochet along which resulted in me designing this allotment jumper which I love to wear when I'm out gardening and looking after my chickens. My crochet tip for you is to enjoy it. Crochet should be about taking part in a hobby that brings you pleasure. My claim to fame is that I met Kirsty Allsop at the Handmade Fair and I gave her one of my crochet sunflower brooches. I'm so excited to be taking part in Yarn Lane and I hope you'll enjoy my demonstrations. I can't tell you how much I love this fabric. I love suns and prints anyway. Um, now, before you start, don't be thinking, oh, it's furnishing fabric. It's furnished fabric. I don't need it. Don't need it. Need it. it is exquisite. I can't tell you how much I love this. Now, you know, normally I go, I go, oh, by the way, the mega bundle selling already, just so you know. Normally I go, oh, this is my favourite. I'll show you this one first. I was sitting here going, oh, which one? Oh, which one? Oh, which one should I do? Which one should I do? This is the mega bundle, right? This is the mega bundle here. Hang on, let me get that in the right place for you. There you go, there you go. They are not furnishing fabrics at all. I mean, you could use them for furnishing if you want to, but if you want to make the most gorgeous quilt, if you want to make a fabulous dress, if you want to make a gorgeous shirt, you can do. They are so, obviously not out of this because these are, you get half a metre. There are 14 different fabrics. It didn't look like 14 there. 14 different fabrics there, right? 14 different fabrics, half a metre of each. Now, 
I have got every single one of these fabrics by the half meter in this hour, right? But this is if you just, because a lot of people just want a taste of the whole collection. So what I'm going to do is, I don't know, can Paul, can you go back upstairs again for me? And I'll just start putting these out like this because I just think it's it, really, really beautiful. These fabrics are just stunning. So as you can see, each pattern comes in two different colorways. Not the same colorways, but so you get the pattern in the mega bundle twice. So you see, you get that one twice, but you get it in the rust and you get it in the blue. <gasps> this is the traditional Sanderson Paisley, isn't it? Just gorgeous, but look at it in that colorway. Uh, then this, oh, this is just adorable. The one with the birds and the fruit on everything. Like but look, now that's the, um, Oh, that bird now, you, you're not even allowed to buy those feathers anymore. You can't buy those feathers anymore because they are, you know what I mean? It's just, anyway, look, look, in danger. Well, it's not even danger. I think they're, they're um, now uh, extinct now, aren't they? <gasps> look, look at all of those. I'll just let you take those in. I'll just let you take all those colours in. Aren't they just exquisite? So you get seven metres... This is exactly what you'll get. This is what we will we'll be doing. Now, now, I do need to tell you, if you buy two of them, they will come, you'll get two of this, two of this, two of this. They don't come joined together. So you don't then get a metre of this, a metre of this, a metre of this, a metre of this. You will get two half metres, two half metres, two half metres. That's if you buy two of them. But remember, during this hour, and I don't think they're going to be around for that long, you can buy any of, now, Please be careful, because this is where it's a bit different to how it used to be its own quarter. They're already on the website. So people are already coming on the website and buying them by the half metre as well. Yes, now it's come from Free Spirit. Free Spirit have done this collection. So you know straight away that the quality of the cotton, the quality of the fabric is going to be extraordinary. But you know with Sanderson, you, you, if you, I've got Sanderson sheets, right? And... They are some of the best, best, best quality sheets I've ever. I'm not saying these are made out of sheeting, but you know what I mean? It's kind of like they are up here. They're, they're your liberties, they're your William Morris thing. You know, they're up there with the just, the just exquisite. So they are masters of design. Now, what I will do, I will be wafting, but I will waft when we start doing the half meters. Unless, of course, you message me right now and go, open that green one, open that blue one. I want to see it, but I'm going to be doing wafting for the whole hour in a minute. I think they're just gorgeous. I totally, I love this. I absolutely love everything on the front. Right, okay. Oh, so, so, okay, right, let's start. Let's start. Loads of people have got the mega bundle in their basket, right? But I think, I think you wait to see the fabric. So let's start some wafting, shall we? Oh, blimey. Paul. It's just, he's got his mask on, right? And he's sneezing in his mask. Not his mask. What's that thing called? Visor. 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 Right. Let's do this bird one then. The one that this one you mean. Right. Shall we do it in the pale blue first? It's called Paradisia. This one. Oh, this is. Look, I can see figs from here already. I can see the most exquisite look. I'll put it out on the table first. Right. Hang on. It'll have a direction. Let me just check. There you go. Now, I'm sorry about the crease in the middle. This is one thing, one thing I'm going to have to sort out here. When we have exquisite fabrics like this, they need to be pressed, really, before I show them to you. <gasps> Look how gorgeous these are. So, I'd say that was a blood orange in there. The, oh, now that's a protea, isn't it, that one? That's called a protea from South Africa, they are. Um, this bird, what's it called? What's it called? And ladies in Victorian times used to have great big sweeps of the feather on 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 the on their hats and things like that. It was like a Victorian, um, Victor I mean, in Victorian times, they had uh, stuffed birds on their hats and things like that, didn't they? But that, um, th it's not a bird of paradise, I don't think, but I just remember when I did a show at the Royal College of Music, and I'm going back to like 1980 now, and I found in the costume department a box with one of those feathers in. And I was like, and the, the lady from the costume department came through and said, whatever you do, don't nick that. I was like, as if I would nick, as if I would nick it. But um, she said, you'll get done because it's, it, 
endangered, it was an endangered species, species then, but oh, isn't it just gorgeous? Isn't it fabulous? So the background is the palest of blue. I've just got these on my fingers, let me show you. I've just got these on my fingers because Roxana was conf concerned that I kept licking my fingers in between fabrics. So I've got those on just to be able to pick the fabrics up. Oh, just go have a look, have a look, have a look at it. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Now it's £7.49 for half a metre. It's 100% cotton, it's 44 inches wide, it's from Sanson, it's machine. 44 inches wide, 100% cotton, machine washable. Be I love it. I love it. What I'll do is I will pick it up in a sec. It, it is, it is like, look, let me, right, I'm going to waft it now, I'm going to look. <gasps> How, I mean, can you, well, I'm thinking Karen, I wonder if Karen and Wigan's watching. There'll definitely be a few frocks made out of this, won't they, in the next week or so. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. <gasps> oh, now. During prep today, sorry, I've dropped one of my rubber things. During prep today, Hannah and I were just um, looking up, uh, you know, kind of some book, because I said, oh, do you know what? Let's get a quilt pattern that would be gorgeous to go with this. Now, I'm not, I'm not technically supposed to tell you this, but if you go to the Free Spirit website, right? No, no, you can't buy fabric or anything on there, but look, 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 look. There's free downloads of patterns that these fabrics have been designed around these fabrics. Oh. <gasps> That one's Cashmere Garden. Oh, look. And so when you download the project, it tells you how much of everything you need. Oh, and are these all from these fabrics? Cashmere Spice. And there's, well, it's like the Spice Girls, there's Woven Spice. Oh, look, isn't that fantastic? And then there's Woven Garden as well. Oh, didn't, didn't we see not what didn't we see woven booklet? Oh, there you go. There it is. There it is. There it is. So they're on the Free Spirit website. They are free. You can't buy the fabrics there. So you buy the fabrics from me, but you get a free download from there. Isn't that brilliant? I, I just love to share things like that because it was really weird because when Hannah and I were prepping it this morning, we were both saying, what a shame we haven't got it. Not, not a shame, but because we wanted to bring it to you as soon as we got it. But how amazing would this look in a quilt? Not even thinking that they'd have one. I got some quilt patterns out and some quilt books out, which I'll show, still show you, but those have been designed actually around these fabrics. Oh, and yes, like we said, when you, when you download it, it will tell you how much of each fabric you need to buy. That's brilliant, isn't it? So that's your paradisium um, in the pale blue. Then it comes in, now this cream background is just, oh yeah, this is spice because, well, if you have a look at the, you'll see why now, you'll see why. Hang on, hang on, upside down. Let me have a look. Oh no, you see now this cream is beautiful, but then look, can you just, oh, hang on, I'll take that off while I'm pointing, but look, where about, oh yeah, here, there you go, that's fine. Look at the colours within these fabrics. The, the, the pattern there are just, oh, there you go, that's brilliant. Oh, the colours are just exquisite, aren't they? This one's got, like this bird here, has got like midnight blue feathers. Oh, do you know what, this, I'd like, the thing is, you see, I'd like curtains made out of this. Do you know what I mean? They'd be exquisite drapes, wouldn't they? Oh, it is Victorian, Paul. Yeah, beautiful, isn't it? 7.49 for half a metre. Now remember, this isn't, this isn't like the bundle. If you want three metres of this, you can buy three metres of this and it'll come as a three metre piece, do you know what I mean? So when you buy the bundle, they're already cut into half metre pieces. When you order this on its own, you can have, now remember on the website, uh, it's uh, one unit is half a metre. So if you want three metres or something, you put in six units, six units. <gasps> and it feels, this is, you could make cushions if you want to, Paul, yeah, totally, totally. What I would do, like Victoria did with hers, I would put um, a wadding backing to make it that little bit, because it's, it's not fine, 
but it's like a really, really, really exquisite. You can make the most exquisite shirts out of this or shirt dresses out of this or I mean, whatever. Do you know what? You could also make pillowcases if you wanted to because it's so soft and beautiful. You could try covering headboard what we and do covered buttons. Nice. Right, so which one do you want to go to now then? The big paisley, yep. Yeah? So I've got, here you go, the two colourways for the paisley. I imagine that's called spice. Oh, let's see. Yep. Yeah. Garden. This is, so you saw the, the, when the, the, the free downloads on the um, Free Spirit website were called Spice and Gardens, weren't they? They all did all around that. So which one would you like to do first, Hannah? We'll do garden first. Right, so this is just straightforward paisley in garden. The colourway is garden and the fabric is paisley. <gasps> Look at the now Hannah headboarding. That would be exquisite, wouldn't it? It's just beautiful. Now, it's all taken from their original design for many, 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 many years ago and been recolored and reformatted and everything like that. Paisley in Garden, this one is called. Seven pounds and 49 pence for half a meter. Well, the only thing about making a duvet cover with it, Paul, is you'd have lots of seams in it, wouldn't you? Because you'd have, to, not that it would matter, because you'd do little French seams and, and it would be absolutely fine, but it wouldn't be like the duvet covers you buy from the shops because it, it would have to be seamed. No, beautiful. Or, you see, what you could do is if you just had plain cream bed linen and then had cushions and a bed runner made out of these, imagine, it's going to look so just exquisite, isn't it? Absolutely exquisite. And I love the way you've got, if you look, actually look at the colours, right? So you've got your pale blue paisley there, but within it, you've got the most, vi you've got the same pink as my shirt in there, look. Vibrant, vibrant fuchsia pinks. You've got lovely ochres in there. There's a fabulous green, like a, an avocado green in there as well. Oh, I think they're beautiful. They are just, aren't they? I don't know what the word is. They are just luscious, Paul's just said, luscious. I think um, Paul used to have a word board, but Kim stole it when she left to go. Not from here, not from here, where we used to work before. Righty ho. So that is your cashmere, I mean your paisley, sorry, your paisley in garden. Right. Okay, it's paisley in Paisley. Paisley in Spice looks very brown on the website, just so you know. The background of this is just exquisite. Now, I need to tell you, oh, how many years ago did I do? I did the costumes for Pygmalion, right? Pygmalion. And in the opening scene, um, the posh ladies come out of the opera and they see Eliza Doolittle selling flowers. She, oh, no, man, like that, you know, and they all... We made a velvet coat, black velvet coat, with this uh, in velvet as the cuffs and the hem of the coat. And it was just exquisite. The background is like um, an aubergine, I'd say, maybe. It's not brown like it looks on the pictures on the website. It's like a rich, exquisite aubergine. You could make pyjamas as this, Paul, if you wanted to, because the cotton is just. Oh, OK, right, OK. Uh, now, on the Free Spirit website, it will most probably say, we're just checking now, it will most probably say, don't use it for sleepwear. But that's because sleepwear fabric has to be f fire retardant and all that sort of stuff, I think. So, but it's up to you. It's absolute. I would make, I, well, the thing is, what's the difference if I make a shirt out of it? Just to mean, I'm still going to be wearing a shirt... They'd be exquisite pyjamas. Loungewear. Yeah, it doesn't say loungewear, does it? It does say on their website, don't, they don't, they not recommend it for uh, sleepwear. But I think that will also be to do with the American 
market, because the American market have all sorts of, do you remember sometimes on a ruler, you'll get a, a, a ruler saying, be careful of this, it could give you this or could give you that. And you're like, what? And it's just a ruler or a ruler holder or something like that. Do you remember? Anyway, look at the colours. I mean, the thing is, the fabric is yours to do what you want, what you want with, really, isn't it? So, oh, I love those colours. Oh, no! Already? I'm down to single figures of this one already. Single figures of that one already. We're only on, we're only on fabric number three as well. Okay. I'm not going to use that. A, a telling point from Hannah. If she was a wizard, her cloak would be made out of that one. Next. Oh no, that's not it. Is it this one? Yeah, I can see now, I can see it now. Couldn't see the scroll. <gasps> oh, look at these colours. So this will be garden, this will be spice. Oh, hang on, is that the right way around? Okay. Oh no, I've got it wrong. That's garden, that's spice. Do you know what? I maybe should do that. I should do that and that and that. Okay, fine. So which one are we doing first? Garden first. Now, Hannah, when she described this fabric, she said, flowers in squares. And I was like, I haven't got any flowers in squares. I can now see, and you'll see when I get this out, what she means. Look. <gasps> Look. Let me just move that over the way. No, no, they're not the same. It's like ombre, isn't it? Through. Oh, that is gorgeous. Oh, like Paul likes these, so that's good for everybody, isn't it? Oh, I love this one. I loved. I, what what colour would you call the background? Well, it's like a dark mustard, but it, it undulates. It looks like it undulates. I think it goes like pea. There's pea green in there. There's avocado in there. And then all the flower. Oh, look, so you've got open flowers. Semi-open flowers, buds. Oh, it's... Isn't it just beautiful? I wonder where they got the inspiration for this one. It'll be a carving. You're right, Hannah. It'll be a carving somewhere, won't it? <gasps> oh, I love that one. I will come back, I promise. I'm being a bit self-indulgent on these. Oh, hang on. I've got some messages about what the bird is. Are they going to come across? Oh, here you go. Liar bird. Is that what I meant? Liar bird. Anyway, that's from Gina in Rochester. Thank you, Gina. Uh, oh, no, the other one was a peacock, I think. The other one was a peacock. I think the bird is a peacock. Great show, trying to resist spending. <gasps> oh, it's so difficult, isn't it? It's so difficult, I know. No, but uh, the peacock feathers, you can use peacock feathers still, but that bird, a liar bird one, I'm, I'm sure, it was, I want to call it bird of paradise, but I know that's not quite right. <gasps> oh, now look, you see. I love it. I think it's gorgeous. I'm just wondering what it would look like if you pleated it. Yeah. I'm back in the mode. Look, I'm back in, everybody. That's what? Oh, yes, it's to roll my sleeves. It's too cold to roll my sleeves up in here today. Oh, look, though. That, that is beautiful. So this one is spice. Hannah would like a handbag lined out of this one. Uh, is th no, th well, this is the right way up. Uh, um, no, 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 no. For, for me, it's the right way up. With the with the writing on the um, right hand side of the fabric on the selvage, so in theory that's the right way up. But I'm thinking it looks the. But it's totally up to you. Oh no, it can't because they're they're symmetrical. They're they mirror images of each other. Oh no, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. 
No, they're not. This is, how funny. Yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> Righty ho, next. Huge floral, yeah. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Yeah. Yes. So what I've got, I've got this, this pattern in large, which are these two I'm going to show you now. But I've also got the same pattern smaller, but in two different colours. Look, two different colours. So I'll do the large ones first. This is large garden. This is large spice. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine being a Spice Girl going, sporty, ginger, large. That would have been me. Lumpy. I'd have been Lumpy Spice, I think. <gasps> oh, this is just... I did, I, was, I did go to visit the Spice Girl movie. I was on the set of the Spice Girls movie. Oh, now, do you know what? They have got the writing on the other side, because this is definitely the right way up for this fabric, and the writing's on that side for this. Oh! <gasps> Oh, look, 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 look. I'm thinking dressing gown. I'm thinking a floor length dressing gown in this. Like a kimono shape, yeah, like a very loose shape, not a structured shape, but beautiful. Oh, it's just exquisite. But then it's not real, is it? Because if you look, you don't have, uh, have you got this flower on your screen anywhere? Hang on, let me just move that into shot. Look at that there, look at the, look at the detailing there. So you've got the leaf, but then the bit in the middle. Be oh, it's just adorable. Seven pounds and 49 pence for half a metre, 100% cotton, machine washable. <gasps> Oh, I'm not surprised. This is very, very popular, this one. Oh, I will go through them all again. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I want you all to have a good, um, a good peruse. Oh. Yes, a Roman blind would be gorgeous. Obviously, you need to put some... Is Roman the one that you pull and it folds up, up, up and up and up like that? Yes, but you, I've, got, I've got a Roman blind in my office... I've got a Roman blind made out of the finest um, silk sari, right? But what you need is you need you need to put some backing in it and everything like that. But it would make my, do you know what it make a it'd make a gorgeous roller blind? Can you imagine a huge window and it's got a roller and you pull it down and the whole expanse of window is done in that? Be beautiful, right? Now I've got it in spice. Large spice. It's actually called no. The colour is spice. The actual fabric is called. Aman Puri, I think. Aman Puri, it is. Yeah, it was Kashmir, isn't it? It's all the Kashmir Indian range, uh, Indian influences and everything. Yep, 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 yep. <gasps> oh, I thought the oh, I don't I, look a completely different fabric to the blue. I still love the blue one, but look at that. What Aman Puri? it up it's supposed to be a spice oh no it won't be a spice or it might be the plant it could be the plant and it's got fruit on it or something that one mind you it looks like there's irises there as well <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm gonna spoil the mood completely now so paul went i know that name it must mean spice oh no it's my local restaurant i wonder what it means though so it must mean something mustn't it it must mean something Five-star restaurant, but, you know. Oh, there you go. A place of peace. That's what Amman Puri means, a place of peace. Oh, it's gorgeous, though, isn't it? Oh, Crazy Rain says, looking at all these beautiful fabrics, making her feel better. Oh. <gasps> 
No, no, I'll, I'm, I'm going to recap. Don't worry, but I just want you to see all of them. So, um, so we can get... You see, now what I'm actually doing is I'm putting them in the garden range and the spice range. So maybe you just want to collect some of the spicy ones or some of the... You have to be careful, though, because a lot of these are selling out. Right, so now I'm going to do the same pattern, but smaller, but two different colourways again. This one's spice. Oh, it's from Garden, but they've called it Indigo for some reason. So anyway, which one do I do first? Spice first. It is, now what, what would you call? No, I started off with Vintage Rose, but then I thought, no, it's not Vintage Rose. Cinnamon, latte, no, it's not even a latte. It looks like, what's the, what, what's the Christmas drink that you like? Spice pumpkin latte or something like that. That's what... Pumpkin, maybe pumpkin. <gasps> so this is the same fabric pattern as the last one, but smaller. This is just called Amampuri on its own. Not big. So it's not a big house of peace. This is a little house of peace. Oh. Well, no, I... Oh, no. No, 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 I, I know, I, the thing is, what I don't want to produce, like someone just said, oh, I love it, but I um, haven't worked. I, you know, I had seven months with no work as well, and I know what I know what it's like, I know it's difficult, but you've also got to treat yourself, it's just a half a metre, just a little half a metre. It's only a coffee and a baked potato, isn't it, really, if you think about it. And it, well, and all, no, you can't take away, can't take away, because Costa Coffee at the... Um, where do I stay? Weatherby, Weatherby Services. You can get your um, hot food from their takeaway and your coffee takeaway. The, the Burger King was open, not they do um, baked potatoes. But the little one down, further down in the services that did hot food, as long as it's takeaway, it's fine. Then you have to sit in your car and eat it. Shelley's just, I bought a lot of fabric on the bolt the other day to stock up over the lockdown. Oh, did you? My friend Christopher went to um, McCulloch and Wallace in London and he said the queue was a, a mile long outside and Anna Sewing Nut said she went on, I can't remember what day she went, she said it was heaving at the haberdashery shops. Don't bother going out, buy it from us. Get it from us. Have it delivered to your door. Right, okay, so now I'm doing the other one which they put as indigo. But it's definitely part of the garden range. There wasn't an indigo section then. <gasps> oh, oh, we love, we love. It's definitely, definitely in the garden range. It's just weird, isn't it, that all the others are on that paley, bluey, softy colour. I mean, it still works, still works beautifully. Oh, now you see, I, when, I was, when I was little, my mum and dad always decorated my bedroom and I hated it. And then when I got to a certain age, like about 15, yeah, they said, what colour do you want your bedroom? And I said, navy blue. And they went, are you sure? And I said, yes. So we painted every wall navy blue. Don't, don't do that. Now, this was a modern 70s house at the time, but didn't work. With, with, it was like a Swiss chalet house. So one of the walls went like that. But, and, and, and so you felt like you were lying in bed. You felt this great big navy blue wall. Anyway. I know. And then, trying to disguise it, we tried to paint over it a few years later. We had to wallpaper because you couldn't get rid of it. Oh, no, 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 Paul. The thing is, Paul, you just have to be careful. Don't do every wall in it to start with. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's got, he's got the picture rail. The data rail's the one that's down there. He's got a picture rail, so above the picture rail, he'll do pale. Right, so now, do you want the tessellating one or the leafy one? Okay, I can tell you which is spice and which is garden on this one, I'm sure. Is that spice? Ooh. Spice, garden. Spice, garden. Spice first. You done what? So this one is called Linden. Oh, actually, we've had a... I wonder what Linden is. Because I recognise the name rather than the pattern. It's like a trellis, isn't it? 
Not Linda, Linden. Right, okay, now I could have sworn I just saw an, a big F. <laughs> I was about to say, oh, look, there's letters, but there's not. Yeah, Linden Tree. Where did I just see an F? Oh, dear me. I need to eat a chocolate in the break. Now I've got gluten-free, wheat-free, egg-free, dairy-free. <laughs> Derek said in his first flat, all the walls were painted chocolate brown. It took six coats of emulsion to get rid of it. Now, I used to live, when I first moved to London, I used to live in the same road as a very, very famous Scottish actor. And his front room was painted, the walls were painted brown and red gloss. Oh, oh so I wonder if it's a, a, a the print is taken from a woven fabric, maybe. Oh, look, that's like swimming pool blue, isn't it? Nice. Linden in blue in garden. Oh, here you go. Linden was a Laura Ashley print. Right. I think, because Laura Ashley used to use Sanderson as inspiration. So maybe that's where it came from. Who, who told me that? Karen. Thank you, Karen. Oh, look, 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 look. It's moving quite fast. Max is saying it's a tree. There's a special poem about the road with linden trees in Berlin. Loving your magenta shirt. Thank you, Max. Oh, is it going to go across here? Right, message from Anne. Sorry, I have to look down to read it. When I married 40 years ago, the Amman Puri fabric was my first suite of furniture. Still in love with it. I had four children. Wasn't a place of peace then. <laughs> That's Anne in County Down. No, Anne. Oh, how interesting. How interesting. Oh. Beautiful. Hannah's moving on. <laughs> I was still loving it. And I was like, yeah, next one. Now, this is going to throw me a bit. No, no, but one's garden and one's spice. That's garden, that's spice, I'm guessing. Okay, again, if you're looking on the website, that looks brown. Let's do that one first, then. Let's do spice first. It looks brown on the website. And what's this one called, sorry? Pelham. It's gorgeous. I wonder if that must be a tree as well, mustn't it then? Or is it the Pelham leaf or something? <gasps> That's nice. Now again, the colour on the background, I would say this was more tea rose, like a rich tea rose rather than an aubergine. It's got a bit of burgundy in it, but it's softer than a burgundy. I think what makes it look different as well is the fact the leaves and the vines are done in a rich like an ecru, really, aren't they? They're not a cream, they're an ecru. It is divine. In fact, if you think back to the days at Rockford, we used to sell a ring that looked like this. Divine ring. Isn't it lovely? <laughs> Gorgeous. So that's your spice one. And then this one here. And then this one here's your garden. Now you see, oh no, if you put that next to the big paisley, that works. Because I was about to say, this one is, it's like a nicer version of, look, than my shirt. Oh, that's, let me just look, you see there, look. Look. Anyway, look, that's gorgeous. That is stunning. 
So what's this one called? Oh, no, no, this is Pelham, Pelham, sorry, Pelham. I think you'd say it Pelham. I don't think you'd say Pelham, would you? Yeah. It's nice, isn't it? It's gorgeous. Oh, it's a place. Pelham's a place. Where is it? I imagine it's in... No, it's in Birmingham. I don't think that's what it's named after. Not that, I, not, not that I've got anything against Pelham in Birmingham, but all the rest is all Kashmiri, indian -y and Birmingham. Oh, is it not? Oh. I don't know where that is. It's near Digbeth, apparently. Anyway. No, that's just gorgeous, isn't it? It's not Henry Pelham, is it? He wasn't on the crown, was he? Okay. Right. So, this is your mega bundle. Now that you've seen all of the different colours all being wafted, Right, so there is your mega bundle. Is that all in shop, Paul? Sorry. Right. There's your, there's your, um, right. All the fabrics, we're in single figures now for that, that bundle. You get seven meets in total. Uh, what I've done is these are spice and these are garden, but that is the whole collection there. I just think they're exquisite, aren't they? And I'm not, I think I'm, I'm veering towards garden, personally. Yeah, Hannah loves spice, so Paul, you are the casting vote. Paul, like, that's Paul's favourite fabric, and that one. Oh, so Paul's a bit, half and half, he's a bit of both, fabric-wise. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So you are getting seven metres there, half metre of everything, £103.99 pence. Yeah, now, as, as I say, people are multiplying the bundle. If you buy, multiply the bun, multi buy the bundle, it doesn't come joined together. You don't get a metre of each. You get two half metres of each of the fabrics. And also, if you have just joined me, if you go to the Free Spirit website, they have free download patterns designed especially around these fabrics. And when you download the pattern, it actually tells you how much of each fabric you need to buy. And what we were saying... Here you go, look, if you look at the... Uh, the you have to go into Free Spirit and just put cashmere. It's not got cashmere in it, it's cotton. It's 100% cotton. It's cashmere, is the design. Uh, there's cashmere garden, sorry. Oh? If you download the project, we can't do it. No, don't do it. It's like a pattern that you can print out with all the yardaging and, or meteraging of everything you need. It's in yards because it's in American, so be wary of that. Be wary of that. But then anything we buy from them is in, in yards normally, isn't it? Is that where Pelham puppets come from? Is it? In Birmingham? And Julie says, I uh, think you need to make some shirts in these lovely Sanderson fabrics. They are exquisite, aren't they? Just beautiful. So that's your mega bundle. Now... Have I got any that I need to warn you about? Yes. So that's your Mega Bundle. We've had single figures on the Mega Bundle. If you've got it in your basket, you need to check out. What's the, what's that? Paisley in Spice is very, very limited now. That's this one. I think maybe that might be the, the signature, you know how they have a signature, I think that might be the signature um, pattern or the signature fabric of the range. So now that is very, very, very limited, so please be careful if you want to get some of that. Uh, Paul wants some pyjamas made out of that, you don't need about half a metre. Oh, now isn't this strange, right? If you, if you then work out spice and garden 
more garden, even though that one there is now limited, more garden fabrics have gone than spice fabrics. It's interesting, isn't it? Which one, big or small? Right, okay, small, yeah. yeah. Hang on, let me just fold that one up. And then this one goes here. This one's now limited. Well, when I say limited, right, there's 15 units. Yes, that's seven and a half metres. That's not much. That's not much at all left of this, is it? <gasps> I can understand it. I can understand why this... Oh, they're all beautiful. That's the problem, isn't it? Lots of that one. Oh, right. There's only seven and a half units left, right? But there's an awful lot in baskets, and we can't tell how much people are putting their baskets. Do you know what I mean? So if they've, put half, if they've all put half a metre in, you might be all right. But if somebody's put three metres or four metres in, then you, you might not be. Right, OK. So let's just do... Oh, Susan, Susan, Susan. I'll wait for it to come up. It doesn't say one pound P&P, my love. It just says one P&P per day. There's no mention of pounds on it. When it comes up, Paul, give me a shout when it comes up and I'll just show. Right, OK. So now, hang on. Which one? Sorry, I forgot which one you asked for. Uh, right, that's this one. Yeah, this one. <gasps> yeah. There you go. Put some graphics in. There you go. What? Sorry. What? 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 <laughs> I didn't mean it rudely. Right. This is Paradisia in garden. That's just beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. No, no, you'd, yeah, make, make the most exquisite wallpaper, wouldn't it? Not all because it's fabric, but Joan Collins had fabric on her walls, didn't she? You used to have fabric on her walls. Oh, yes. I think wallpaper in bedroom does look nice, but I, have I got, hang on. I've got wallpaper in my bedroom. I've got hand, no, there you go. Look, Sue, was it Sue, did you say? One P and P. One P and P. It's not saying one pound P and P. It says one P and P. Just one P and P, it says. Of three pound ninety five. Did it say that? I couldn't no. No. But it does have it here, yeah. Okay. What are those there? Oh, they're the fruits out of there, aren't they? They're just beautiful, aren't they? Oh, hang on, I've got messages coming through now. Couldn't find channel this morning. What number Freeview, please? Jane, 74. 74, Freeview 74. Oh, hang on, Sheila says perhaps you should change it to say only one P and P. I'll put it forward to the management for you, Sheila. Yes, it's limited about how many letters can go in the box, but I'll, I'll have a word with them. I'll definitely have a word with them. Oh, we go. Fiona's going to send a message in. Is this not about... Hang on, let me read this one. Have just bought the garden um and puri several metres. I... I can't read that. To learn how to make Roman... Bl I've just learned how to make Roman blinds for my new kitchen diner. <gasps> oh, Fiona, they'll be beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, is that your lockdown chat? Mind you, this, this lockdown's much shorter, isn't it? Hope, fingers crossed, touch wood. Oh, did they? Isn't that a li liar bird next to the protea? That one there. Yes. Oh, hang on. Yeah, that one there. Yes, I think so. The other version of that, the other colourway of that. Can we all, uh, do you write a report, Hannah, or anything? Does anything get reported at the end of the show? Okay. I just think it's really important when we're doing gorgeous fabrics like this, they need to be pressed, that's all. Right, the other one of those in spice 
Yeah, and the floor manager has got so much to do as it is, might not have time. But oh, look, that, I hadn't seen that little bird on the other one. Is that a grouse? Do you think that's a grouse? A what? Oh, it could be a pheasant. It could be a pheasant. They're not very bright pheasants, are they? Oh. Yeah, well, they run towards your car on the road. Like you're coming along in the country, because I think they... Don't, oh, now, I, I could get this completely wrong. I don't understand country codes, but don't they breed them and throw them all out there for pheasant shooting and things like that? I don't know. But you can be driving along, and one will run into the road, and you'll put your brakes on, you go, right, fine, fine. It realises you're coming, so you set off, and then it just runs towards the car. I get all upset. I remember the first week I moved into the countryside and a, like a little squirrely thing ran out of the hedgerow and ran straight under my car and it was like I cried for weeks. Anyway, moving on. Not weeks, I'm being, you know, I was on my way to work. Okay, I'm over that now. I'm with the, <laughs> not, the, not the squirrel, I meant the bird. But what, I tell you what I was really, really surprised about when I did move to the countryside, that you have like reindeers and things like wild just running around. They're deers. There's monk jacks, the little funny ones. And then there's like, like what was Bambi then? Was he not Bambi, not a reindeer? Does, yeah. Was that a, de that a deer? Doe a deer. Oh, doe, not a reindeer. Okay. It's a different thing. Oh, yes, of course. Now... While you're checking out on that, Hannah thought that this would be a lovely quilt to do in these fabrics. Why are you angry? Oh, hungry. She's hungry. She's hungry. This uh, is a lap quilt. Now, I've got it here. Sally Stevens made this one. But you see, now, can you imagine doing this when you could really showcase all the fabrics from the collection. Look, I I'm only going to take half of it out like that. So imagine if you did eat, featured each of the fabrics in there and then again in the kimonos and then got a lovely plain fabric. I'd use a plain one in there, not one of the range, as it were. They're kimonos, I think, aren't they? Oh, sorry. Oh, why am I doing... I can't get the hang of this. I do apologise. Sorry. There you go. Took you a while, not long enough to see, though. Anyway, there you go. Imagine that in those. Oh, also, I've got another book. Oh, so, so, hang on. Have we got that pattern for sale? You've done that? Yeah, 9 99 There's also another book, isn't there? This book here... Twist and turn. Eight quilts with 16 plus design options. Can you imagine this? Because again, what, you, what I think you want with that kind of fabric is big, is big sections of the fabric so you can really see the patterns within the... You see there, look, you get a great big triangle of each of the fabrics in there. That's called beach. Gorgeous. Okay, how much is that? Eight ninety nine. Oh, that's good. Eight ninety nine for eight quilts, right? But or sixteen plus design options. That's very good value for money. Okay, so don't go anywhere. Oh, hang on. Princess says I prefer the kimono quilt with Tilda. Oh, okay. Uh, right, have a look at the quilt that uh, Victoria is making in the next hour. That's the pattern, that's the pattern, but it's not that colourway. This is our colourway, but what's going to be really interesting is when she shows you how, if you place different colours in different places, how it looks completely different. And yes, that heart in the middle can be appliqued or it can be reverse appliqued. Um, it's lovely. Uh, so that's coming up after, oh no, hang on, Princess got it wrong. Then, oh gosh, I've got, no, that's not my last hour. Then I'm on doing the Just the Forms in the last hour on my own. 
Uh, and I had, I'd forgotten as well. I was thinking, oh, just an hour to go now and then I can go and have my lunch. I'm making roasted vegetable soup today. Anyway, I will see you in four minutes from now. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools? Watch us on Freeview Channel 74, Sky Channel 670 or on our YouTube channel. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the program guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business. It was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike. And they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool, and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil, and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection, and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with quilters, and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Hi, I'm Sam from Adventures in Crafting. I'm a craft and crochet teacher based in Tring in Hertfordshire. Since lockdown, I've moved all of my classes onto Zoom, so I now have customers from all over the country. I teach lots of crafts, but crochet is my specialism. I became passionate about crochet when I was pregnant with my fourth child and in desperate need of some me time. Crochet became my sanctuary and I've crocheted every day since then. I'm a qualified teacher and eight years ago I began teaching crochet. I love sharing my passion with other people. I design patterns, sell kits and teach lots of classes. My classes range from beginners to next steps, specific makes and clubs. I also like to design crochet alongs. My most recent one was my Autumn Granny Square crochet along, which resulted in me designing this allotment jumper, which I love to wear when I'm out gardening and looking after my chickens. My crochet tip for you is to enjoy it.
crochet should be about taking part in a hobby that brings you pleasure. My claim to fame is that I met Kirsty Allsop at the Handmade Fair and I gave her one of my crochet sunflower brooches. I'm so excited to be taking part in Yarn Lane and I hope you'll enjoy my demonstrations. Now, can I tell you that Victoria's quilts are already selling on the website and we put them on pre-order in there. So now, everything for this hour is now on the website and is the next hour on yet or not? Does that go on during this hour? That'll go on during this hour. Just sanitising, don't worry. Right, have a look at the finished, is that all right, Paul? Sorry, the finished quilt. 40 inch square. Ours isn't, it's not that different colourwise, but ours is not that colourway. That's the one that Victoria made originally. Here's a picture of our colourway. Uh, it's lovely, isn't it? Now, uh, also, Victoria's going to show you during this hour that if you place the fabrics in a different order, how it looks differently. Okay, so the quilt itself, the kit itself, sorry, is enough to do the front and the binding. You need to do, you need to get your own backing and your own wadding. We have wadding by the half metre, 80-20 wadding by the half metre on the website. It's not interesting to look at, but just go to waddings and you'll see them all there and everything. Uh, but there's one we do now by the half metre, you see. We'll, we'll, show, we'll do the graphics. I'll tell you when it's, when it's in the graphics and everything. So, in the bundle, you get the heart of the star quilt pattern instructions. You also get a complementary um, pamphlet on binding. Then you get four metres of fabric, you get two and a half of the white, one of the, no, metre and a half, one, yeah, metre and a half, one, half, half, half. Is it ivory? Okay, it's ivory, it's not white, I do apologise. Metre and a half, one, half, half, half. Plus you get two skeins of embroidery thread. Um, and that's it, that's all you need really. Uh, and I have to warn you, they are selling already. They are selling already. Right. Uh, do you know, after you went off, after the last hour, let me see if I can find them. So many people loved oh, your last hour. Thank you. And thanks for everybody who bought a pattern and the kit as well. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Oh. Um, just loads of them. Loads and loads of them. I can't find oh. them now. But anyway, so, so they, were, they loved, oh, thank it, you. loved seeing you back. They loved seeing the, your, the way you demonstrated and they loved the design as well. Thank you. So now you've designed this heart of a star quilt then? Yes, I have, yes. Was it for any reason? So it was for a magazine. Oh, okay. Um, and it was, the brief was to do um, a baby quilt, but you could easily do that as a lap quilt. Yes. Um, and then also I've got some samples as well. So you could make cushions out of it if you didn't want to do a quilt. Um, so lots of lots of things you can so do. So we're going to start really. by making because it's made of nine blocks, is it? Yes, it's nine blocks, which are all the same block. So it's a repeated block. So that's right. so it's that's quite a big it there. block, isn't it? Yeah, but it's twelve inches, so it's quite okay. cute. Right. Um, and there's lots of different techniques in that. So you've got um, so you've got flying geese. So you've got your normal pieces. So you've got flying geese and half square triangles. Yeah. And then you've got a little bit of foundation paper piece in which I'll show you how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can either, with the centre heart, you can either applique those on with bonder web, or you can do the raw edge applique one that I've done, uh, reverse applique yes. with that one. And then you can embroider on it or what have you. Perfect. So, are we going to, uh, uh, which one are you going to demonstrate then today? So, I'm going to, so this just shows, this shows two different version it's the same version but you reverse the colors round right. the other way so with this one i've got the pink going off yes and with this one i've got the gray going oh, okay off. and then uh, on that one on your right hand you've got the reverse applique and yeah. on your left hand you've got the normal what yeah. we know is normal applique. yeah so once you've got it all together then you can start to see secondary patterns from it as well so this looks like a separate block as oh, well yes. even though that's the corner of the blocks joined up and then obviously you've got this one as well which looks like a different one yes. and then you can kind of go out to make it look like that's a block as well i so thought it had wide sashing when i first saw it it looks like it's got a wide pattern sashing yeah. going through it doesn't it yeah so um also i suppose what you could also do is you don't have to use this fabric for the hearts in the middle you could if you've got because you only need that much fabric then yeah. you could put some of your other favorite fabrics you've already got within the quilt as well. Yeah, that. exactly. So when I when I wrote the pattern for this, I obviously have to write it 
referring to these of colours course, so yes. people can see. So in the pattern, it will say um, three three fat quarters and they were literally just used for these oh, okay. so you've got enough in there to make your hearts out of, out that of fabric. Those so don't read that and think oh they haven't put the fat quarters exactly, in because exactly. it's all accounted for but yeah. i'll show you that anyway Perfect. okay so the pattern then um so again right so what i've done here princess is 40 inch square 40 inches square that's right isn't it yeah yeah that's right yeah 12, 12. oh yeah yeah 40 inch yeah. square 40 inch square yeah so what I've done is I've put um, a little chart in here, which I've referenced the um, fabrics I've used in the quilt that's in the pattern. Yeah. And then you can put your fabrics next to it. So if you decided that you wanted to use that fabric for something else and use some different fabric for this, you could use that. And I will show you we'll just come how... We're just coming in a little bit closer on that. Okay. There, there you go. Perfect. Because okay. it's all referenced A, B, C, D and E, the mm -hmm. fabrics. Um, so again, we've got the cutting out instructions. And then, obviously, your label diagrams. I did that on the computer. You impressed? Did I am. I was. <laughs> do, you need, do you need a special a special software thing to do it then? I did that in PowerPoint. Oh, I don't even know what that means. But that's good. <laughs> um, and then, obviously, you've got all the different um, units that's made up for it. So we've got flying geese, foundation paper piecing, um, and how to do your applique, constructing the block, putting it together, and obviously, you've got your binding um, supplement with yep. it. And then your your templates as well. So What's that one above the heart? Is, oh, that's the foundation paper piecing on the page there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right then. Right then. We're off. Go. So, what I've done is I've labelled these fabrics up so people can tell at home. So what you can do is just go onto YouTube and watch this back and just freeze frame or yep. pause it or what have you so for this one i've referenced fabric a is this one here uh -huh. this gray one and fabric e which is this one that's a gray one as well so they a and e always go together and they need to be the same kind of color tones right okay c and d are these ones here yeah and these ones here so they again they form that crossways um formation there your background is always b and your binding, because you've got a metre of it, um, your binding has to be made out of the grey. Of course, the grey floor. Rose one, yeah. Okay, so that's that colourway. And then obviously with your hearts in the middle, um, you you can just use whatever's left of the different ones and decide you could you could all you could have them all grey in the centres if you wanted, or pink or mix them up or what have you. Yeah. Okay, so again, if you wanted this one. So I've gone for A here, which is the um, rosebud one, and again E, which partners it there, and again C and D are the greys, and you've got your background fabric as your as your ivory. Perfect. Okay. Right. So first of all, we'll start by making a flying geese unit, which is this one. Yeah. Okay. So. Have you and best I'm going to do it in colour first. Way. I haven't because I've got my lines on it, but I <laughs> You're will. You're supposed to say, we rehearsed this earlier. <laughs> yes, I got my best press from my early bird special this morning. Thank you very much indeed, John. They've got it in no scent <laughs> and you've got it in linen slash vanilla on the website for the same price. I'm not very good at this, am no. I? Give me the sack. <laughs> okay, right. so obviously all your dimensions for things are in the pattern. I'm not going to bore you with that. Yeah, best press patterns, uh, graphics are in. Right, okay, in your pattern, does it tell you what size oblongs and squares to yes, cut out. Yeah. So in the pattern it, tell, it tells you to cut it all out and then it shows you how to make one block and then you just obviously repeat that nine times. Okay, okay? so what I'm going to do first of all is take my rectangle, so this is my fabric A, and I'm going to put a square on top of it and I've drawn a diagonal line across there and I'm going to stitch along that line. Actually on the line? Yeah. Because there's some of these blocks aren't there where there's a line and you have to do quarter an inch either side yeah. or on the line or yeah, we're going to do that on one in a the minute. Line. Yeah, so this is on the line. Right, and when you stitch, you're best off going in from this part across here rather than going in from this okay. edge because it's going to probably it's going to kind of wrinkle yeah, up. Yes, so if you less. try and start there, it's going to. Yeah. Can you just push your ruler, the the bright pink ruler, just put Sorry. it flat on the desk? Well, that's it. Thanks. 
okay and then I'm going to stitch so with patchwork you stitch with a shorter stitch length so when um, you say shorter, two on here oh two okay and I'm just I've got my standard foot on for this right Okay. You look pained. You like uh, kind of like, looking at it like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, John. No, that's right. Okay. Just concerned for you. Now, when you um, when you're stitching, so you've drawn your line. If you stitch slightly to the the side that you're going to cut off, yeah. When you fold that back, it's going to be more accurate because you take into account the fabric you lose on the fold as well. So but it's literally just the hairs. Oh, it's it, just it? you are still going along it, but you're not going down the centre of the line. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is um, cut cut the seam a quarter of an inch seam here. Right. -o. Now you seem to be using an add a quarter inch plus ruler. Yes. There. I've got these. I'll get Hannah to stop playing Candy Crush now and then. <laughs> All I can do is like, like that. She's obviously typing a love letter or something. You get both in the pa Oh, she's gone very quiet. You get both in the packet. Oh, Paul. It's a love letter to Paul. Oh, is it? Why don't you just speak to me? He's in there with her. Yeah, that's what you just said. <laughs> right, here you go. These are add a quarter, which you use, for, which we'll use again for foundation paper. Yeah, that's later, that's why I've got it today. I'm yeah, just, so. but, but then you can use this for doing this as well. You get yeah. both, you get the twelve inch and the six inch. We'll talk more about it when we come to do the foundation paper piecing later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I've just done a quarter of an inch seam on there, so that's a quarter of an inch from my stitch yeah. line. And then I'm just going to press that open. Okay. So you want to set your seam. So that just means just running the iron gently over it and then opening it out. And that helps to knit the stitches together okay. and gives you a better finish. Okay, and then what I'm going to do then is put another square on top. Again, I've drawn a line along it and I'm just going to stitch along that line okay. again. I'll try to not to look pain this time. That's like you just concentrated that was <laughs> So again, I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch away from that line. Okay. You left handed. Yeah. Do you want to? Uh, uh, it's fine pressing and there, but if you don't. Oh, do you want me to? No, no, you don't have to. But if you want to pull it in a bit, you could do because it saves you reaching and stretching yeah. the other side of your table. Okay. Oh, that's your so flag there you easy go. already. Easy peasy. Get rid of those bits. So do that four times for one block. Yes. Okay. So let's put those out. I'm not positioning them in the right place, am I? In the middle? Well, no, but you'll be able to move them yeah. out in a minute. Okay. Right. So the next one we can do will be these corner ones here. So let's do this little corner here. Okay, so that's not that's not half square triangle, is it? No. Okay. So we've got a small square, which I've drawn a line on the diagonal mm -hmm. on that one. And then I'm just going to pop him into the corner. Obviously, it doesn't matter which one. It doesn't matter which corner? No. Sure. And then, positive. <laughs> and then um, stitch along that line again. Okay. Got a message. Love the quilt. Victoria is brilliant. Oh, Her preparation you. is amazing. Oh, She's you. also fantastic at demoing creative grid rulers. I always spend when Victoria demonstrates. Oh. Good job my son is still in bed and hasn't realised I'm spending his inheritance. <laughs> That's from Leslie. <laughs> well, yeah, Leslie could just leave him creative grid rulers because they'll still be going, <laughs> won't they? I'm sure we'll be thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> now, Rachel the Ruler will be watching. Of course, of course he'll be thrilled, Rachel the Ruler. Anyway. Okay, so again, I'm just going to trim off a quarter of an inch away from that stitch line. And then set the seam and press open. Okay, so in terms of positioning on this, in mm. the 
in the pattern, it shows you where to position them because I've got one on each opposite corner of different uh, fabrics. Oh, they're different fabrics. Yeah. Okay. So when you join those together, um, you yeah, will get, so you'll get the contrast. So oh, okay. You can't really see it very well on no, here, but can't. it's like the lighter and the darker right. together opposite each other. Where is it on that picture? Look on the steel there. It, oh no, it corners, corners. It doesn't so show it because I haven't joined them onto another block. You yeah, see. you need to join it onto another block. Yeah. That's it. Paul. Oh, Paul. He's still learning. It's all that walking he's been doing, isn't it? All the walking he's been doing. Didn't you see his video yesterday where he videoed himself doing a walk? <laughs> right. Okay. So next up, we've got half square triangles. Right, half square triangles. Yep. So these are these. Right. Okay. Yep. So you take your two pieces of fabric. And then for this, right, so for this one. Yeah. I had to think what I was doing there. Yeah, you have that thought chip playing out now. <laughs> so I'm going to draw a line diagonally from corner to corner again. Yeah. And then I'm going to draw a line a quarter of an inch away from that centre line. Right. And then... On both sides? Another one on the other side okay. as well. Is my head in the way again, sorry. Yeah, but, but Paul's got used to it now. <laughs> See all my greys. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so I'm going to put that right sides together. That's your headshot there, right in the view. <laughs> They're going to move the camera. They are going to move the camera. <laughs> and I'm going to stitch up these two outside lines. Paul says he'll do it after the show today. Oh, actually, Paul, I don't know what you're going to attach it to, actually. Oh, no, but we've got enough scaffolding in. Oh, Denise said he looks like he's having a good walk as well. Paul, <laughs> you've got all these ladies following you. And, and she also says, nice to see you again, Victoria. Oh, Kiss thank kiss. you. Was it on Facebook or Instagram? Oh, both. Oh. Oh, I didn't, uh, you deleted me first. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we're getting bitter. Now what you do, now what you do. So, sorry. So I've stitched up those two outside lines and I'm just going to trim, uh, I'm going to cut along that centre line. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my ironing board and I'm going to press them. So I'm going to set the seam again and then press towards the darker fabric. Yeah. We can't see that on your own, but it doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Oh, because you'll put it down and then everything will waft away. <laughs> oh, Denise saw it on Instagram. Okay, and then I'm just going to trim my ears off. No, not your ears, <laughs> dog ears off the, off the thing. You can just hear them all shouting that in there. Okay. Right, so I'm going to position these now. So... I'm very quiet. Concentrating. <sighs> uh, there's a placement, I presume there's a placement. Yes, there's a, there's a diagram in the pattern, yeah. so I'll show, just show you that. So, um, so that obviously... Oh, yeah, the one that was done on... Um, shows you all those, and then if you want to see the exact block, that's in the back there. Okay, perfect. Okay. Do you take all those pictures on your phone? I did, yeah. yeah. Not very good at photographs, though, but they, they've been... It takes me quite a while to do the photos because I take about ten and then delete nine and keep one. Oh, okay. Okay. Paul does that when he's out walking, so he had to walk thirty-six <laughs> miles yesterday <laughs> to get a decent film. <laughs> right, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. No, single figures left. Oh no. Paul, single ladies. Still. Bless him. 
no good in lockdown either, is it, for um, no, meeting, he knows meeting that. women? Yeah. yeah. He just went, no, Victoria, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> well, all your speed dating will be fit. You can't go speed dating, I think, can you? No. Well, uh, well, yeah. Well, no, no, there's no hugging either, is there? So there's no point in going, going on a speed date. If, I was going to say, if you do it in the field, you know, it'd be fine in the field. But it's not because you can't have more than two people. Anyway. No. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sorry. a different subject, that no, is, John. No, 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 But what I'm saying <laughs> is, even if you met somebody, you can't go out on a date, can you? No, because, no. Yeah. So, anyway, go on. Right, Foundation sorry. Date, okay, so. No, I'm going to you. I'm going to them. <laughs> so in the back here, you've got your. i in a way about not having a date. You've got your foundation paper right. piecing pattern here. So you need to copy that because you're going to have four per block and you've got nine blocks. So that's 36. Six. So you need to photocopy it 36 yeah. times. Now, instead of copying the page 36 times, because that's a bit of a waste of paper, isn't yeah. it? So I would copy it like three times, cut them out, stick them on one piece and then, and then photocopy, photocopy it, yeah. them. And it's fine just to use cheap old photocopy yeah. paper, isn't it? Yes, do we it is, yeah. have Do we still sell Carol Doax? Oh, it's out of stock. Okay, I won't say anything then. Yeah. Um, right, so I've cut mine out along the dashed lines. Oh, okay. Okay. And then I'm going to take my... So what I've done here, just for demonstration purposes, because you won't be able to see it otherwise... Yeah, I've just, gonna come in really close I've just on drawn one. some lines on the back, which you won't have to do yourself, because you'll be able to see through the paper it's, yourself. Okay. Okay? Well, good, well, good. So what I'm going to do now is just put a tiny, tiny dab of um, glue, or you can pin it onto the back. Okay, sorry to interrupt, but <laughs> Derek's mess going, is this the same Paul you were trying to match make at Sewing <laughs> Quarter? Yes, it's <laughs> little Paul. It's little Paul. And yes, he's still single, Derek. But Caroline says, hello, John, Victoria team. Lovely hello. quilt and great demo, Victoria. Thank you. Right. Okay, on. so what I'm going to do is... Pop the, I've got a grey square there. Yeah. And then I'm just going to pop that onto the back and I'm just going to hold that up to the light to check. I've got roughly roughly a quarter of an inch seam all the way around. Right. So now for people who've never done foundation paper piecing before, yeah. it takes a bit for your brain to get round it because it's going against everything you've been taught. But this is fantastic as a little introduction into it isn't yeah. it not the whole qu whole quilt doing foundation so if you do these and go it's really not for me you've only had to do your 36 and then you never have to do it again in, yeah. your, in your life so exactly think. and it's a repeat it's a repeat as well um so because you're doing it so many times you'll it will kind of stick yes. with you um so, uh, what's it called what's it mem mem um not whole yeah muscle i know what memory, you mean but it's whatever memory yeah there. yeah okay so i've got that on the back just a tiny 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 bit of glue or you can pin it Okay, and then what I'm going to do is, so that's number one. Yeah. And then I'm going to go to number two next. Okay. Right. And I'm going to take my add a quarter ruler because it's got a nice thin edge to it. Add a quarter um, ruler. Hang on, do we need Victoria to move across a little bit? Just, okay, we're all right. Except her head's in shot now. It's awful, isn't it? You have to remember, it's like learning to drive, isn't it? Clutch, what's it, mirror, moon, it's over. Like patting your head yeah, and oh rubbing no, I can't your... do that. No, nor me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use my quarter of an inch, quarter, add a quarter ruler and fold that line back there between the one and the two. Right. Okay. Now, I know it's fabric B, which is always background. And I'm going to line that up with the edge of the two edges of my square here. Right. Okay. So, in a way, this is a bit easier than doing foundation paper piecing because you don't have to really cut your, cut your quarter of an inch line because you've already got your quarter of an inch there. Yeah. Okay, so that should, that triangle should sit behind where that triangle is. Right. That you can see through. Mm -hmm. But it need, you need to make sure that it covers the edge, giving you a quarter of an inch around the whole of, yes. the, of the shape. Okay. okay, so then you open that out. Okay. And you stitch along the line. Right, I'm going to stitch from here yeah. all the way across there. Do you go past the line? Or do I you do. Stop yeah, okay. yeah, so I go all the way into the seam. Okay. So I'll start a bit further in on the, um, on, on the number four here, okay. just to make sure it doesn't come adrift. Yeah. But you're sewing from the paper side? Yes. Yeah.
Okay, and you need to use a short stitch length for this. So, well, even shorter than you're using for your piecing. Um, yeah, ideally, I, it does work with the with the normal stitch length on, but in when you do it normally, you'd use a, a slightly smaller one because it make, makes it more perforated, so the oh, um, course, paper yeah, comes away easily. Out, yeah, of course. yeah. Okay, so these fabrics will be right sides together. Okay, right, so yes, on yeah. your first one, you put the wrong side against your paper template at the back, yes. and then your right side of this one against your number one. Yeah. And then we're just going to press that open. Oh. Yeah, don't, no, don't worry about sure. your board, Jane. Sorry. Just shows once you've done it, just put it in the middle of the board so you can see where it's pressed back to. That's okay. It, perfect. So that's that. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm going to turn it over again. And I'm just going to tear where those little stitches are there. Right. Not tearing Not anything off. Not the stitches, off. tear the paper. Yeah. Okay, because I want to fold that back now. Yeah. So now you're on the next number. Yeah, so I'm on number three. And again, yeah. I can see it's fabric B, so that's yeah. your background fabric. Okay, so I've got my quarter of an inch seam there anyway. I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah. And then I'm just going to line that up. So again... I'm lining up the edge of my um, first piece mm -hmm. with the edge the triangle and then making sure that that's all covered. And then I'm going to flick that open and stitch Stitched along down. that seam again, okay. along that line. Five left. There's only five left now. Um, would you, if you were doing this at home, and would, um, would you do like chain piecing or like so you do yeah. all of the number threes together then all of the number fours together then all the number fives together i kind of when i was doing the prep for this i varied it really so you can do either it, might, it okay, doesn't really no, no. make a lot yeah, of difference yeah. okay so again i'm just pressing that open pop it back on the table for us so we can see what yeah. you press okay so you've got it like that now Lovely. Okay, and you just want to be making sure that can you see your, that your fabric is outside of this? Yes, yeah, leave the that there. We're just is. going to come in a little bit to show that a bit closer. So the fabric's going over and beyond. Yes, yeah, so where it should be on stitch. the outside of yeah. the dotted line. Brilliant. Okay, so now I'm going to go to number four. Yeah. And I'm going to fold that open. Because normally with these rulers, when you're doing this, you've got the you've got the um, seam allowance here already. But normally, what you'd do with this ruler would be use this thicker edge, and you would press, you would put that on top and butt it up against your folded um, paper yeah. and just trim along trim along the edge. So I use this all the time for foundation paper piecing. Okay, so number four, I'm doing D. So let's see. Is that D? Is that D? Is that D? Well, have you not labelled them up? I'm just trying to. No, I haven't. I'm just trying to remember. Let me just double check. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. Let's be safe and sorry. Fabric D is that pink one. There you go. That's all you have for your hands. Follow your gut instinct. <laughs> <laughs> that's sometimes not right with no. me. <laughs> yeah, you can only say that when you're right. If when you're wrong, yeah. you're like, oh, and you should have checked. Yeah. So again, I'm lining that up. Mhm. Mm Gonna stitch along the paper. I'm feeling I'm not good. I'm not doing a good demonstration of this foundation paper Why piecing not? today. I don't know. Well, ask the audience. Is it any <laughs> good at foundation paper piecing demonstrating? Now I'm not asking the studio audience because we're in COVID. No, no studio audience today. It's empty. I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing to an empty house here. <laughs> okay. So again, stitch that on. Fold that back. And so the way I've done the sizing for these, you've got plenty yeah. to cover it. Okay. And then for the final one, I'm just going to pull that back a bit. And this is number five, so we've got fabric C. I'll just pull that back. And then again, I can see that all of this is covered because I've got this overhanging yeah. fabric around. Oh, nobody's answered the question.
Oh, actually, the reason it hasn't come through yet is because Facebook is so far behind the real thing. We're only just getting to that oh, section yeah, on Facebook yeah. now. Nothing wrong with your demos, Victoria. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing right either, eh? <laughs> but here we go. And there you have it. Let's have a look. Overhead. Brilliant. Okay, so I just need to trim that back now yeah. so it's yeah, level with the dashed line. Yeah, do it from the front, yeah. Oh, hang on, there's lots to come through now. <laughs> Suzanne says, great demo, you're human like the rest of us. Thank you. <laughs> Jill says, fabulous demo on paperworking. Never seen this before, but fo following Victoria quite easily. So that's a beginner. Oh, so thank you. Good. And as well, I mean, because that, because you've got a good amount of fabric in that kit, you can you can do all sorts of things with it. You haven't got to necessarily stick to the stick to the pattern. I mean, I did this just for the for the demo where right. I didn't put the foundation paper pieced sections Section in. in. So, so you, you can smaller. So you can you and these are exactly the same size as as these. So you can just do something more simple if you wanted to. So oh, that's good. Yeah, so if you hate, if you absolutely detest yeah. foundation paper piecing, you could still put something in that section where you've done foundation paper piecing, whether it's miss it out completely, yeah. you could put a solid block in there, you could put two smaller squares in there, do what you like, as long yeah, as you exactly. fill exactly the right amount yeah. of space in there. Yeah, you? just just what I would recommend for that is if you just plan out how you're going to cut your fabric and which ones you're going to yes, use, just yeah. to make sure you've got enough. Yeah. But yeah, there's a good a good amount of fabric there. Yeah. So now you need to finish so now rip all the papers I'm just out. just pulling the papers out the back. Okay. Okay. Mm hmm Get it the right way round yeah. then, sewn it. Okay. <laughs> okay so like she always got... makes funny noises like that. She's not fed up with me. She always does that. Oh. <laughs> Stress relief noises. <laughs> okay, and then I've just got some smaller squares, plain, which just fit into these corner pieces here. The cutting mat that uh, Victoria's using is this one, 37 99 It's the Millwood Extra Large Cutting Mat. It's metric on one side, imperial on the other. Okay, you've got a bit missing. Huh? Yeah, we'll do that now. Yes, John, I know. <laughs> Like, it was lovely having Victoria back, wasn't it? She's not coming back. <laughs> I'm not, I can come back, but I'm not working with that John Scott again. That's what it'll be. She'll be starting there making her demands. Okay, so middle section. Okay, so middle section. So you've got two options for this. Right. So this is one that I bonder webbed on and just stitched around the edge. Yeah. Now, originally, I, I put this on and I stitched around it in grey and it looked absolutely terrible. Oh. So <laughs> I, I did a slightly bigger one and put it over the top and okay. stitched around it in pink and now it looks nice. Okay, so and what stitch did you use? Just a straight um, stitch? I just used a, yeah, just a straight stitch close to the edge. Okay. Um, Quilt sold out. Quilt is sold out. Oh, thank you. Um, so you can do that. You can omit putting the embroidery why, why, on it if you wanted. Why a straight edge and not a zigzag edge? You could, you could do that. Only because I'm thinking if it's a baby quilt, it might yeah. be covered in baby sick all the time, might it? Yeah. No, no, I'm being, I'm being, but it, it might be. If you've got a baby in it, and it could be th being thrown in the washing machine yeah. over and over and over again, wouldn't it? And it might be that if you've only done a stretch, then I like it with those stretches because you get a little frayed edge. Yeah. But if you're throwing it in the washing machine over and over and over again, you don't want it to suddenly yeah. fray away completely. Yeah. That was all. Yeah. Oh, no, she's not, she's not having that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, my baby would have to sit in it as it is. <laughs> I'd just keep it on a shelf. Yes, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's a baby quilt that doesn't go anywhere near the baby. It's just for show. It'll go on the wall in the baby's bedroom. Right, okay, so then... Okay, so what, what I've done in that case... Yeah. ...is... So there's lots of ways to make this easier. So I've just literally taken some bonder web. Yeah. Traced... Oh, hang on. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, there you go. Traced the heart shape. Yeah. Taken my bit of fabric. Do you want me to move into the middle? No, it's fine. We're just okay. she's ironing the bond web on. Just the ironing fabric. the bond web onto the back of your fabric. You're doing a fantastic demo, Victoria. Thank you. And John, you're not too bad either. I've done nothing. I'm just sitting here <laughs> interrupting. But thank you, uh, Kate, with a C. 
So you're cutting it out exactly on the line now? Yeah, you? exactly on the line, yeah. They left-handed scissors? No, I can't use left-handed scissors. Oh, can you? No, it's weird, isn't it? I suppose it's because all your life you've been made to Probably. use right-handed scissors. Yeah. You just learned to use them, don't you? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm just scoring the back and peeling that paper off. Oh, no, don't worry. You are putting that in a bin, aren't you? I'm just, well, I'm trying to hit the trolley. You know Paul Lester Hoover? <laughs> That's Paul's, <laughs> new, Paul's <laughs> new job description. Oh. Don't, oh. Right, what are we doing now? Okay, then? so what I'm doing now is I'm just going to position that into the centre of, of my four and a half inch square. Yeah. Bond web it down. Bond web him down. Bond web, we haven't got the rolls of Bond web, but we have got the, um, we did them in the, they'll be underneath us on the website because we've already used it. And I would, I would probably stitch, stitch that at this point. Yes. Whereas yeah. with the embroidered one. Yeah. I would stitch that at the end. Right. Um, because you, then you can use that as quilting as well. Right. To give it some extra security. Okay. Okay. Right, so that's that version. Yeah. So that's the one if you don't want to do the reverse applique. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh Julie done. says, lovely to see you, Victoria. I really miss seeing you. Oh, thank you. I'll try and get my act together a bit quicker and yeah, if you wouldn't mind. get some more yeah. patterns together. Right. So it's taking you all these months to do two patterns. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how, how did you cope with homeschooling? <laughs> oh, okay. I won't ask. Right, let's do reverse applique. They're very good at reverse applique now. They've gone back to school. No <laughs> times tables, no stories, but their reverse applique is amazing. Right. Okay. So what I've done is I have traced onto freezer paper. I've just said, Hannah's just said a thought. What? You didn't make that PowerPoint. You said to the children, today's homework <laughs> is here's a PowerPoint. Make this. Yeah, they've, they've written all these as well. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, so go on. Okay, so I've taken a piece of freezer paper. Right, freezer paper, yeah. So I've cut that out four and a half inches. I mean, you can tr trace it off. It's just easier to cut yeah. it four and a half inches. Um, and then trace the centre and then cut the centre bit out. Okay. Now, what I also did, which I haven't put in this pattern because I didn't realise it until after, oh. is I just trimmed the corner off. Why? You can see there, because it makes it easier to pull off the fabric when it comes, rather than trying to oh, pick a tip. Oh, very good, yeah. I was quite impressed with, Little tip, with yeah. that. Who yeah. taught you that then? I worked it out myself, amazingly. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm taking my four and a half inch square. Yeah. And putting my freezer, I'll show you on there. Yeah. It's not helping with all this stuff, is it? I'm just going to press that onto now there. Now move your head. <laughs> 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 okay, so I'm just going to press that onto there. Okay. They could do with doing freezer paper in a different colour, really, couldn't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is is trim this centre bit of the heart out, leaving a quarter of an inch seam within it. Okay. Right. So you're cutting it out a quarter of an inch inside the line. Yeah. So I'm leaving a quarter of yeah, an inch quarter on the inch half there, yeah. on the heart. We need background music, don't we? Really? What do you listen Some to when you're working music. at home in your studio? What, yeah. what do you have? What do you have? Music I have the on? radio on. Right. Um, but if I'm having to write a pattern or, like, when I was doing the prep, I have to have it off. Oh no, no, I can't no, I, concentrate. I agree, yeah. But when you're sewing, you have to just the radio. Yeah. On. What channel do you have on? Free radio. I don't know what that is. is that free? It's just like. <laughs> oh, no. Is it local? Is it local? I radio? Spoke, I don't know. It's like. I'm not going to say it because it will make me sound like an idiot. No, no. It's like pop music type thing. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Mind you, I like radio too. That's what I've turned into right old fogey, haven't I? But anyway, so okay. you cut that out with quarter of an inch seam allowance around it. Yep. Yep. And then I'm going to snip. So now I'm going to snip into it, okay? Oh, do you know what? Karen from Wigan's done something like this on her coaster. Have you seen Karen from Wigan's... Um, 
She's done a coaster which has got like fan a piecing behind it, and then you cut the other fabric out with the heart in and put it on top. Yeah, of it. Victoria Peak did a similar one oh, as did well, she? didn't she? I and don't know, um, yeah. I think Del Delphine did one not long ago as oh, well. Did so she? it's oh, quite. You're, a, all, do, you're all at it. It's then. a popular, yeah. popular pastime. Common's the word, not popular. Common. Go on. So I've just trimmed off where the point is at the top because otherwise that gets a bit bulky. Right. Okay. And I'm just going to trim into that seam allowance, and I'm literally like one or two mils away from the edge of the template. Yeah, yeah that's fine, there you go. We'll show it from the front, yeah. Okay, so you don't want to be doing massive gaps between them. You want them quite tight together. Right. To give you a smooth curve. Okay. So once you get around there, you can stop doing that because that'll just pull back easily. And then again, you're going into the point there and then I'm coming back around this way. Okay, so just carry on doing that. Yeah. Okay, so we've got that. Now, the best, w so what we're going to do now is just press, back for me, so. sorry. No, 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 don't, it's, 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 I, we all do it, so don't worry, it's not you. Is, so I've got all these snips in, so I'm just yeah. going to, with my finger, I'm just going to try and get that out a bit before I start with my iron. Um, and so you're pushing them back onto the freezer paper yeah. side. So you're using the it. freezer paper as a, as a kind of guide. Yeah. And then ideally, the next stage you want to be doing with a steam iron just to make sure it's really crisp. Right. I don't think I've got any Water juice in my in iron. Use the best press. I don't know whether you, I don't know whether you could. Oh, um, okay. Um, could you? I don't know. Could you? I suppose you're making it wet with the steam anyway, aren't some, you? Oh, I can't. Come over. I was going to put some water in your iron, but I can't. Come I don't over. worry. I've got a, I've got one just in case. I can't okay. mess up anyway. And then you're just going to go around the edge with your iron. Laurie says, loving the demo, Victoria. I love your giggle. Aww. You always put a smile on my face. That's Thank Laurie. Thank you, Laurie. Okay. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> apparently then. Because you know we're in two different boxes, right? You leant forward like that, Victoria, to use your iron. I went like that <laughs> to be my fan. It looked like to the viewers that I was looking down the top. <laughs> anyway, carry on. It's a good job I'm show. covered up. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh dear oh john don't i'm still on probation i'm new here oh are you yeah i've got two th i've got two three months and behave myself haven't i for three months I've got... yeah and then they'll all have to do reports on me and everything being the new boy right okay so i've done that now so what you want to do is use your little bit you've cut off yeah to peel it off now don't just rip pull it like that because it'll distort it a bit so yeah. if you just go around the edge okay and then it'll just pull away like that so I'm just gonna go over that again you'll obviously have more time to do this properly than yeah. me doing this like this okay so like that. I think I'd have And right. then obviously you won't have that bit there because you'll have done yours properly. Yeah. Okay. But you've got one there you've already done properly earlier. Yes. Oh no. So you don't rip it off like this? No. I'm just doing it for speed. Okay. So then you've got your heart like that. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. And then you just take your other piece that's four and a half inch that's square. That's what your heart's going to be, isn't it? Yeah. And then you pop that onto there. Now I'm just going to. You can put a little. Okay. Now we don't sell. We don't sell this little glue pen. But it, you, yeah. could you could you use the? Have we got any glue pens in stock? Oh no, glue pens not in stock at the moment. You could if you've got one of our so easy glue yeah. pens or Prim's glue pens. You could use that just yeah. to put the back. You, you could. Yeah. So then pop that on there. I mean, you can you can pin it if you. And the best thing to do with this with this technique is just tr practice on some scrap first yeah. because when I first did it, it, it did look appalling. So the more you practice, <laughs> the better that, that it gets. One in the middle <laughs> <laughs> so then what you do is you top stitch around on a machine or by hand. 
I did it on the machine. On the machine, right. Um, as close to the edge as you can get it. And I used a small stitch because obviously when you're going round the edge, um, you don't want a big, huge stitch around the yeah. around the curves. So if you, as you stitch in, if you do a couple of stitches and then rotate it, do a couple more yeah, stitches and rotate stitches, it. Yeah, because if you it'd be jagged edges, yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. And if you, and if you just try and, try and do it on the machine so you're going like like that it's all going to distort and just like that, like that, yeah, yeah it's all going to distort and yeah so not it's be two, good. two stitches pivot two stitches pivot two yeah. stitches pivot yeah. yeah and there's only nine of them so it doesn't yeah. take that long yeah right and also it, the thing is the people who are going to be making it for pleasure they've not got an hour to throw no, a whole exactly. one together you know what I mean? so it's the kind of thing you're going to sit down with your nine and just stitch Beautifully, you know, as you're sitting yeah. there, you're not thinking, oh, I've got to get this done, so I'll do it really quickly. You just take your time doing exactly. it. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's your middle okay. section done then. Okay, so that's, that's that done. Right. So at this point, we're not, um, I haven't put any embroidery thread on, because no. again, I'm going to do that at the but end. You get the two embroidery it. threads in the kit anyway, don't yeah, you? Yeah, so you so can choose, or you can mix and match, yeah. whatever you want to do. Perfect, but we don't do that yet. No. No. Okay, so then what you do is you join these together in rows. Yeah, yeah, Am I okay it. here? Yeah, no, you can lean forward now because you've got to get to everything. Okay. So you've got the top row, so you lift, but then, oh no, okay, so you've got a four skinny rows and yeah, then a and chunkier then a row, row in the yeah. middle. Yeah. yeah. So what I would do, pressing seams wise, I'll just tell you this <laughs> is... I'll look at what my daughter made earlier. <laughs> <laughs> is press, if you press these ones, these ones outwards yeah these ones inwards, inwards these ones outwards yeah these ones inwards these ones outwards yeah i think that's how i did it have a look anyway that and then they all nest so together help the nesting later yeah, isn't it? yeah yeah so that's what you want to get to okay yeah so once you've joined those together you obviously join the rows together yeah how are we doing for time we're all right aren't we got 10 minutes okay let me just shift these so then once you've got to, once you've made your nine blocks, yeah. you join them together in rows yeah, and then um, join your rows together. So the same as you've just done with the block, you put it together at rows first and then, yeah. yeah. And then you put your um, edge border on first and then your top and bottom right. on last. Yeah. And then you obviously sandwich that. Um, so you're backing down first with your wadding what on top you, and then your you quilt top back, on. What did you use for backing on yours? Um, I just used, I just oh, used just a different a fabric version. Had, a yeah. Fabric had. yeah. So, so basically our kit does the front and the binding. You can use whatever you want really for the backing, is it? Yeah. Could you use, if it's a baby one, could you use a fleecy? I suppose you could. Okay. I suppose you could. No, no, I'm just asking because I know some people, <laughs> are, some people ask. Yeah. But basically, you need to get a cotton backing, basically. So you've got enough for the front and the binding. Yeah. You have to supply the wadding and the backing. Yeah. We have wadding by the half metre on the website, the 8020. Or, of course, we sell the rolls of uh, wadding as yeah. well. And the backing, you need 1.25 metres. So you'd have to buy a metre and a, a half. A metre and a half if you're you? getting it from yeah. us. But also, you might have at home, because we used to, when we were at Sewing Quarter, we used to sell... Um, the 108 yeah. inch wide. If you've got some of that at home, you could just literally cut. You wouldn't have to seam it or any. Oh, you wouldn't have to. You don't have to seam that either, do you? No, because no, it's, it's just. Oh yeah. no, so ignore me because it's yeah. 40 by 40, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because what I'm trying to do is do is do smaller quilts, which I, I find are quite um, more fun to make yeah. because you're getting them done quicker. You haven't got to have a big machine to haul Everything a huge through, quilt yeah. through, um, and then. And then when I design them, I try to do them so that you can fit it from one width of fabric at the back, because otherwise it can be it can become quite expensive, can't it? Yeah. So well, the, the only thing you can do if it's slightly bigger is get a piece of fabric, slice it, and then do a pattern bit yeah. in the middle sort yeah. of thing if you yeah. if you so wish. But yeah. But you're right. You're right. Because I mean, a lot of people love, and also a lot of people to take on a full size quilt is quite a commitment, yeah. isn't it? And it's going to take you months weeks years whatever where something like this i can imagine this could be just a few sessions it's still yeah. not going to be one afternoon's work because there's quite a lot into it isn't it yeah. but it's more sometimes you want to finish something don't you yeah. have that feeling of oh, look what i've done look what i've yeah. done sort of thing. Yeah. yeah and i find i find 
quilts that size a lot more useful because you can like the kids use them in the car and yeah. um, you can use them while you're watching TV and all and that sort of well, thing. Put them over the back of the sofa. Yeah. Like, different colours. You can have different times. Yeah. Of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So what? A, okay. Uh, Kim says what a great idea. Oh, hang on. Oh no. Beverly says I use flannelette sheets for the backing of my children's quilts. Nice. And then Pat says what a lovely demo. My only criticism is why don't you sell more patterns? Well, we we had we had loads. We had absolutely loads of them. So, so it's just that we're very, very popular. But we'll know next time when Victoria's in to buy more. That's it. Anyway. There we go. But it is, I know how upsetting it is when you're seeing something like this and you want it and it's all gone. But Yeah. Right. So, so you've made your block. Oh, well, you've made the whole quilt. Front, sandwich and yeah. back all together. Haven't bound it yet, have we? No. 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 We haven't yet. Um, so what I did in terms of quilting for this <coughs> was um, generally I do... I quilt between the blocks just like a grid just to like hold in the it ditch or, or in yeah i yeah generally in the ditch i have i mean saying that i haven't done it on this one okay, right fine. but generally i would do between the blocks yeah and then do some like smaller hand quilting in the middle because i think it gives it a bit more of a textured look and also when you buy your wadding it tells you how wide you can go don't you so you yeah. don't want to do if you're only going to do 12 inch or 10 inch apart you need to make sure on the wadding packet that it says it's all right to do it 10 yeah. inches apart <clears throat> isn't it because you yeah. might have to do lines a bit closer together yeah. if the wadding tells you to yeah exactly so with this you can kind of you can get away with anything really because it's quite small yeah. um, and you're gonna you are gonna have more quilting on it really yeah. so you got your machine and you quilted between so no hang on what did you do on this one you didn't so on this one <coughs> Do you know what? I'd, I didn't do any machine quilting on this. Oh, okay. And I did, because I think when people say hand quilting, everyone starts going, oh, I can't do hand quilting. But it's literally just like a running, a running stitch, stitch, but yeah. making sure you're catching the back. Um, and if you don't catch the back in some places, it doesn't really matter. But what I did is I just went around, you'll probably be able to see better on this, yeah. actually. Can you um, just, how long, how long, oh, we're only going for a couple of minutes. Uh, so literally you just take, uh, when you hand quilt it, you just use this embroidery thread or do you use thread thread? Well, for this, I just, I just use embroidery thread around here and I use some cotton abroder. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what you use to no, be no, fair, no, I don't No, 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 but it's not, think. it's not the sewing thread that you use off a, when you machine quilt, it's not, um, you use a, a yeah, thread for a sewing machine. It's not spool. thread, no. it's a thicker yeah. embroidery thread or you get the um, Aurifil, 12 or the lower lower numbers yeah. so it's a thicker one to hand quilt with. yeah, yeah. exactly okay. so i did around these um cream boxes mm -hmm. there we go there did around these oh, she's cream boxes i was I'm, I'm getting in the know now it's aren't upside I? down he said he was waiting for oh. you to do the right way up <laughs> got me there so i did those boxes and i just did around the heart yeah and then i just did around the the edge yeah so okay, so the, we've got in we've got in the in the box here up there. Oh, I can't point to it because my hand goes out. We've got eighty twenty. I think it is, isn't it? Eighty twenty. Twenty. Do you say twenty centimeters? Yeah. For this, for the stitching. Remember, I was just saying about the, the different um, waddings will tell you what the maximum apart you do. Twenty centimeters apart is that one. Um, but you pay it by by, by the half meter, six ninety nine. Sorry. Okay, so when you've got your, when you've got it all done, when you come to quilt, um, to stitch around your heart, which you can do on the machine or by hand, yeah. you will be able to use that quarter of an inch seam that you cut by hand as a guide as to where to sew. So right. that's quite useful because it, it does look a bit dodgy like that because you can see the, yes, the thing underneath. The but as soon as you yeah. stitch it, it will, you won't even be able to notice it. So when you're, um, when you want to quilt it, you obviously don't want to see the end of your knot no. anywhere. So the way I do this is, if I was quilting, say, that block, yeah. I would go in, go in, I'm not going to do it because I need the thread to do this. I would yeah. go in through here, come up where I wanted to come up, yeah. pull that through and just pop the knot. So you just... So the knot goes into the water. Yeah. yeah. So that's just one single knot. Um, you don't want to be doing well, no, you don't double knots because you're gonna then you won't be able to get it through. And also, if you do, you'll then damage the fabric. Yeah, you? exactly. And you want to cut your tail quite short as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you just and then on these, I just use the. I could see where the seam allowance was. Yeah. 
Um, so but I just really, stitched you around there. You, you can do whatever you want. If you wanted to stitch a little cross inside each of those boxes, you could do. Like yeah. you've only gone round quarter an inch around the edge inside, yeah. but if you wanted to, you could do like kisses or anything yeah. like that on there, yeah. couldn't you? Yeah. And also you could you could do um, maybe sort of miss out this section, put a plain section and embroider like the name of yes, a yeah, baby yeah. in the year they were born or something like that. Yeah, so nice. what I'm going to do with this is because obviously this is a dark thread yeah. and this is a light fabric. Minutes, so, um, I'm going to go in through the back. So I'm going to go a little bit further away and I'm just literally catching, catching the back fabric and going yeah. into the wadding. I don't want to be showing it at the... Front. at the front yeah so i'm just going to pull that through and then just pop it through pop it through there we and go you and you can go, hear it yeah. yeah and then i'm just literally going to sew so it's just a, a, running, it's a stitch. running stitch and you haven't got to worry about how close they are together and the size of them and all. just try and keep it as uniform as you can if then if you need to make it bigger to make it look more uniform you can you might don't be frightened ball. yeah don't be frightened to have a go at this because it's, it's not quilting basically it's just flipping well Running stitch. Yeah. Oh, well, now, now you've just ruined what Princess has said. She said, how lovely to see a, bit, see a bit of hand quilting demonstrated. Well, you just <laughs> flip it, pull it through, don't you? It's just a bit of a running stitch, isn't it? I just don't want to be people, people think, oh, I'm not doing hand stitching. No, because there's also another way of hand quilting, isn't there? And it's called Thai quilting, isn't it? And when I first heard about it, I thought it was from Thailand. And I was like really excited thinking, oh, we're going to be doing quilting from Thailand. And it's actually, you just pull it through and tie a knot on it. And it's yeah, Thai quilting. Yeah, right? yeah. Right, so I should, I should just show you quickly yeah, how to tie on. it off at the back. Yeah, okay. Worry. Right, so this is called a quilter's knot. So this gets rid of rid of your knot on the back, okay? So I'm left-handed, so this is probably gonna be a bit of yeah. a pain for some people. So what you do is you hold it, yeah. hold the thread cr to create a loop. You come in to your loop and you pull it so that this bit here is tight. Yeah. Okay, put your finger on it and pull it tight. So now your knot is right up against your fabric there. Right. And then you literally go into, just right next to it, and then you're putting your needle through the wadding and the and coming out through the back in. So you don't want to see a needle on the front here. Right. Okay. And then you just literally and you could just feel it pop through. And Perfect. then you pull that tight. Yeah. Trim it off, and then your end disappears like Perfect. that. Because that's so weird. So when you flatten it out, the end disappears back yeah. into the thing. Yeah. Christine says, I've used this heart reverse applique technique for cushions. Just made huge hearts and laying over a patchwork design. It's very pretty. Well done, Victoria. This quilt is stunning. Thank you. Have you finished? Yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, but the, uh, but the also, can I just point out, in the pattern, you also, if you're thinking, oh, she hasn't done the binding, she hasn't done the binding, there's a whole complimentary um, pamphlet on how to bind your quilt and everything like yeah. that. Uh, do you know when you're back? Oh, it could be about nine months' time, isn't it? <laughs> No, <laughs> I'm no, not she's not pregnant. No. <laughs> How long do you know when your next date is? I don't yet. No. Oh, so today was a tester to make yeah. sure you're good. Yeah, I'm enough. on probation as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, thank you very much thank indeed. You. We'll thank see you. Thanks everybody for buying the pattern. Do you what? Thanks everybody for buying the pattern. Get the hair out your mouth. Because <laughs> right, you know, hand quilting, just a rally stitch in it. Uh, don't go anywhere because, yes, we're here for five hours now. I know I have to reserve a bit of energy because normally I'll be having to pack the back. Oh, actually, in this last hour, could you just pack all the boxes up for yeah, us? Yeah, that'd be fine. Uh, I'm back in four minutes with Adjust the Form and Dressmaking Tools. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. Watch us on Freeview Channel 74, Sky Channel 670 or on our YouTube channel. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com 
And if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learned lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business. It was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike. And they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Hi, I'm Sam from Adventures in Crafting. I'm a craft and crochet teacher based in Tring in Hertfordshire. Since lockdown, I've moved all of my classes onto Zoom, so I now have customers from all over the country. I teach lots of crafts, but crochet is my specialism. I became passionate about crochet when I was pregnant with my fourth child and in desperate need of some me time. Crochet became my sanctuary and I've crocheted every day since then. I'm a qualified teacher and eight years ago I began teaching crochet. I love sharing my passion with other people. I design patterns, sell kits and teach lots of classes. My classes range from beginners to next steps, specific makes and clubs. I also like to design crochet alongs. My most recent one was my autumn granny square crochet along which resulted in me designing this allotment jumper which I love to wear when I'm out gardening and looking after my chickens. My crochet tip for you is to enjoy it. Crochet should be about taking part in a hobby that brings you pleasure. My claim to fame is that I met Kirsty Allsop at the Handmade Fair and I gave her one of my crochet sunflower brooches. I'm so excited to be taking part in Yarn Lane and I hope you'll enjoy my demonstrations. Doing it just to forms this hour. I was, trying to be a, I was trying to be a mannequin, but it didn't work, did it? I was in a play once called Man Alive, and it was all about mannequins in a shop window that came to life. <laughs> it was fantastic. It was brilliant. Anyway, 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 let me just do that. Right, we're doing adjuster forms. Now, before we do anything at all, I just need to point out, I don't want you to buy anything yet because we've got two different versions, and I just need you to know the difference between the two versions. They're both... They're both um, at the adjust forms with all the, 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 the 12 places that you can move things around, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But the difference is the blue one has a, the, the, the centre um, pole 
that you hold the mannequin up with can be moved to the left hand side. So if you're going to do trousers, you want the sapphire one. And if you just want the pole in the center, then you want the gray one. You want the gray one, you see. So that, that's the difference. The, the pole on the gray one doesn't move at all. So if you're never going to do trousers, you can get that one. They're all the same price. Every, everything is the same price. So it doesn't matter price wise. So if you want the gray one, the only difference as well is the hem marker on the gray one is a little French chalk puff puff thing and the one on the blue there's there it is and then the one on the blue is one that you mark with pins right so what I'm going to do is they each come in three different sizes so we're going to talk about the grey one first so if Hannah can put in the, the size range for the grey one here it is there you go there you go so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the blue one out Bring the grey one in. Now, obviously, I've only got one size here in the studio, but we'll just go through the sizes first of all. So, as you can see, they come in small, medium, and full figure, right? So, the, this is the grey one we're talking about now. So, the small one goes from a 33 to 41 inch bust, 24 to 32 inch waist, 34 to 42 inch hip. Now, the back length you can adjust, which I'll show you about in a minute, Nate's back waist. And the height, well, the height is the same on all of them, 72 inches. That's quite tall, isn't it? The medium one, the bust goes from a 39 to 47 inch. Uh, I'm only doing inches, obviously. They, they, you can see on the chart that there are centimetres as well. The waist is 29 to 37. The hips are 40 to 48. Neck to back waist is the same. And the height is the same. Then on the full figure, the bust goes from 45 to 53. The waist goes from 38 to 46, and the hips go from 47 to 55. Now, the nape to back length is a little bit bigger on the full figure. It's a nape to back waist of 16 to 18 inches. Most people, most sizes are 15 inches. Very few people would need to lengthen it to the 17 or the 18 inch on the, on the full figure. And the height on that one is the same, 72 centimetres. So, this is the mannequin we're talking about. This is the adjustable form we're talking about. Now, what will happen is, as I'm talking, I'm not going to point out the different graphics, but as I'm talking, Hannah will put the graphics through for A, B and full figure. Was it A, B or was it small and medium? Small, medium and full figure. So what I've got here is small, right? Oh, the other's gone through already. The other's gone through. Oh, actually, so you could just look beneath us and click on the one you want beneath us. That's fine. Right, okay, let me start at the top. So this one has a pin cushion at the top here. So they've got a lovely little pin cushion detailing there, right? And then what happens is, as you can see, you have these, um, they're like little coils, little dials that you just open out to uh, make the, the to make the, the size of the mannequin different sizes. Now, the reason that most of them will only have one at the front and one at the back, right? They don't have the, the, the luxury of four at each section. That's because we're all different uh, in different places. You know, you could be um, busty, but you can have a very small back. Or you can be the same measurement and, and be not quite so busty, but have a wider back. So this way, you can just adjust the mannequin to exactly how you want yourself to be or, or the person you're making for is going to be. You also have the same around the waist and the same around the hip. Now, the, around the hip, if you think about it, right, Hannah carries all her weight on the side here and at the back here. So, oh, she's not, <laughs> she's not even in here listening. But, but she does, she does, and I'm not being rude. So what she would do is she would open the back and the side, uh, um, what, what do I call those? I want to call them like um, cog, a cog, like a cog wheel sort of thing. She would open her side and the back ones and leave the front one as it, as it is sort of thing. Um, and so, so that way you can just create, and also we are going to be doing it in the new year. We're going to do a, a, um, a lesson in how to pad your mannequin. I think it's in the bit between Christmas and New Year. I'm not quite sure, but it's around around that time anyway. So basically, now what I would do when you get it home for the very, very first time is I would undo all the uh, cogs and take them to their widest thing. First of all, just to make sure that they work. And secondly, just to give them that 
because they might not have even been, been out that far before. But don't go, oh, just wind it, just unwind it, just unwind it. Do it gently and work your way round the mannequin. So go round the bust a little bit, go round the waist a little bit, go round the hip a little bit. Go back up and do the bust a little bit, the waist a little bit, and the, the hip a little bit. Just so you take it out to its fullest amount, and then you bring it into whatever size, size you want. As I say, this one just has the pole that runs down the middle, just runs down the middle, there it is, there, just runs down the middle. So if you're doing dresses, skirts, coats, anything like that, this is absolutely perfect. Now it has a, it has a little tripod, can you show that, can you see that again, Paul, there? Look, there you go. So uh, the tripod, like, it's like um, a milking stool, isn't it? The tripod mean, means it's nice and stable. And as you can see on there as well, this here is your hem marker. What you do is you get, a, uh, you get a little sachet of French chalk with it when it arrives. You put the French chalk in there. You measure up from the hem, uh, up from the floor, sorry, how far you want your hem to be. And then you literally can just squirt, or do that word, just squirt with your chalk going round like that. And it just marks the hem on, on the skirt or whatever you're, you're hemming, which means there's nothing worse, is there, when you pin something, put it on, and it droops down a little bit at one side. This way, it's going to be the same height all the way round that you need it to be. So it is fantastic like that. Now, it does have a warranty on um, anything that doesn't work. That's not through us. That's through Adjuster Form themselves. Your PMP is still only £3.95 even though you'll get it in a great big box. Now, oh, the other thing is, it comes to pieces. So if you don't want it up in your studio the whole time, this body section comes off. And then if I remember correctly, the, the um, pole goes into two, and then obviously that folds up at the bottom there. So it will all fold up if you don't want it up the whole time. It will, you can put it away if you want to. So, so that's a fantastic thing. The other thing that I was talking about was the nape to back waist. Now I can't do it here because you need to go inside to do it. But you see this bit here. So your nape goes from here, the back of your neck, down your back there. And it's quite an important, when you're doing your patterns, it's quite an important measurement, right? Most people's will be 15 inches. But uh, what we've done on this one is we've unscrewed it inside and just lifted it up. So that's your waistline there. You can feel where your waistline is there. This is literally made two inches longer. So that's the longest. That was the 17 inch nape back waist. But you do that from inside. So I can't do it here unless I took it off, took the pole off, unscrewed it and everything like that. But once, if you're making it for yourself, your nape back waist, never, no matter how, because we all change shape, don't we? we? All our bodies change shape the whole time. Your nape back, back waist doesn't ever change. You're always the same size. So once it's in the right, right depth for you, unless of course you're then going to start making for friends or family and things like that. Um, but this is a brilliant way, especially now, because if you think about it, if you're a dressmaker, Normally, you'd go to a friend and you go, oh, just fit this frock on me. Or does this look all right around the back? Does it? You can do it all on the mannequin now, can't you? Because obviously, if your friends can't come round anymore, your friends can't fit, you can't fit a garment. That's for sure. Do you know what I mean? So this is a brilliant way of getting the mannequin to your size. And then you could try all sorts on it, can't you? And, and, and readapt things. And also, what a lot of people are saying to me is they're doing upcycling and... Um, altering clothes that they've got in their wardrobe to create new ones because at lockdown we all do things you know kind of we've got to fill the time haven't we sort of thing and, and what a better way to fill your time than learning how to adapt uh, clothes you've already got things that have been on your rails for years and years and years and you kind of think do you know what I could make that into this or I could change that into that and then if you've got a mannequin it's perfect perfect because that be then becomes your model doesn't it so that one there was the super wasn't it that was the super fit deluxe right the Okay, we're just running through those graphics again, and then and then we'll move on to the on to the blue one. Have a look at the size chart again, just to be on the safe side. There you go. So that oh oh sorry, most important thing, split pay. Split pay. I completely forgot all about that. I'm so excited about them because they're all the same price. One hundred and fifty nine ninety nine, aren't they? Oh, where's the graphics gone? Hang on, wait for the graphic to come back in. It's this one we're talking about at the moment. Here you go. Look. There you go. Three payments of £53.33. and pence. Obviously, if you buy that today, today's payment will be 53.33 plus your postage, plus your packaging, right? Then next month, it will be 53.33 and then in January, it'll be 
Uh, no interest, don't charge any interest whatsoever. All that happens is your PMP does get put onto the first payment. But if you've already bought something today, you've already paid your PMP. So if you say you came in and bought the early bird earlier and bought the um, best press, right? Paid your PMP, that's your PMP done for the day. So even if you come in and buy one of these, you don't pay anything extra at all. I think they, are these shipped from, I think these come from adjuster form. I'm not sure if they come from us. I think they come straight from adjuster form. Anyway, sorry, I completely forgot about that. Completely forgot. What a brilliant way. So you could have this in your home in the next four to six working days, or maybe we're, maybe we're saying a little bit longer with what's going on at the moment, but four to six working days for 53.33 plus your postal packaging, and then another payment of 53.33 in December, one in January, then it's paid for. Then it's paid for. Right, now we'll look at the measurement forms for the blue one for the sapphire one if that's all right here's the sapphire one now this one is not this one's slightly a slightly different uh, mannequin so let's just look at the sizes of the blue one so now this one it goes in sizes a b and c we've got all three sizes when we did them the first time when i was first back no not back when i first started here we sold out and we are able to get more as they sell out so don't worry so uh, sizes a size a uh bust 33 to 41 Waist 26 to 33 and a half, hip 36 to 44, and then the back length on this one is 14 and a half to 16, tall 73 inches. The B, uh, the bust is 39 to 47, the waist is 32 to 40, the hips are 41 to 49, again the nape to back waist is 15 to 17, and the height is 75 on that one, a bit taller on that one. And then the C, the other one, is 45 to 53 bust, 38 to 46 waist, and 47 to 54 hip. Now that one's got a slightly longer naked back waist. It's got the 16 to 18, but it works in the same way as the grey one that I just showed you. So now this one, I'm presuming this is the, is this the B or the C, this one? This is B, this is B, right? Now this one's slightly different because at the top here, You've got a little, a little dial at the top here, right? It's coming in now, don't worry. Don't rush. There you go. Right, press it down and turn it. Ooh. Press it down and turn it. Oh, there you go, there you go, there you go. You can change the size of the neck. Press it down and turn it, change the size of the neck. You do need to depress that down. There you go, there you go. So you can make the neck bigger or smaller if you want to. Again, it's exactly the same with the, the cogs that you have from the other one. There are 12. Now, most, most makes, you will see, only have one at the front and one at the back. These have ones under the arm as well. Because as I say, we're all, we're all different, aren't we? We're all shaped completely differently. You've got the waist one. You've got the hip one there. You can pin into this. This is like a nylon covered form that you can pin into. So if you're going to drape on the stand, if you're going to cut patterns on the stand, you can just put your pins in there. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, again, you've got your naked back waist here that changes. This one's on, this one here again, we've just done a little bit, but you need to go to that from the inside. You need to get to that from the inside down there. And now the, the big difference now on this one is that the pole that goes down, you can either have it in the centre, the same as the grey one, um, for dresses and coats. Oh, you can, no, right. You don't, it, it can be, it, you, if you have it in the centre, if you're just doing dresses and coats, that's fine. If you put it inside, inside the body, there are two sections. I think we, have we got a picture still of that, of the underneath of the thing? There's basically two sockets inside. One is in the centre, and then one is to the left. Right. Oh, here you go, here you go, this, this, there it is. So if you want to, now you can put it on the left-hand one and leave it on the left-hand one forever, but basically um, you can put it on the left one, which means you can pull trousers onto it without having to leave the crotch seam open, which is fantastic. Right, the only thing then you're going to have to do is if you are using the hem marker, you do need the pole to be in the centre. You do need the pole to be in the centre. Do you? No, no, you would do, you would do, you would do. Uh, but this one here is a bit different. It hasn't got the French chalk and the puff thing. What you do is you measure up and then you literally place a pin where it goes round like that. Again, you've got the same pole, which can be, the whole of this can be taken down and stored away. You've got your, your little um, tripod that it sits on and uh, very, very sturdy. Now, since we've, since I, no, not, I haven't come back. Since I started here, these have been incredibly popular. Remember, 
They're all 159.99. Doesn't matter which size you buy, which style you buy, they're all 159.99, which means they are all on split pay. Now, what you need to do is you need to buy the mannequin that is the size that you are or just slightly smaller than you are. Don't buy bigger because you can't then make it smaller, can you? So if you are a, can we just put the size chart on? And I'll just, I'll just take an example, right? So if you're, if you're a, right, so if you're thinking, oh, I need to get one of those. If your bust was, say, 38 and your waist was 33, no, 34, then I'd buy the B because, oh, no, 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 bus 38, I'd, I'd buy the A, sorry, bus, bus 38, I'd buy the A. You always want to buy, if you are 30, you don't want the mannequin to be bigger than you are. Do you know what I mean? You need the mannequin to be, let's think this, so if you're 39, you would buy the B. If you're a 40-inch bus, I'd still buy the B. 42-inch bus, you'd buy the B. Do you know what I mean? So you want to be within that size range, but then again with the waist and the hips. Lots of people come between sizes. You need the mannequin to be slightly sm from your size upwards, basically, from your size upwards. No, your size. I'm, I'm not describing this properly, am I? In those measurements from 39 to 47, you don't want to be smaller than 39 and you don't want to be bigger than 47. Your, your measurement has to fit within what it is, is if you buy one that doesn't move, like if you buy a non-adjustable a, a non, um, one, you always have to go much smaller than you and build up. With this one, as long as your size is fit in, your, your real size fits between the sizes on the chart, then you'll be absolutely fine because you can adapt it because on the solid ones, you can't adapt them. You have to pad them to your size. So you always go smaller. On these, you always go for, to make sure your size is directly in, in between the smallest and the largest size of like the bust, the waist and the hips. You can always pad them up. So, so if your waist, so if you were, were buying the B and your waist was a bit bigger, still buy the B, but you can pad the waist up or pad the hip up and things like that. But what, is, what a lot of people are taking advantage of is the split pay. Is the split pay, definitely, definitely, definitely. Because you can get it home and just, just have a go on it, can't you, for 53, 33 plus your post and pay, post and packaging. I know, it's brilliant, isn't it? So if we could just put in the measurement chart for that last one again. Have all those sizes all gone through them? They've all gone through all them. All the, 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 they're all now available to buy on the website. They're all there, ready to go. And um, if you've always been thinking, if you've just been thinking, oh, I've always wanted one of those, I've always wanted one of those, treat yourself. That's what I do. Be delivered, you know, be delivered within a week or so, won't it? Right, I shall stay here now in this, in this little shop that I've got going on here. Right, oh, no, we're, well, okay, then, right, hang on a second. Yeah, hang on a minute, let me just do this. Uh, can I... Right, hang on, Christine says, I'm an 18 bottom, but 24 bust. So I've got a 14 to 20 mannequin, as I remember you saying, buy slightly smaller and pad up. That's exactly right, Christine, exactly right. Um, because if you go too big, you can't make it smaller. Right, I'm going to do the cutting mat, first of all, that Victoria was using earlier. Now, the, the re I, we, we've always said, haven't we, in the past, if you have a cutting table out the whole time, it protects your table, and you can always work on it. And if they know, the reason we don't have it on the table here all the time is, as a viewer, before I came to Sewing Street, it, used, it was annoying me. When, when you went for the top camera, and this, on a big telly, it would go like that all the time, and I, I ended up turning off because it was just doing my head in a little bit. So that's why we don't have it on the table the whole time. Here is, uh, this is a, a big one, this one, 37.99. It measures 90 by 60 centimetres. Now, this is the centimetre side because it does come in both imperial and metric. You've got all your angle sizes, your 60, your 45, and your 30. I've got it on the site. That's a brilliant shot there, see? Oh, apart from you can see the dirty, um, the dirty pressing mat behind it, which Hannah was supposed to move earlier into the other room. Oh, she gave it to the floor manager to do. Okay, that's fine. Anyway, anyway, so that's the metric side. That's the imperial size going down to one eighth of an inch. Now we always say don't use your don't use your cutting mat for precise measurements, but they're all there, aren't they? They're all fantastic. Uh, measurements in inches along the outside. You've got all your angles on. Now these are self-healing cutting mats. So as you cut, you, your as you use it a lot, your rotary cutter will go into 
it will go into the mat, right? But it's a self-healing mat. Keep it nice and clean. Maybe use a little bit of soapy water. Sometimes put it in the bath is what they say. When are we getting the mail adjuster form? Derek, I know it's on order. I'm not quite sure when it's coming. I'll ask. The thing is, you see, what's happening is in these troubled times, most of the office work from home. So normally I'd come off there and go, oh, Hayley, Derek said this, Christine said this, da 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 Can't do that, you know what I mean? Because they're just not there. And by the time I get home, I've forgotten. So uh, I do know they are on order, but I don't know when they're going to arrive. Anyway, so that's your cutting mat, £37.99. Now, a lot of people were asking, what was the rotary cutter that Victoria was just using in the last hour? She was using this one. And now where should I put it? Yes, but you should know, Hannah, after all these years, that I need a space in front of me to, pre to present something. Now, where did the floor manager put the fabric for cutting? Yes, anyway, you look at these. This is the old 45 millimeter rotary cutter. I know there's some fabric over here, so I can get it. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Don't worry. Right, these are gorgeous, these are. Now, if you're left-handed or you're right-handed, you can use these uh, because it's so, they're so simple to change. Because Victoria just noticed she was left-handed earlier. What you do is you just unscrew here. Oh, hang on, turn it over that way. You unscrew here and you can just swap the blade and the section over from this side to that side to make it left-handed. This button here is your lock button. So you can, um, once you've uh, not stopped using it, you just put, put the lock in and then you can't make that blade come out at all, which is a safety uh, thing. Also, the thing that's good about this when you are using it, if you've got a rotary cutter where the blade stays out the whole time, if you were to drop this and that let landed on your feet, and I wear flip-flops all the time at home, whereas this, as soon as you let go of it, the blade uh, goes back into its little house there. So it's much, much safer. And also, if you think, if you're working on your table, I'm making a green quilt, right? You put your grocery cutter down, and then you go fabric, 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 and then you go, where's my grocery cutter? Ah! It's there, it's there, right? Not with this one, because the blade is all put away. Yes. So anyway, so that's brilliant, isn't it, like that? It's also got little grooving here, because people like Joy, when they cut with it, they like to put a finger there just to, um, to stabilise it. And as I say, the blade comes in and out as you pull the lever in and out like that. £19 and £90. And of course, they come from Olfa, which is an, a brilliant, excellent make. Isn't it? Right, OK. I, I, now, I don't know how sharp this one is, because this is the one that's been left around in the studios the whole time. So let's just have a... Oh, straight through. Oh, did you not see that? Oh. Brilliant, isn't it? What's the matter, Paul? Oh, what's happened? Why? What? Who's done that to you? Oh, hang on. I've got a question from Jackie. My large cutting board came bent in a big box. Did you buy it from here, Jackie? No, they shouldn't do that. Um, I'll, uh, oh, Jackie, remind me again later in the week and I'll, I'll send an email to Hayley and ask her. Because they're not, they, you, you should always store them flat. Always store them flat. I don't know how that happened. I'll find out for you though, Jackie. Okay, I'm going to do a F, F foundation paper peating tortoise project. It's gone in the bin. It's gone in the bin, don't worry. Right, how big's what? It's big. There's a, we've got a hoover. Elliot could do it in the morning. <laughs> right, where are we going to go next then? Buttons, of course. Got three, these are lovely. If you love, if you love unusual buttons, you're going to adore these. Okay, Jackie, send me an email later in the week when I can speak to somebody and I'll do that for you. Where do you want to go first? Spools. What's the matter? I'm in the middle. I'm at the red. Look at these. Oh. Okay. 
Okay, look, there you go. Look at those. Aren't they cute? They're spools, look. Or threads, spools of thread. Where, Hannah? Right, so these are your spools. How many did you get in a packet? Oh, sorry, that was my head in shot. 12 spool buttons, pack of 12 on a shank. Nice, aren't they? £5.99 for 12 buttons. I need to get those because Anne in the village, she collects buttons. So I go, when I see her in the pop-in shop, she's like, oh, can I have the buttons off that shirt? And I'm like, no, Anne, you can't. I'm wearing it. And then she wears some manky old cardi. And I was like, where are those nice buttons I gave you? She said, oh, don't use them. Just collect them. So they're the spools. Now this packet here, oh, the reason they're, no, they're completely different, Hannah. Well, look, these are little red ladybirds. Oh, hang on, right way around. Right, okay, look, I'm just going to show, these are definitely the right ones, aren't they? Because the ones on the shelf are orange, look. Oh, no, they're pumpkins, the one on the shelf, that's why. Right, Hannah said, don't open the packet of ladybirds because there's a bag behind you already open. So I turn round to open these. They're not ladybirds at all. They're pumpkins. The pumpkins have sold out, I'm afraid. Oh, right, okay. Now, Anne, Anne said, do you know what, Jackie? All you have to do if there's any problems with your cutting mat is you just put it on the floor with some books on it or something like that, and it'll it'll soon flatten itself out. It'll be, it shouldn't be a problem, but it shouldn't do. But I've, uh, because um, Anne said the same thing, so I'll have a word with them for you. Right, here we go. So how many of these do you get? Seven? That's an unusual number, isn't it? I know, but why would you have seven? Anyway. Seven. Uh, would you, uh, how many buttons have you got down the front of your shirt, Paul? One, two, three. Oh, yeah, seven. Oh, no, eight, nine, ten, eleven, I've got on mine. Oh, no, I suppose not. No, flowers. The flowers are gorgeous. The little days. Oh, now. Now, these are variant sizes. Right, hang on. I'm just going to move them around in the bag so you can see everything in the bag. Oh, I'm going to... There's open. No, no, there's no response. Right. So there are two with spots, a couple of bigger ones, and a couple, oh no, two little ones. I wonder why there's two baby ones in there then. Blouses, I suppose. One, two, three. Oh, no, they'd be, no. Not sure why. You get five big ones, two small ones, and two of the big ones are different colours with spots on. Nice. They're cute, aren't they? Let me turn them over. Oh, look. They've even got little shanks to match the front. Well, they're only 2 99 I could have opened those. I should get those for Anne, really. I'll get those for Anne. I'll get those for Anne, because I don't think she'd want the spool ones. Now, isn't that... There's a sewing... Hang on, isn't there a sewing... Right, I've got to think now. No, 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 no. There's a sewing... There's a sewing teacher... Right, hang on. And all of her students are called ladybirds. Is it Loving in Loveliness? It's Kerry from Living in Loveliness, isn't it? I, I, knew, I knew in my brain, I was thinking ladybirds, ladybirds, ladybirds. They'd be good, they'd be good Christmas presents for all your ladies, um, Kerry. Not one each, don't give them one button each. But you're just, Oh no, that could be the way you sew it to the lapel of your jacket and you all know you're a member of the Ladybird Club. Good idea. Tiny covered buttons. Oh, no, these are brilliant for wedding dresses. Back of dresses, wedding dresses, things like that. 249, 11 millimetre. Oh, something's creaking in there. <laughs> 249. I'll get it in the right place in a minute. Self-cover, 11 millimetre, metal buttons. Do 
Hala doesn't realise we're on air. She's just getting up, making a tea, making a pot noodle. She she wasn't in there when I was t- discussing the size of the mannequin's bottom or anything, you know. You missed it, Hannah. What's next? Madeira, seam ripper. Every sewer or sewist's best friend. Two ninety nine. Now it's all very, very important to keep your seam ripper nice and sharp, because uh, you never know when you're going to need it. And also, there's nothing worse than if you get the seam ripper out and then it rips the fabric or does something, or is too blunt to get the stitches out and anything. That there is for when you, when you're uh, ripping a whole seam out, the little red dot on the end is to stop that going into the fabric so you can run along the seams with it and it doesn't jack in. There you go. I never use it like that. I always used to use it like that. Pick, 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 pick. And then if I did do a run, I'd open the seam like that and go down the middle. But that little dot is there to stop the second prong going into your fabric. Two ninety nine. I've only got two lots of pins. Right, now, they call these extra long pins. They're, they're a decent size and they're extra long compared to the pins in the next box. I'd say, you see, now, you see, they sell these as, they say they're extra long, nickel plated. Yeah, no, they do sell on the packet. They are quite long, but I've seen... They're not as long as quilting pins, are they? But they're longer than the pins that are coming up in a second. That's not special. I was just showing you the length. Now, remember, the glass... The good thing about these, if you iron over the head of this pin, it doesn't melt. It doesn't melt, right? So you can iron... I wouldn't iron over the heads of pins because sometimes it leaves an indent in the fabric that you can't then get rid of, but it won't melt. If you've got a plastic-headed pin... Then they might melt and then you're done for because you don't want melted plastic all over your... Um, 100... And, no, not 100 pounds. 3 100 in the packet and they're extra long. They say what? 45 millimetres long and approximately 100 pcs and they're 0. 0.70 millimetres wide. Marina says, oh, where do I buy the two weeks in Madeira, please? No, I'm sorry. It's a quick unpick, my lovely. I'm just going to put those away because we don't want to get confused. Because Paul has to count those before we send them back to the warehouse. Okay, then I've got these pins. Now, I don't know if I can open this one. Yeah, but it's got... These are 31 millimetres. I don't think they'll be glass somehow, but I'll, that's why I wanted to get them out to have a look. There's a little bit of sellotape there, to, just holding it shut. There we go. Here we go. Oh, no, I can't get I don't know how that box works. Then. Plastic headed pins. These are the ones that are in. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we had a pin cushion here with them all in a minute ago, didn't we? I've only got the... Me- oh, there it is. Are they those? Yours won't be in a pair and they won't be sorted into colour. <laughs> I think somebody in the office had a little bit too much time to spare on those, isn't it? The centre of this table seems to be going more and more and more that way, doesn't it? Anyway, 3 99 they are. How many did you get in there? 200. No, you didn't move that one. Maybe somebody moves the table when we weren't looking. No, I'm not going to lift a table, am I? Next. Yeah. I've got Taylor's chalk coming up next. I just fancy... Something's telling me just to... Um, Sanitise my hands for some reason. 
I don't know, I think it was, I don't, I'm, I'm just being over sensitive, am I? Um, what did you say, sorry? Taylor's chalk. Taylor's chalk. So you get three pieces of Taylor's chalk in here. You get the red, the white, and the blue. Traditional ones, 3 99 These will last you for ages and ages. Even when they break, you just sharpen the edge and carry on using them. I'd have, oh, they have got something between them. I was going to say, I'd keep something between them, otherwise the blue will rub off the red and all that sort of thing. £3.99 for three traditional Taylor's chalks there. Get yourselves on the phone line. <laughs> Not to me, to them. To, oh, it's gone. Yeah. Seam gauge now, the hemline one. Yeah, it's the only one I've got, so it has to be. There you go. Now, you might be thinking, what's that, John? Well, if you have a look closely on it, I can't put my head in, You've got a one centimetre marking there, 1.5 centimetre marking there, a three centimetre mark there, two there, four there. You've got a little ruler there that runs up to six centimetres. Um, I'm not quite sure what that bit's there for. What do you reckon that bit there's for? Oh, well, it's just to fit the logo in. Made from durable, lightweight aluminium, will not bend or chip. Great for measuring pleats and tucks. That's what they'll be for, I imagine. Select the required seam lance. Line up the appropriate edge. Slide the edge along the whole length of fabric, marking the seam as you go. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just where you hold it. You see, there's another one there. Anyway. It's always useful to have around. Point turner and button shank gauge. Nine ninety nine. This one is. So as you can see down here, you've got your pointy turn, like your turn, pointy turn through. You've got your button gauge here, your button shank gauge here. What you do is basically, if you're sewing, sewing on a button and you want to create a shank, you put that underneath the button. It's like when you do military buttons, you put that underneath, stitch it on, pull it away, and then do your stitches round. You're creating your own shank on it, basically. Let's have a look what it says on the back here. Point turner with pointed end to turn through collars and, and corners to form crisp points by gently pushing out fabric from the inside. Imperial and metric markings along the side edges, used to turn up hem allowance or mark pleats. And button shank indents, place fabric Place between fabric and button when sewing on buttons to create a thread shank. There you go. That's exactly what I said. The two thicknesses are for light to heavyweight fabric or medium to heavyweight. Oh, there you go. Light to medium weight and medium to heavyweight. Inches along there, centimetres along there. Do what? Paul's having a funny moment, everybody. Just so you know. We'll wait. It'll be over in a minute. I've got lots of scissors. I don't know what, why I've got those out. They don't match anything in the packet. Okay, right. Micro serrated edge from Prim. Oh, hang on. Yeah, from Prim. Micro serrated edge. Now. Oh, are these micro? Oh, yeah, micro serration there. Made in Japan. 25 centimetres, which I also thought was 10 inches, but they're saying it's nine and a half inches. Because a centimetre is 25, it's two and a half centimetres, isn't it? An inch, sorry, two and a half centimetres. Anyway, 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 micro serrated edges. Now you want to use it, I mean, you can use these to cut any kind of fabric. It's not a problem at all. But especially if you're using jersey or lightweight silks or slippy fabrics, because the micro serration just holds on to the fabric so it doesn't fly all over the place. It just gives you that. If you're using lycra, it's very good for lycra as well. Um, nice handle section here. It's very, very stable. The way that I'll just, I could just put my hand in there like that. 
because um, I've got quite big fingers and I can fit my all four fingers in there and it's a really, really nice fit. It's got a kind of um, silicon based thing, so it's not, uh, not finished, it's actually made of the silicon based thing and really, really lovely and comfortable to wear. Uh, wear? To, to use. <laughs> you could wear them if you wanted, but you might get arrested. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, 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 they are a really lovely pair of uh, scissors to have to cut off braids. Not to, not to wear them. I'll be quiet. <laughs> anyway, please give us a call, 0800 0001 4433, if you want to get Paul and Hannah sacked. Jernomi professionals are now soft and sharp, they're called these. And put it in shot. Right, here we go, 24.99. Genomi Professional Soft and Sharp Side Bent Dressmaker Scissors, nine inches, 23 centimetres. Right, uh, I'll just show you these out of the packet because, first of all, they've called side bent because look at the where, where, where the positioning of the handle and the shears are, the actual blades are. It'd be nice in focus. The ca Paul's not doing that, it's just the camera doing that. Anyway, these are really lightweight, fantastic for dressmaking. They've got knife edge blades, very, very sharp blades. Now, what I love, look, can I show you this, right? The way a, a really good pair of scissors works is you don't stop the metal there. The metal needs to go right the way up. And if you look in there, can you see there? The metal carries on right the way up to where your hand is going to grip it. And on this one here, it's right the way up to where your thumb's going to go through. So you've got that kind of, it, it's a th all a thing to do with balance. It's all to do with, it comes from the old fashioned shears. When you put a pair of shears on your hand like that, they should balance, both ends should balance the same way with the amount of metal in, in each, each end beyond the um, pivot point there. But look, you see, when you cut these, that's on a different angle to what you'd normally expect a pair of scissors. It's a bit like, you know, we used to do, pe oh no, we didn't used to do pelican scissors and, um, but you know what I mean, when you're cutting through the fabric, it's really, really lovely angle to work on. Coming with a really good name as well, coming from Genome sort of thing. And the reason they're called soft and sharp is because they're sharp at this end and they're soft at this end, just so you know. Pinky Cheers. Now, these, oh now, I don't know, oh, well, hang on, let me just check. These are fantastic. These are some of the most affordable but brilliant pinking shears. Look. Aren't they brilliant? You see, a lot of people, when I first started, pinking shears used to be a bit clumpy and you'd try and cut through fabrics and they'd do this all the time. They'd twist and, and they would almost chew their way through the fabric. Look how, look how cleanly these are cutting through this fabric. Now, the reason you want a pinking shear, one is um, if you can't finish the edges off, or you don't want to finish the edge off, or you're using chiffon or something like that, the zigzag edge creates that um, kind of finish that's not going to fray so much. Also, if you're cutting, if you're doing soft toys or something like that, you want to cut through a curve, and you don't want to keep cutting snip, 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 you just use your pinking shears to cut around, then it gives you the, you know, when you turn a curve through, sometimes it's a little bit bulky, a little bit, the pinking shears takes away the weight because it's cutting lots and lots and lots of little snips. How much are they? Fourteen ninety nine. Now, you obviously, your pinking shears will get blunt eventually. The best way to sharpen a pair of pinking shears is cut tin foil with them, or you know, aluminium foil. Oh, tin. I say tin foil, but that's old. It's all called aluminium foil now, but it's aluminium tin. Anyway, one we can't answer today, I'm afraid. You only get one pair. I'll just put one pair in the picture there. We have to watch the repair shop, won't we, on um, that shop, that thing, yeah. £14.99, is that the right way up? Yeah. Oh, Hannah Fancy's the man that does the woodwork. Was he the one that was on the, there's a new daytime show, isn't there, with Get In, What's It and Kim Marsh. And I know it's because of the situation, but Get In was over there, Kim was over there, and the handsome man from um, the repair shop was in the middle and he didn't know who to keep looking at like that. And then he was obviously supposed to talk about how you can use mayonnaise to bring wood back to life. 
and he didn't so instead of uh, Kim saying now tell us the trick about mayonnaise she went I've heard if you use mayonnaise on it and it was like so kind of like oh no anyway right next oh cheers these are nice Christmas gift I'm thinking here Millwood 16.99 these are heavy duty these are proper old-fashioned shears these heavy duty dressmaking shears ten and a half inches these Oh, hang on, I got missed you, sorry. Uh, yes, Maureen. Yes, Maureen, I'm, I have tried. Uh, might be a silly question, says Margaret, but how can you tell if your scissors have A? Serrated edge. That's a good question. Right, so a serrated edge means that if you look at them very, very finely, they're literally got tiny 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 grooves normal scissors have knife edge like we were saying on the on the uh, Janome ones there which are completely and utterly smooth you can also tell as you cut because if you cut with a straight a scissor edge like these it's it glides through like butter but it doesn't feel like there's any um friction is that the word tension friction but with serrated edge when you cut you can almost feel the two blades going mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that, like that sort of thing. Where it's with the, the 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 scissor edge ones, they go. Hmm, 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 hmm. Does that mean that makes sense? That makes sense. They're not listening to me in the gallery, so it's fine. But no, there's no no question is a silly question. No question is a silly question. Now I, I did ask. We haven't got one of these in the studio at the moment. Because uh, somebody burnt the carpet with it and then Hannah scrubbed it and it's gone home with someone else to be fixed, I believe. Oh, photograph, not fixed. Photograph. £39.99. These are brilliant. These always sell really, really, really well. So, uh, this is the Prim Mini Steam Iron. Uh, so, if you look at the top there, you will see that there is a... A little rubber stopper where you can put the water in because it's a steam iron. You've got your two little windows there to show how full the water is. You've got your button there to put the steam on or the steam off. And then this one here is your speed dial. No. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> speed dial. Um, yeah, I've got the chip shop on speed dial for you on the iron. <laughs> Never put a switched on eye into your ears, everybody. Uh, it's the temperature dial. It's the temperature dial. Okay, round here we have like a little silicon edge. This is really, really good, this handle, for people who have um, dexterity issues. Uh, the iron itself isn't as heavy as an iron, but they do suggest you take it as a travel iron um, because it can, you can iron a shirt happily with this. You've got a little red light on the front there which goes off when it's the right temperature. Oh, you can't see. On the bottom, there are three... Well, no, I thought it was going to be see-through at the bottom there, you see. There are three little holes for your steam to come out of, everything like that. You do get with it instructions. You do get with it a teeny-weeny little jug. Like, oh, there it is, there it is. The teeny-weeny little jug. And you've got a little, um, I don't know what it's made of, like a polyester bag for it to travel in as well. It also has, now, I suggest it has a metre and a half cord. Paul says it's got a two-metre cord. Someone measured theirs. And there's this 1.88 meter cord between the uh, plug and the start of the iron. Uh, they're brilliant and they get really hot. They're fantastic for craft. If you have them in your craft room. Uh, t uh, friends of mine have got these. My friend jo has got one of these because she's too lazy to get up to walk to the other side of the cutting room. So she sews here, cuts here, presses there using one of these. Jeremy Joe, why does Jeremy Joe make things? Isabel said, John, that was a fantastic description of the scissors. Thank you very much indeed. Did you like the speed dial as well? How not to use your iron. Do not, mind you, it has been known, hasn't it? People go, the phone rings in the olden days. They go, hello, it's the iron. Anyway, moving on. You don't want to know that. Early bird. Oh, now. Yeah, this is, it's pretend it's eight o'clock this morning. Oh, um. I don't know what I've done with the top. Because when you get yours at home, 
you get the bottle with a top on it and this is separate. But obviously we put this in here because Victoria Carrington was going to use it in her demonstration. And then I said, have you put best press on? She went, no, I wouldn't put best press on. Um, but I have to tell you, they absolutely flew out at eight o'clock this morning if you missed it. It's three pounds off. This is the no scent, right? This is no scent or scent free on this one. If you go to the website, right? I shouldn't tell you this. If you go to the website and search, um, not search press, best press, search best press, um, you will find the same size bottle in lavender slash lin vanilla, vanilla, uh, vanilla and lavender in the same bottle, same price with the three pounds off. So if you want one with a scent, get the one from the website. If you want this one without the scent, then buy this one. And it is scentless, this one. So um, it's 499 millilitres, 16.9 ounces. I never know what any of that means. It's just a big bottle, isn't it? Lasts you a long time. Brilliant for spraying on your fabrics. Hmm? It's not an aerosol either, because you've got the, psh, psh, the trigger one. Psh, psh. I won't spray it because it'll go over and make the table sticky and everything. Mary Ellen Best Press was today's early bird and is still today's early bird. We can do the menu. Yeah, that's fine. Tomorrow's menu. It's not me tomorrow. Oh, now it's Rebecca Reed tomorrow. I know you normally have Debbie Shaw on a Sunday, but she's elsewhere tomorrow. So you've got Rebecca Reed tomorrow. And I've got something that I was supposed to tell you yesterday. <laughs> well, Hannah was supposed to tell me to tell you yesterday. And it was only when we went off and, and Hayley said, did you say that? And Hannah went, don't know. No, no. And I said, don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, look. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock in the morning. Eight o'clock feeling festive. I'm presuming that's Christmassy things. Nine o'clock, we've got a panel tote bag. Now, you won't have met Debbie Harris before because she's a great British Make Off winner. They had a competition before I, I came to join them here where people sent in videos of them making things and everything. And it got like, like Search for a Star back in the day and everything, right? So this one's called the Great British Makeover. Make Off. Great British Make Off. Like Bake Off, but a makeover. Anyway. Uh, so Debbie will be here at nine o'clock tomorrow morning to show you that panel tote bag that she's making. Because um, uh, Hayley was printing off all the instructions yesterday when I was here yesterday, when she was here yesterday. Ten o'clock, Rebecca Reed with Woodland Animals Crossed... Oh, another guest. So who's that guest on that hour then? Yeah, what's her name? Representative of the Crafty Kit Company. Stephanie. So Stephanie will be on at 10 o'clock doing Woodlands Animal Cross Stitch from the Crafty Kit Company. Then at, oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean now. Then at 11 o'clock, oh, Rebecca Reed, they, they can't give Rebecca Reed a show without giving her needles and threads, can they? So at 11 o'clock, she's got a whole hour of needles and threads. <laughs> if ever they give me that one. Then at 12 o'clock, now this is where you have to listen carefully. At 12 o'clock, Sewing Street stops and Yarn Lane begins. And the same lady, Stephanie, will be doing needle felting from the Crafty Kit Company. Now, I do need to explain something to you because a lot of people this morning were saying to me, John, I can't find... So, so even though we're all under the same umbrella, Yarn Lane is different to Sewing Street. So what happens at midday tomorrow is Rebecca Reed will say, bye-bye from Sewing Street. Um, Debbie's in tomorrow on, on Monday. But Yarn Lane will carry on for the next hour. It's in the same set, and it's still got Rebecca Reed presenting it. However, and if you're watching on the telly, on Sky or Freeview, you just carry on watching, right? However, you need to, if you want to watch on the website, you need to go to the Yarn Lane website. If you want to watch on YouTube, you need to go to the Yarn Lane YouTube. Or if you want to watch on Facebook Live, you need to go to the Yarn Lane Facebook page. Now, if you're going to buy from Yarn Lane, you have to buy from the Yarn Lane website. Their items aren't on Sewing Street's website, which is going to be very confusing tomorrow because you've got Stephanie's ones at 10 o'clock will be on the Sewing Street website, but her felting ones will be on the Yarn Lane website afterwards. However, 
if you buy from Sewing Street and if you buy from Yarn Lane within the same 24 hours, midnight to midnight, it's only one P and P, even though they're separate companies, right? Separate entities and everything. So just remember that. So at 12 o'clock tomorrow, if you're watching on the telly, that's fine. You can carry on watching. But at 12 o'clock tomorrow, if you want to watch Yarn Lane, you need to swap over to Yarn Lane, YouTube, Facebook, or the website. You can only buy on the Yarn Lane website, and the items will only stay on the Yarn Lane website. You will never see Yarn Lane product on the Sewing Street website, and vice versa. Is that it? Right, uh, I'm off now. You know, I'm not, I'm not in again till next Friday. You don't see me here again till next Friday. So until then, have a really lovely week. Ha watch Rebecca Reed tomorrow. Watch Debbie Shaw on Monday. So I was presuming it's Bex, um, Vix on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. She's doing a run of three days. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, remember Yarn Lane is on three days a week and the, the other days is Sewing Street does stay on for five hours. So until uh, next Friday, I'll bid you adieu and I hope you have a lovely weekend. <laughs>